to know what is happening in Morocco to Tospon. Politicians want to make their decision just to Tospon. You want to know what happening in the ministry to Tospon.
Spoon Television, Spoon Radio, Tonto Spoon. Yeah. To know what's happening in Liberia, Tonto Spoon Radio Station, Spoon Television. And this is where you get to know what's happening in Liberia. Spoon tells you what's happening across the 15 counties of the country, bringing you face to face with the newsmakers every single day. Clown Mazine is on, on, on Sundays with the program God Can bless anybody i'd like to say welcome thanks to all of you for joining us tonight of course we're here uh with the program spoon talk spoon talk is back on your radio as you know this is where liberians gather every single day to get authentic news and spoon talk has absolutely no borders regardless of where you are you can always turn on your radio or log on to the uh, different social media platforms that we are always streaming on and you can follow Spoon. So tonight, as usual, we are coming to you live on Spoon 107.5 FM, Fabric 101.1 and Super 95.5 FM. We are also live on several radio stations across Liberia. Yes, we are live on... Uh, several radio stations across Liberia and I want to say thanks to our partner radio stations yeah. that are out there making sure that Liberians are informed um, yes so we live on Trust FM in Bombay County Trust FM is 88.7 we are live on Gibi FM 90.9 in Kakata, my Gibi County. We're beaming live in Grand Crew County, the southeastern part of Liberia, on Trend Radio 104.7 and a host of other radio stations across Liberia. So, welcome. Let's hope you can share the program tonight, especially for our online audience. We are streaming live on YouTube. Our YouTube handle is uh, Spoon Talk Live. Uh, just go to YouTube, search Spoon Talk Live, and we are there. And uh, we're also live on Facebook. Our Facebook handle is uh, Spoon TV. You can also find us on Fabric TV on Facebook and Super TV as well. Thanks to all of you for always coming up here and making sure that we do what we do together here every single day on the program. 
and uh, welcome to the show tonight. I see that the Rachel Singh is in the background, so I'm going to bring her on. And uh, once she comes on, we're going to open the lines to get views from all of you out there to know exactly what your thoughts are relative to the issues unfolding in the country. Dr. Richardson, I'd like to say good evening to you. Uh, it's good to see you again. And, and I'm, I'm glad you had a safe travel and all of that. Welcome. Yes, Nelson, it's good to see you guys. I miss you know you guys, even though I didn't spend a lot of time with you at the station, but I miss Liberia in general. I miss the people, I miss the food. You know, <laughs> uh, mm, the library of food. <laughs> yeah, I miss, I miss it bad. I just miss the fish, the collard green, the crucia, or well, cashew on this side. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. the plum. I had a whole, I wish I had a whole bucket full of plum and I couldn't even bring it. So every morning I would have like two or, you know, three <laughs> or three. Wow. And at nighttime I would have like two or three, two. Um, but then I got back here and this, you know, when you're on vacation and work, doesn't stop. The work don't go on vacation, right? So mm -hmm. I got there just with like lots and lots of work and paperwork. But I'm catching up. I'm catching up. But I miss everybody. I miss. I miss oh, being like. So so so. Uh, that Richardson. Guess who just walked in studio? Uh, Dwalu. <laughs> <laughs> you just got it right, uh, yeah, Mr. Dwalu and the people. He he walked alone. He didn't come with the people. <laughs> Well, I heard that Dwight was on his way. He was traveling. So I put one and two together. Okay. I, I figured that he was traveling to Liberia because, you know, Dwight loves Liberia. So yeah. it would be great for us to, for him to join us too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he, he was here not too long. I think a couple of months ago. Yes. Uh, he's back. Yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> we, we, we're trying to. Okay, he's he's already on. Uh, let me bring Mr. Dwalu. Why are you doing that? Dwalu, you too, you get him too used to that the library. No, that's a fancy. I'm running the answer. Continue. Keep running. Uh, I'm yeah. happy. You know, I'm happy to hear that you're running towards Liberia. Yeah. A lot of times, there's so many of us that are not. You know, we're kind of in between or running away. But mm -hmm. you pressing through. You pressing through, Dwalu. Whatever it is, you pressing it's through. It's constant. Yes. Yeah, you, yeah, went you went to Hindi yet? No, not yet, not yet. Okay. I haven't left the city yet. I've been I've been here for about three days now. Oh, okay. So I haven't okay. left the city yet. So today I have a little bit of time. I came in. I will come in here and then putting stuff together. Hopefully everything, you know, does what I wanted to do. And we'll go from there, Dr. Fancy. It's Jordan now you, James Jordan. Y'all know you're my family. Yeah, James is here. Let me tell you something. I talk about my family. Maybe we don't act like you're on the line because we like to keep some things prior. But uh, I understand. Here. Yeah, James is here. I haven't seen him yet, but I know he's in town. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Gotta do what we gotta do. Mm -hmm. Well, plenty of things going on. Nelson, I know he has to open the line, but to tell you the truth, um, Jessica Loy and her mother, Cynthia Loy, uh, were supposed to come in today. But um, Jessica is not feeling well. Her mother yeah. called me and said that she's not feeling well since the whole ordeal. Jessica has been going through a lot, a lot of stress, body illness, and different complaints. Um, she's just not settled yet. But we're planning on them coming in for her to, to, to tell her story, to tell her story to the work and know what happened. Because a lot of us have a lot of on. You know, we have a lot of uh, questions, unanswered questions, you know, just kind of, a lot of, there's a lot of hearsay out there. There's a lot of, you know, us who are just angry and we don't know how to, who to uh, project our anger on, you know, yeah. uh, but, you know, and just to understand, we saw how she was hurt. Her throat was cut. We saw how, you know, pictures of the wedding, we saw how she talked about an aborted abortion. And when you put all of those things together, for him to have been acquitted, it's just not adding up. I know some people can argue it's the legal system. and But my question that I have to Nelson, and maybe you guys can answer this for me, who did the reports? Through what lens were we reporting the legal system? Okay, because... Uh, 
when I hear the legal system, it says, oh, the judge said none of the witnesses, the account were not adding up. Who did that? Who said that? Did the judge say that? Or was it reported by somebody? Who were the reporters who were reporting who were telling us that? So I just have all these questions. Claudia, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Brother Francis, for me, um, I don't I don't know what other people understands that understand this sometimes. Every time we don't administer justice adequately, it diminishes the value of every single one of us, each of us. In fact, based on that verdict that came out, every single Liberian woman has been diminished from that verdict. Now you say, but how, how can how can they diminish? Let me tell you this. If somebody can come to this country, I don't care where they're from, and they can treat a Liberian citizen in that fashion, and they go through our judicial system, now we have double jeopardy is attached to this case. You cannot retry on any circumstance for the same crime whatsoever. You can have a safe civil litigation. There's just something maybe to give her a small thing. Look, I will continue to say this. We already left. I got pictures of the people at the airport. So how they were trying in Essentia, which I don't know. Well, it, 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 because yes, the thing though, we don't have a strong enough system where if the person leaves the jurisdiction of Liberia, we have no reach of no kind whatsoever. Now you can hear that thing, oh, we'll file extradition treaty, that's just nonsense. You can't do it because yeah. the first thing is just to get the man out of America will cost you millions of dollars. Is the Liberian government willing to pay for that? Do they have no. the time? Do they have the manpower to no. go for that? So no. once he or she exits the jurisdiction of Liberia, it's, it's a done deal. This is why yeah. everybody always tries to make sure, oh, I had a medical problem. I won't go overseas to seek medical help. Why are you in prison? Go and bring your doctor here. And you had a doctor come to Liberia and treat you in the prison that they do anywhere else in the world. But I will say this. Look, the system that we have, Liberian people, you're continuing to fold your arms between your legs and you think something is going to change. It's not going to change. And the people who are in charge have no incentive. They have no reason to want it to change because it benefits them. Who, who took those notes? This girl threw a slate. And she herself told you who did this to her. Mm -hmm. You see, the story is not adding up. That's it's not just story. one story. It's an entire episode from, 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 from Bone County, where he was stationed, to her pregnancy, to the marriage, to everything. Every single thing. You say, oh, but Dwight, you're not a lawyer. Don't tell me about law. Let me tell you something about the law. You know, I hear this phrase, oh, you're not a lawyer, you're not in top. Let me tell you something. The law is meant to be read by the simplest of us. Yeah. Back in the day when the law was in, in, in the olden time, they would take the law, they would, they would, they would need it to a pole so everybody yeah. can read the law. That means the simplest person in that village. This is how laws are designed. Yeah. I am not interpreting constitutional law here to say, oh, based on this is the interpretation. It's common law. Mm -hmm. folks and one of us got literally killed that girl is in so much pain mm -hmm. i don't even understand sometimes but i'll say this though before i give it that friend saying when these things happen and nothing is done it compounds it compounds when you hear the negro wagwas of the world when you hear el salvador's of the world people take laws into their own hands when they feel they cannot get justice in their own country we don't want this in liberia at the end of the day, look, Dr. Francis, I want you to imagine for a second that you're in Maryland or you're in Jersey? Jersey. You're in Jersey. Imagine a Dwalu leaves Liberia. He goes into New Jersey. He goes in a white suburb and he slid a white girl's throat. <laughs> imagine me walking. Yeah. Even if it's circumstantial evidence, I'm going yeah. to jail for at least 30 years. Yes, that would never happen. Never. There'll be so many, uh, oh. the book will be thrown at you. So and many first times. of all, if the judge make that mistake and make me walk, the judge may even be crucified. Well, you would die. <laughs> you, even you, you would die because we'll put some kind of cry on your name. You know, oh. you wouldn't even stand it. You know, I, hey, you know, you know, Shaniqua, uh, uh, it would never happen. happen. It was never the accusation alone, especially where he asked the girl to remove the pregnancy, where he were already they would charge you with so many other crimes, yeah. they would make sure you cannot even get out of the crime that you're being charged with. This is so many but here in our country, anybody can do whatever they want, whenever they want, and they don't care. A Liberian citizen doesn't matter. I don't know why we even have a passport. Our citizenship is, is insignificant, it, it, it doesn't carry any weight, even in our own country. 
Where else would Jessica get uh, injustice? She will cry. Her mom will cry. Her brother will cry. And the team will just go in, blah. And then we sit again. Let me tell you something. When you continue to put your heart on ice, like we do in this country, I will just leave it to God. And I will say that you get there with me. Go now in Liberia. The way we treat each other, God stay far away from us. How can we treat Jessica like that? Jessica is our sister. Our sister. She is treated in this manner, has no justice, and you think your daughters are safe. They are not safe, yes. my brother. Yes. Jessica's pain has become our pain. We all are not safe because justice was not administered. They say, oh, you know, in the court cases, the, 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 the evidence could not truly substantiate this, blah, 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 blah. Are you killing me? What more evidence do you want? He's the only person that testified in his favor. He was the only person. He was acquitted in our country. Go to Sweden. Go to Norway. In fact, look, Dr. Francine, they have a law in Japan. If Dr. Francine goes to Japan and she gets into a scuffle with a Japanese, when the case goes to court, you are literally 30% wrong before the adjudication process starts because you are not supposed to be there to begin with. You were there. U.S. Marines in Japan. They will throw the book at you. They will come after you. And in our own little country, we have no solace. We have no place of refuge. We have nowhere. A Liberian child, literally a young woman, throwing a slip in her own country. Yeah. And then the person walks. Go scar-free. We are all not safe, my people. We're I'll not. say that. We are not safe if that continues to happen. I feel so I feel so vulnerable, honestly. Yeah. Where do you begin to where do I start? How do I offer any kind of assistance? What, how do I start my pain? You know, I saw somebody sent me a picture of uh Richard Lucas sitting at the airport today, ready to leave. Yeah, he's gonna essay the country because he won nothing, no backlash of any kind. <laughs> even even where, where he churches in the states, I think the Iowa, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Liberian went there to protest, the church literally closed down. Look. Every time we subordinate our interest, our well-being to that of foreigners, we are diminished. We are less than human beings when we do this to us in our own country. I want you to think about this. Go to Finland or Norway, and you do that. Even the, the thought of you doing it, it will put you in jail for 20, 30 years. Absolutely. Not the actual act of doing it. Absolutely. Think about the Mean Too movement. <laughs> That's why I said to other was no way you're gonna be able to walk because women, just the naked mean to movement women in America, yeah. was yeah. just you, you, you until you were found not guilty, you know, we were going to hang that stereotype or that guilt over your head. Thank you. That's yeah. it. You know, that's it. That's, and it, 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 the thing is, I read I read the paper today, uh, actually yesterday when it when it, when it, when the paper first came out, and 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 I was like. Not again, yeah. not again. And it's over and over it's and over. over every single time a Liberian citizen is harmed by a foreigner, the foreigner walks. Mm -hmm. There is a saying in this country, and every single Liberian knows this, Dr. Francine, they will say, <laughs> I get it, I get it, put it in my pocket, I get it, judge it in my pocket, and they will tell you open it, they're not even hiding it. Imagine if you went to Lebanon, you went to Syria. In fact, first of all, they don't want you in their country. And we do this to us over and over and over and over again. And nothing becomes of it. Jessica is us. I know you, you find it difficult to believe. Jessica is us. Yes. You say, oh, what do I get on me? Like, yeah, she went. She was looking for women to marry. She went to follow. It small doesn't game. matter. It's not about that. We'll deal with that another day if we have Thank to. You. If we have to. You know, I'm not going to lay any blame on the judge. I'm not going to lay any blame on the judicial system. But what I'm going to say is... I am. Is, I'm laying the I, Jessica's system. throat. Imagine if that were my daughter. Just imagine if it were your daughter. Sometimes we forget that our daughters and our son extend to the next man's son. So whenever he or she is harmed, we are equally harmed. But we don't think collectivism matters. It's just me, myself, and I. We cannot grow as a society. If you only think about yourself as being the only person that it matters.
Not to bring in the issue of Alante Kofa, for example. Dr. Francine, you just left Liberia. Houses are literally burning every single day. There is this complete slew out of body stuff from my home and bodies, uh, carbon monoxide detector and this smoke de yeah. alarm and how the, the breaker system, how to bring my own brick because LEC come with this massive force. Yes. Alante Kofa, we all grieve with him. The home got burned. But why doesn't it matter that much if it's my father's home as well? Why? Something wrong with us? Falati homes are going to get rebuilt, maybe 10 times better than what it was before. I'm not saying that makes it well. But where is a Liberian Red Cross when my father house is burned? Yeah. Eh? You know, do I want to interrupt you? When I listened to Fanati, he said on the next day, investigators from the United States were coming to assess his home. His friends, I think he even referenced this, my friends are my friend or friends are coming. My father does not have a friend in the United States to assess her home when it gets burned. Okay. My father house, like you say, is not going to be built or rebuilt. She probably have to go stay and stay with other relatives. My father is not going to get two bags of clothes that have never been worn for the president of Liberia. Okay. So why are we not angry enough? Wow, we don't get angry that the first thing when it happens. Look, a little girl will get ripped. I was in the community when I, the last time I was here, and a little girl got ripped. And they were literally, oh, Uncle Opa, they, they, they say, I said, you want to go over there? I'll be too vest to go there. So I don't even go there. What in Bede, you will take a seven year old that got ripped, and you'll say, oh, no, but I want to turn that kind of plow. What? Yeah, what in? Well, what is going on with us? I don't know what the war has done to us. I am not saying take the law into your own hands, but there are certain norms in society that should not be accepted no matter what. Not at all. This man, yeah. Richard oh, Lucas, went to Liberia to practice Christianity. Which part of the Bible do you know that would say a Christian man in the New Testament, and I'm not talking about the Old Testament, can take on another wife. This a Bible teacher now, who in the greatest country that exercise religion, America, okay, Christianity, America, goes to Liberia. He is supposed to be teaching Christianity to our children. You know, and what bothers me, how many other girls did he touch? Did he the, the vulnerability in the country, um, the, the vulnerability in the country is so stupefying to the point where I've been here for three days. I, I mean, I, like I never left because I was, I was here maybe about seven or eight weeks ago and I and I came back. It seems there is an increase in the vulnerability. Every time I talk about the job creation issue in this country, nobody wants to listen. Dr. Francis, I don't know you saw my paper. That was, I didn't think it was ever carry the paper. Uh, if you Google it, we check it out. It's called... Uh, if President Boaka, let me summarize the paper, mm -hmm. does not revamp the private sector or create a vibrant uh, private sector, he will fail. Look, our men are more vulnerable than ever before. Our women are even more vulnerable given their position as women in this country. The preference are given to men in, in many instances. We have a society that is almost literally reliant on, on, on outside help. It seems we are not building institutions to protect us. You mentioned Intifata. Man Fata doesn't have the connection to come and look at a home. But this is why we create government institutions to come in and say, you know what, wrong? We have the Liberian Red Cross. We put some funding to the Liberian Red Cross organization. So when, when, when Paflomo House is burned, we can rally around Paflomo, rebuild this house. Nobody cares about anybody. Nobody cares. It's as if we're not a country. The only time a Liberian does well, and y'all will beat me for this, but y'all know my mom, my head, I'm not nobody more, is if that Liberian leaves this country and goes to another man's country and, 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 and clean floor and does something, or he stays in this country and loot the state coffers with total impunity. And then we glorify him. We deify that individual. But at least the man bid it here. What? Are you kidding? He bid it for you? If you had a chair? You were in abject poverty, boom crushing poverty. Your legislators, your government official, play a blind eye. SUVs flying everywhere. That's what I saw. I mean, I've never seen a country where there's more cars, more than fifty thousand dollars in my life than in Liberia. People in this in this country are driving Duazé. My students then I want to drive Duazé until they can get their doctorate degree. 
Well, you know, everywhere I turned, there was uh, big SUVs all over the place. I bet there was... You know, we're showboating society, Dr. French saying. We, we love to showboat. Most Liberians here in this country, yes. and, and we 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 present a persona that is not actually us, and we we present this persona. You will see iPhone fourteen, iPhone thirteen. I'm like, what are you doing? You will see, but go see the sleeping places. Our priority is actually out of whack. Well, what would you put a lot of weight on? We don't put weight on it. Look, my people in your community, when one person get hit there, that all of you get hit because it don't stop that hurt. It will eventually reach to you. And every time, poor Jessica, we can beat this horse. We can say whatever we want to do. The men go on, the men walk. Jessica get mad on her throat. You say, oh, that I'm a daughter princess. My daughter princess will not go on and do that kind of thing. You be behind your daughter? Yeah, you don't know. Children. That's why the system should work. And, yeah. <laughs> and every single time, look, we sit and we just listen. We just listen. And you got Liberians, oh, and so when they say they're praying for Israel, <laughs> I'm not bashing Israel. I'm not getting Israel. Do you know what the Israelis I'm think sorry, of you? I didn't you? get to the part of laughing. That's a serious Yeah. Thing. Do you know what the Israelis think of you? <laughs> you know, sometimes. I now you. Well, where are you? <laughs> oh, my God. I want people out but got to get open. I'm not saying you might not go pray for Israel. That war will be for oh, Israel strong enough to protect itself. The thing of you are less than a human being. And you're passing you around here when you should be praying for Jessica. When you should be pushing the issue for Jessica. The women's group in this country, I don't know where play your air. Let me talk it. The women with the lap in the country, where play your air. Jessica is crying alone. Her mother is fainting alone. But y'all were quick. Oh, as if I said, I wrote a book on Claire. We are you're joining the street. Oh, okay. This is a woman that could defend herself. Poor Jessica, I don't see any women group marching in the streets of Morovia. Your daughter threw gas late. Nothing come from inside. She got the thing gas in hit. Somebody injected her or something on a chemical to make her abort a baby. Uh, she got hit with a, 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 a object on her head. Yeah, it's a crow, it's like a crowbar, not a crowbar, but the the, the wheel ring where you can take the tire from anything with. Yeah, I had about iron. That girl has not been the same. And then for a judge, to she will say, never be the same, Doc. She will never ever be the same. I mean, you a psychologist, just imagine the mental trauma. No. I, I can't even fathom it. No, nope. because I don't understand it half to begin nope. with. No, nope. somebody nine months, her mother suffered with her. Okay, they say the mother will kept fainting. Um, they what we heard from the cook, and it's just it was like you know, we we room. I will tell you something. I was a boy in Buchanan, and the, in, in, if you get in Buchanan, there was a bunch of stores. Uh, on Topman Street, and this kid went into the store. He stole some candy, and it was raining heavy. The puddle, there was a huge puddle right there, and the 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 guy got out of the store. I think he was a Lebanese. We call him Lebanese at the time, but they were from Middle Eastern. You know, he grabbed the kid and put the kid here under the water, literally holding it in the puddle. And the kid was struggling. The kid didn't die, but it was almost like a temper murder. It was like they beat the kid very bad. He stole a candy from the store. The police people came to tell the guys at the police station. Part of the adjustment that they were, oh, they love the guy and yet came together. They told the man, probably saying to Maria, saying somewhere for a few days. And that was the end of it. I am not justifying this kid stealing candy from the store. But the you call the police man. for him. Mm -hmm. Let the police go take care of him. You don't have the right to beat him up. But guess what? Imagine a Liberian store right. owner in Lebanon. Punishment. Yeah, a Liberian store owner in Lebanon did that to a This is how I want you to think. Did that to a Lebanese kid in Lebanon, <laughs> in Beirut, and all the Lebanese see it. It's not going to the courts. Any other country, it will not go to the courts. Don't take my word for it. Google. Mm -hmm. They got Indians. They got black-skinned Africans walking in India. They will just start slapping you. Thousands of video. I'm not suggesting that we do that here. What I'm suggesting is we must put our interests far above anybody else's in this country because this is our country. This is our home because there's nowhere else you're going to go that you're going to be treated with the kind of dignity that you should be treated here in Liberia. This is our home. If we cannot get justice here, if we cannot be on the top here, if we cannot control everything here, there's nowhere else that we can control it. Nowhere else. I really don't believe to my core, even if an angel come from heaven, that angel's interest should be subordinated to that of a Liberian's interest here in Liberia. This is my heritage. 
but we flung our heritage. We do nothing. B Mountain shaped almost $150 million worth of gold out of Liberia and gave the Liberian government less than $3 million Penis. in my country. Penis. Penis. I don't care what kind of contract you sign. Can you do that in Iowa? Nope. Can you go to Iowa and dig $154 million worth of gold and get the Iowans $3 million? Not possible. Never. 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 We refuse to understand something. Let me tell you something. If you continue to subordinate your interest to that of the foreigners, what the foreigners will do, they will stand on your neck so they can get a little taller. They are not doing it because they hate you, but they're doing it because that's what human beings do. Correct. They're going to take advantage of it. They're going to eat our lunch every single day while we stay hungry. We are hungry because we allow other people to take our lunch. Yep. That's Every life. single thing in the country is control. And when we won economic viability in this country, where we can control the private sector heavily, and we, darling, we're ready for that kind of thing. Like, remember, we, when will we be ready? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, you got so many educated Liberians now. So many. Top level. L, you are putting a top level graduate. AME Zion University. The United Methodist University. You can hone their skill. We can perfect their skills. We can give them proper training. We can hone their skill so they can control their country. They need a little bit of help. From Malaysia to Singapore to South Korea to Taiwan to the Chinese. They help the private sector. They improve the private sector so they can control their own country. We control nothing in this country. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And we sit down and we are complicit in this. Let me tell you something. I guess the old dweller can tell the thing. You will die before the age of 60 years old if you do nothing. This is not me saying it. This is statistical. This is empirical. If you live in Liberia and you are a man, your life expectancy in this country is going to be no more than 60 years old. If you're a woman, you might approach 65 years old. You're lucky. But guess what? During that entire 60 years, you will be in poor health. Your body aches. You don't eat right. You are constantly sick for that 60 years. Your quality of life is poorer until you're willing to stand up for something that you value. You will never enjoy the benefits of that. Our minds have been stuck in no place. Our minds have been stuck in no place. Look, young people, if you are listening to me, I want you to Google a message to the legacies of Liberia. I wrote a paper to you, and I want you to read that paper, and I'm begging you, please read it. A message to the legacies of Liberia. And one thing I'm promoting that message, you have to get together. You have to organize better. You have to understand this is your heritage. You have to fight and find a way to take control of your heritage. We have to organize with you. Our leaders are neglecting their responsibility to the people. Heavily, look at our country. Look at our women, they are so vulnerable. Look at the young men in the country, they are so vulnerable. Absolutely no hope of any kind. When you talk here, Tommy, you're talking here because you want job. Of course, I want job. I'm a job creator. I want to create jobs. There's nothing wrong with wanting job in your country. But let's create some jobs here. Because I believe the surest way to self-actualize, to meet your full potentiality in your own country is economic powers. But you got no powers. Imagine a man wakes up in the morning. He gets in the morning, waiting out. The first thing on his mind is looking for food. Of course. He's still at the primal level. In a mostly uh, hierarchical structure that the French, you know more about it than I do. On the bottom, you got security, clothing, shelter, before you start going up to self-actualization. We are on the bottom when we get all that food we're looking for. Mm -hmm. we're looking for zinc to put it on top of the plate while leaking. Shelter. We're still on the basic bottom. Mm -hmm. And our legislators will come into the studio and tell us, Dwalu, they're almost $15,000 in salaries and benefits that I make every single month. It's not in the country where the average person lives on six hundred dollars per year. Evil at its height. The bulk of the resources of this country are literally going to people who are supposed to be responsible to make decisions for this country and guide them into a proper direction. We don't want to do it. When you talk it, they say, "Oh, Dwalu, you're just talking it because you don't come there yet." Are you serious? 
when I tell you guys that a man and a, or a woman must meet certain socioeconomic position because before you give them certain job, I'm not just saying it because I want you to get the highest uh, the criteria for those people. This is what I mean. If Dr. Francine reaches certain levels in her life economically, Dr. Francine is a minister of gender. Dr. Francine's first preference is not to build a house. She already has a house. Dr. Francine's first preference is not to buy a car. She's already driving the finest car. Dr. First preference is not to say that you're in the school or you're going to grade school. So her entire thing is, how do I leave a legacy here in Liberia for my people? Hierarchy of needs. needs. Thank you. Hierarchy of needs. Hierarchy of structure of needs. You take somebody with no part of pissing, you make him a senator. You make him a representative. He cannot serve you. I am not just saying this because I want to say this. Every single society, look to the legislatures around the world. People say, God, why are you going spoon? I come here because a message must be said to our people that if you don't wake up, your condition will persist. It's never going to change. Nope. You have to pay a price. There is no society that has transformed on God's green earth where the people did not pay a price. It's a hefty price. It's yep. a price of diligence. It's a price of prudence. It's a price of commitment. It's a price of excellence. It's a price of a duty and honor and dignity and commitment to one woman, one man, so you can build a proper society. Picture. I'm not saying it because I want to say it. I'm saying it is because this is what is required to build a viable society. We can't keep quiet. What will we say to our children? Daddy, what did you do to make Liberia better? I talk because I must talk. Because my quietness burdens Liberia. Even if it is one person, that I'm awakening the fire in that one person. And that person has the capacity to transform Nima County into a bustling metropolis where the standard of living in that society can be improved. I have done my job. Yeah. If that one person transformed Bapalu County and the great mountain in the Wologisi and Mlopa County, the, the, the bustling coastline of Cape Mount is transformed into a, into a metropolis that we can be proud of. I've done my job. My intention here is not to impress anybody. My intention here is to bring a message because my country is dying. Our country is dying, folks. Come and see your country. Hmm. Every single time they say, oh, Opa, why are you going to Liberia? Liberia is dangerous. Of course it's dangerous for everybody. How about the people that are living here? It's not dangerous for them too? Mm -hmm. Who's supposed to fix this place? Yeah. Who? If not you. Let's go be some factories, guys. Let's 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 stop the, the minimum stages of manufacturing. Let's span the fishing industry. Let's get some fishing boats here. Let's put thousands of men to work. Let's start cassava consolidation across this country. We need some money to put so these men can go to work, so these women can go to work, so they can protect their family, protect our community, and by the station, protect our country. Yep. When you're talking. Every single day, it has to be about job. A man must have a job. A man cannot protect his family without having a place to win bread for his family. Look, Article 8 of Liberian Constitution, I'm going to Google it. I'm going to read it to you guys. Dr. Mm -hmm. Francis, if you want to go ahead, I'll, I'll Google it very quickly. Liberian Article 8, I want to read this. If the government cannot provide jobs for you, or the government cannot provide an enabling environment so jobs can be created for you. You can sue your government. I want you guys to get together and sue the government so you can get jobs in this country. Young men, you have to take your proper place. Your proper place of prominence. You have to demand from your government. You have to demand from your country that you too must live a quality of life in your own country. If you sit down, nothing will get done for you. Yeah. Nothing will get done. In other countries, they will riot for 30 days, for 40 days, before, until the government does what the population want the government to do. And yet still, all you do, you go to the churches, you go to the mosque, and you pray, and you expect God to descend from the heavens. God is not going to descend from the heaven, folks. You must act. Dr. Francine, let me Google Article 8 of the Liberian Constitution. I want to read it to my Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. As you can hear what Dwalu is saying, man has to provide for his family, all right? And he needs 
all of the equipments, all of the tools to provide for his family. And that's why government exists to be able to provide those tools for us. For us to, and then we take advantage of the tools that government provides. Go ahead, Walu. You found it? Let me, I found it. Article 8 of the Liberian Constitution. This is the 1986 Constitution, and I will read this verbatim. It's very simple. It says the Republic, the word shall mean you have no option. It means it will happen. Mm -hmm. Sha is not optional. It is set in concrete. That means it's stenciled by God himself. Article 8 of the Liberian Constitution. The Republic of Liberia, the Republic, shall direct its policies towards ensuring for all citizens, all, this is some, all citizens, without discrimination, opportunities for employment, that means for jobs. They must create opportunities for employment and livelihood on a just and humane condition. You cannot have a foreign organization, a multilateral organization come to our country and treat Liberian citizens any kind of way. Labor laws do not hold. Let me read the Constitution. It says, opportunities for employment and livelihood on a just and uh, humane condition. It means the way you're working, it will be fine. They will not be suffering you. They will not treat you any kind of way. That what I want me. Humane condition. The way how they wanted to treat and say that how that company got to treat you. That way, me. And towards promoting safety, you will be working in safety. They will not be hurting you there. You will be, it will be healthy condition and welfare facility for employment. Yep. You are entitled to a job in this country. You are entitled. This is in strong in your constitution. If you don't have a job, I want you to organize. I want you to organize, young men. I want you to organize and go to your legislator and go to Capitol building and say, listen, we must have a job. You must start small-scale manufacturing across this country. You must expand the private sector so we can go to work as well. The Liberian diaspora, if you're listening to me, we must do something to take control of this country. We have lost this country. We have absolutely no control of this country. It sickens me. I saw it. That we just sit and bequeath our heritage to people that have no business controlling us in our own country. What would we say to our ancestors? That we sat around and our heritage is no more. That young men are frustrated. You talk about a drug epidemic in this country. It's frustration, folks. These young men have nowhere to turn. Nope. They turn to drugs because they believe it gave them some solace. Self-medication. It gave them some solace. They expand the prostitution rate across this country. It's happening because there is no hope for the young women across this country. Really? We must give them hope. Our leadership must listen. You must make them listen because your constitution says they must listen. Brother Fadi, God, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you, Dwalu. I see that you're on, you're on fire. Yeah. Uh, everybody enjoying your motivational speech. Uh, but I, I defer with you on one or two issues, though. Boy, I hear you. Yeah, boy, I hear you. It will be fire yet or there. You must have already finished. Making our flower in the back, so I mean, that's part of the show. Dwarf, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. That's part of the in Liberia, and he's on fire. Please, no, Dwarf need no argument. He need no argument. interruption. That's part of the show. I was in the back enjoying myself. I will come at five o'clock, nine o'clock, like brother. Let Dwarf do a thing for one hour. Dwarf is crying for the people. Dwaru is in the test of whipping. Give me three more minutes. Go ahead. Dwaru is the John the Baptist that is whipping and calling for the days of repentance. That the hour have come. Dwaru said, repent. For one cried in the wilderness, making straight the path of the Lord. Dwaru is the man in the desert right now, eating honey. He's eating grasshopper. He's eating butterfly. He's eating cricket. Butterball. He's crying in the desert. Who's going to listen? Do I get a parable that if you, the, if the Muhammad can go to the mountain, at some point the mountain going to come to the Muhammad. Do I always cry? Listen and just look at him. 
He's weeping. Weep no more, my friend. For the time have come. Redemption have come. I'm going to see you. Let me pay for it. Let me see you. I'm going to say no. We don't want. My man, let me say to you before before I go to the guy. It's not all gonna be in Liberia. Maybe we Zogo. Maybe we Zogo. I'm serious, Nathan. Maybe we Zogo. Maybe we we buy our boy. Maybe some more on the pen pen. That the people couldn't get your opportunity. Dwalo, you are talking about the the protest today uh with the keke and the pen pen rider. No. Okay. Now what I'm talking about. I miss that part. You're right. The last one you just said, maybe, God forbid, some of us were going to be Zogos. El Zogis. I'm serious. Seriously, I no, agree with you. I doubt that I would have been a Zogo. I agree with you. I Not you specifically. I understand what you're saying, but I'm saying the possibility of being your current position. I, 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 I think Fadiga was going to be a Zogo if Yeka Koloba wasn't going to redeem him and take you all of that. Yeka Koloba said he didn't help at that time. <laughs> if Yaka Kolba wasn't going to redeem him and take care of that ghetto, by this time we're going to have Zoko. Yaka is a bad man. So, Farika, what? What did you disagree about? No, I said that I'm not a Zoko. I'm not a Zoko. I'm not a Zoko. For me, Liberia, Liberia is a very complicated, complex society. We have normalized so many things in this country until it has become our reality. To undo everything, uh, you have to reorient people. Look, uh, everything we say or do is relative. Everything we, uh, good or bad is relative. What would be good in other culture uh, could be Bad in other culture. It doesn't mean that uh, it is just wrong or one is right or one is wrong. I think two things can be right and two things can be wrong at the same time. And what do I mean? When it comes to, I know I hear you mention about, uh, uh, yes, there are a lot of people that I believe. Thank you. You know, wrong, but the guy, I don't, I don't agree with that. Let me tell you something. Fix the structures. Face the institutions. Look, that's a friend's thing. In New Jersey, there is a structure for everything that runs the daily lives of the people. In Massachusetts, similarly, in every developed country, if you want to go start a hair uh, a hair braiding shop, you go to City Hall, you register your hair braiding shop, and you got to meet certain uh, sanitary guidelines. When you break it, you get fined. They shut your place down. The system works. Correct. You know, the idea that I said, oh, we normal Latins in Liberia, is because we have accepted this. Most society would not accept somebody raping a seven year old or 10 year old, or even a 15 year old. They are going on Palawan or you're talking. How is that possible? They're kind of thing. Men ain't get job. I'm working for Stanton or six months. Stanton don't pay me for six months. I can't do nothing with Stanton. How is that possible? For the guy, for the guy, hotel current just left. <laughs> But guys, I want to say thank you, Dwight. You said you said a lot of good stuff, you know. Uh, Dr. Richardson, how you doing today? I'm fine. As thanks. a do, Minister, do how you do. Um, it's five o'clock, nine o'clock in Liberia. We'll discuss some very serious business. Because the Liberia people leave the time to come on and show and talk. You know me very well. I am not a member of Unity Party, but Jose Yuma Baika, president of the Republic of Liberia, have my one hundred and 50,000 percent support but we will be able to discuss the issue that pertaining to Liberia a lot of stuff is happening as we get closer to the 100 days where are you a lot of stuff is happening we saw two different protests today the Prozac the Keke and the Pempen Riders I want us to talk about it those are bread and butter concerns Things happening in the country. The rise of MedTech, document that was placed on the president tax, CTN. Can we educate our people where CTN came from? What's the origin? Why they left Sierra Leone? Can we talk about CTN today? Can we talk about the passion that Dwalu have brought into the studio today? The everyday issue. 
Can we talk about our judiciary system that you get prosecuted, negotiated to pay $10,000 to acquit somebody? The recordings are all there. What become of just Jessica? $10,000 negotiating? Come on, man. What other proof you think you may need as a people, as a court, that you are caught negotiating? I mean, the law should always be the law. Where are we as people? Just to come back a little bit, my last 10, 15 seconds, I was surprised that people say we got the best system. Indeed. But we are not crossing off all our T's and dotting all our I's. Lawyers, prosecutors, judges go after the money, the highest bidder. Anybody that give you 10, 20, 25, 30,000, you let them win. Amen. We saw the president today at the airport. President Joseph Yuma Parker Nelson, can you please call that? The president today, you heard, if you follow him at the airport, he condemned the airport. At the airport. He condemned the airport. He did. He felt so bad. He said the RIA, the Robert International Airport, is below international standard. <laughs> it's true. Which is due to mismanagement, corruption, and the misuse of state resources by state actors. Seriously. Oh, yes. I'm not even gonna say it. President Buaka is saying it. It's the truth. President Buaka is so discouraged. Madam Sandy put 50 meter in the airport, it was the worst. President George Ray came and make it double worse. Why cannot President Joseph Buaka do? I didn't say we would play the clip for you to hear from the president himself. And he said, Robert International Airport is below, in all dimension, international standard. And leaky. There's no toilet. It's bad, my people. Why are we celebrating the country? But I want to say to you, man, seeing our government official that we depend on, we fought for, we celebrated the agreeing to MedTech because of the personal relationship that is okay for MedTech. Now, Liberia, I will end on this. MedTech want to take your 20% that they have in that company, and they want to tell you how to use your 20%. Eduardo, you agreed to give the people 80% of the Liberia people own money, and you agreed to take 20%. But the thing is, Mr. Duardo, on your 20% will buy you two, three vehicles. On your 20% will buy you 10 laptops. On your 20% will do this and we do that. But then you do not have control of your 20%. Come but into the is shorting. Come into the, I mean, what I, I mean, what I said, I didn't know. The new LRA bus. I'm not insinuating everything. Probably it's true. Don't what Jada said, I didn't know. Gabriel Montgomery said I wasn't there. The deputy commissioner, Samuel Burnett, he said, no, 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 no. That was on Thomas Zona. Where is the Labyrinth people money? Where? I mean, you knew about this thing. I remember that. Where is the Labyrinth people money? CTN, they ran CTN all of Sierra Leone. I mean, I attack him to Liberia. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. CTN, you are suffering the Liberian people with the matter and the CTN. For what? For what? You care one small car, the tape pay, pay 10000 The car that will pay 2000 for you, you pay 10000 to get it out of the port. And I mean, Muda, look at us. Let we mumu, let we stupid and say, keep Metech. Mr. President, keep Metech. What's your relationship with Metech? I mean, What's your personal relationship with Metech? I mean, we beat on Joe, we for all this, Yama Yama. You know something, Bruno? 
I mean, our government got to be structured. Our government got to be in a place that we can elevate and say, yes, I'm not going to give the government chance when we have our friends, our brothers, our sisters, who are ministers and directors and commissioners today agreeing to buy things. I mean, what, what, what did we fight for? We can allow to discuss, folks. Invite your brothers and sisters. Invite your friends. We are all family. I will be on I mean, When Ami does our wishes right, I will celebrate him. I will beat on double jala. I will beat on Roland Guinness. I will beat on the transfer minister, my own friend, Gregory Coleman, telling the keke and the pimpin rattle to leave the street. But what was your alternative? Number one, tell us that this is what we have for you. No job. You have hundreds of thousands of pimpin and keke rattle. We tell us that you're going to sit down. <laughs> Are we here to create jobs or to fire people? Brother, let me be serious, man. And this is the push of Jose Yema Buaga. This is what he want. Great job. Better system. And he told them, anybody stand on my way, I'm coming after you. I appoint you, I will dismiss you. Anybody that stand in front of President Buaga way, he's going to remove you. Seriously. He gave you the privilege. It's a privilege for you to work in this government. He owed you nothing. Jose Yuman Braga owed nothing to anybody, not even to me. So you guys that are working in the government and think that you're going to lay back and cut shirk up, he's going to get rid of you. He's going to fire you. And the Liberia people will appreciate that. I'm blessed to be on the show. It's a privilege for me to be on Spoon Network. Absolutely. This is not my network. This is the Liberian people network. I agree. It's a privilege for Dwaru to be here. So we we'll re-examine everybody that come here that try to talk time at time. Sometimes you will not see a usual face. Seriously, we're going to our meeting room and say, well, man, don't come on the show today. You cannot play with the life of the Liberian people. You cannot. You cannot lie to defend one individual. This network is for the Liberian people. And we should uphold our integrity and our standard and speak truth to power. I was so pleased when President Obama said, if anybody stand on the way of progress, we will remove you. I was so pleased. Anybody that think they get a job now, they can look down the Liberian people suffering, we'll remove you. That's a fact. The richest thing is all yours, at least. I did my own of 15 minutes. Thank you, guys. Uh, Liberians, it's good to be here today. I woke up to the news of seeing a picture of someone that looks like Richard Lucas at the airport. Uh, it appears that he left Liberia already. I'm saddened by this news. Uh, somebody's, I'm hearing echo in the background. I'm saddened by this news. And uh, I actually have a lot of concerns about our justice system. Uh, it tells me that our system is broken. Uh, it tells me that we are devaluing women in our country. Um, it tells me that uh, Jessica would never, ever be okay. She was never okay before. Uh, the fact that this justice system ruled to acquit uh, Richard Lucas, it sort of just uh you know exacerbated it made her feel worse her mother and Je uh, cynthia lloyd and jessica lois were expected to be here today but jessica is not well she's sick so we're looking to reschedule them so they can tell the librarian people her story so we can know that uh, whatever happened to jessica jessica has a strong 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 possibility of happening to me you know i'm mm -hmm. off in liberia yeah. you know uh, or my daughter, so or, or your daughter. So it's something for us to really, really, really think about. This is not about Jessica. You know, I, I, I for the life of me, I can't think about how <laughs> this Richard Lucas got acquitted. How? How? Whose account is it that the eyewitness stories were not adding up? Whose account is it that we cannot, someone cannot be guilty because of missing weapons. I understand the judge could not find the weapon. 
whose account is it that Jessica's mother took money uh, uh, for her, her case to be uh, against her? So all of these questions I have, and many Liberians have a lot of questions. I hope that they will come and tell their own story. But at this point, I'm, I'm highly upset as I've been since yesterday. I don't know where to project my, my, my anger. Uh, I, I, I don't know how I can help, but I'm sure within the next couple of days, we'll have some some ideas, some thoughts together in, in ways that we can support Jessica over here. So thank you. Yeah, um, and Dr. Francine, welcome to the show, guys. Harriet Jabba out of Boston, Massachusetts. It's a pleasure to have you on. My girl, Cape Hall out of Providence. How you doing, my everything? Guys, like the issue of Liberia, we cannot get tired about talking about it. The sentence said, we come here to serve the Liberian people. My preference for me and everything that I do do is this. I have to give the edge to Liberian citizen and all things above everything else. So my intentions here is always going to be known. It's the preservation of this country for us, for our heritage. It's the preservation of the Liberian way. It's to develop our own cultures. It's to protect what is interested to us as Liberians. As we continue to negate our duty to the country, as we continue to outsource the responsibility of leadership to other places, we are not going to have control of this country. If we do not take economic control of this country, <laughs> we're just going to be floating around, doing nothing, living in hunger, dying before the age of 65, most of us. We got work to do. There must be a urgent, a degree of urgency brought to the people's business so we can truly develop this country. Once again, man, to the audience, you're welcome to the show, Mr. Jackson. It was such a pleasure. Better at the door and Padiga. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, good Friday, nice weekend. You know, I know this is the day that most people who in their working years look forward to the weekend. So I just want to say all of you working out there, you know, I pray and hope that you reach retirement and you manage to put your dogs in a row that you manage to get at least two cents every month to be able to buy your quicker oats and your you eat your egg white and your and your oatmeal. Look, um, I can never get tired of talking about Liberia. And one of my frustrations I'm having now is that um, all of the optimism, all of the hope that Liberians have is is not. It hasn't evaporated, but uh, it is. It has been threatened. It has really been threatened by a lack of physical attitude, uh, by a degree of dishonesty, by a lack of strategic planning, and and just a lack of understanding on what the critical issues in the country are. We've done a lot of research in terms of what the Liberian people want, and the first thing, as you know, Opa, growing up in uh, Point Four, is to eat. That's, that's the basic thing. And we don't have that under control. We can't feed ourselves. 90% uh, of what we consume come from outside. Then if you look at Liberian economic empowerment, the economy is uh, controlled more than 90%, 95% by foreigners. If you look at just basic trading, I mean, the, uh, the, <clears throat> the sector with the least amount of uh, obstacles to entry Control. I mean, they only play with our women, the men, value boys and market women. They in the marketplaces, they don't have warehouses, they don't have access to trade finance, they don't have control of the market. And basically the foreigners are just um, taking away the uh, your national wealth, which is income. Income is the wealth for every country. And if you allow that income, to be placed in the hands of foreigners who don't have the, the patriotism, the nationalism, and where they, 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 they're obligated to a foreign land, where they send the monies, where they do the investments, where they do their retirement, where they send their kids to school, where they build their best houses, they make the best investments. Um, you can never have a good country. You can never have a prosperous country. And you can't have something in economics we call social cohesion. Social cohesion is when the, the collective will of the people come together to embark upon the process of ensuring that people are, I mean, are well off. It's just it's simply about well-being. All the things that we argue about all day on spawn, 
basically are not essential. The only thing that's important is the well-being of people. Do they have food to eat? Do they have a decent roof over their, their heads? Can they send their children to school? Do they have adequate health care? And do they have a place for leisure and for and for that? And 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 so I'm I'm very disappointed at the all, all of the missteps and all of the things that have been ha that are happening in the early stages of this administration. It's a great disappointment to me. Thank you, Uncle Sam. Uh, I don't know what is Fadiga, but Isaac, you want to come in before Fadiga? Welcome, Isaac. Well, thank you. Hi to everyone on the show. Um, I wanted to say happy weekend to our listening audience, but I think there's nothing happy about the weekend. When we are in a time where even up to the 19th of the month, about 19 government agencies have not received their salary yet. I think we are in a trouble. I'm a disgusted person today. I can tell you. I'm a very sad person today. I'm shocked. And I'm so surprised by the level of incompetence that has been birthed since those who have claimed to be the most educated people have known a territory of the state. Someone asked me, what are we using the work? It was hard to answer. Are we using our hands, our feet, our ears, our nose, or where are we going? There is nothing can be understood. And we are in a place now where our people that listen to us have been like brainwashed in a way that they continue to suffer, but they continue to defend. I was at a junction and had a little guy trying to get something he couldn't get, but he was defending because the people see the good that we say is there. When, of course, we know in our conscience that the goods aren't there. Where is the country heading today? I know we are just open, but we'll go straight into this. I witnessed a protest today organized by PROSA, a student grouping at the University of Liberia. And that protest got Morovia Patlist and still, where in stores and shops were closed down Broad Street. Ask yourself, how so early are we here? I will tell you the reason why. Who on here or listening to me has ever seen, I have not seen that, a government coming to power and putting out every fight to dismiss people and not trying to employ people. I have never seen, unless someone has seen, a government that comes to power and tries all they can to get people out of economic empowerment instead of creating economic empowerment. I have never seen, unless someone has seen, a government that comes to power and takes job away from people instead of trying to create jobs. I have never seen a government that comes to power and will do everything to go against every law that exists in the country. Instead of doing the least they've said they'll do, where are the campaign promises? Where are all of the big shows? And someone say it's too early. I will tell you, every day in this country has its own thing. If you think today is early, wait until you get to know we are in 2026, 2027, 2028. The government came. What I was saying it, we said this over and over, but the reality will always set in. The only thing you want to do. Keep branding people as not qualified and dismissing people across the place. When you dismiss one person, it is not the person you are affecting. You are affecting about 10, 20 persons that depend on that person. Ask yourself, has this government ever created a single job since it came to power? No. What has the government done? Taking jobs away from people. And when you say, 
they come out of defense or oh, the people that are on the payroll or oh, the people in the, the incompetent or oh, it means we will not measure poverty by competence and incompetence those who will have meal to eat are people who are competent our society now should abandon the poor people how hateful can a government be you are telling little guy this is an intro uh, i said we'll get to it i i, I know i know yeah i am we'll so yeah, let's move on to Fadiga because I think today will be a very special show. And again, I respect everybody's opinion. Liberian people want to benefit, so there will be no interruption. We always speak as freely as we as we should, and there will be no one to interrupt. So let's bring in our Hossein UJ Fadiga. Talk to us. <clears throat> Your two minutes or three minutes, Fadiga. It is laughable hearing the likes of Asido uh, speaking about competence and bad governance. When by this time in uh, former president, we are first term, he will bulldoze in his house and building a mini city. Look, I pray that we never have a government like the one that we just took from power. The Liberian people deliberately send a message that no more kakistocracy is going, uh, 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 going to rule Liberia. Look, this one, the, we just. The damage, this just tell you the, the level of damage that was inherited by this government. When you have a government that came to power and destroyed every fabric of our society, dig hole, cover hole to the point that we are unveiling some things that will shock the nation. They came to loot poor people, children, people from Soniwe, Gibraltar, were given an opportunity and they stepped on their own people. They were not Congo people, they were not elites. There were people that look like you and me that came down from the slum, the commoners' children. They came and hurt their own people, manipulated them, and taught them how to be shelter of Munya and turn them into a court. Liberia had a knee on the neck. When we came to this town, we saw people, men and women, responsible men and women that couldn't breathe. Now, they may not have money. They may not get the pay on time. After all is done, look, I pray to President Boyka. I pray. He, I, all, I, the reason we gave him this power because we believe you have nothing to lose. You are a legacy president. Stop listening to the noise. You don't need public opinion for doing the good right thing. We need to do the hard thing and save this country once and for all. Every sector is damaged in this country. Everywhere, there is nowhere that the guys didn't touch. They took incompetence to a new level, and they want to have the audacity to sit there and talk about people in here pay and people came. You brought more people into poverty. You brought a salary redistribution scheme that plunged more people into poverty, and then you want to come lecture us here. I pray that we're done with this whole partisan thing, but I'm telling you, this government will succeed. This government will deliver. We don't measure government in 100 days, we don't measure government in even one year. With the damage that was done in this country, it will probably take us two terms to fix that thing. And if we have to go three terms, we'll go three terms and fix this problem. But look at lecture here about competence. You can say, look at, the, look at the caliber of people that have been appointed. I don't care if it takes six months, 12 months to put the bright people in place. We're not grabbing children from the street. That which are in power and, 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 and give them education, brought them. You had a certain mayor that 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 that, that could barely. I, I don't even want to go to own that route. This is how you guys destroy this country. Young children in the street, as little old as 15 years old. That's the kind of women in that you guys were behind. We don't you think we don't know what's going on in this town. Sometimes I wonder what went on in the last six years. Divided the country to the point that you have to be on the country to take job. You're talking about taking job? That you have to disgrace reputable people, disgrace them, put them men in the way that funny bearer. Now in the country, we don't even see all those funny, a funny, funny symbol all around. You go in ghettos, you see picture of the, the, the past regime. They allow people, drug our children, introduce drugs in this country. Drugs were here before, but it exacerbated all of this, 
under the past administration to clean this mess you think that small thing we need i think we need to we need to be very honest and bold to the library people and tell them look the ministry of, of information need to do a lot to my good friend at, at lbs you guys need to do a lot in educating the people what what happened so that we can distinguish what we inherited from what we are going to, to fix because what you guys did to this country honestly only god will be you guys because thank you very much thank you very much Fadika. i, I want to uh you, you know we only six uh, let me just take more Ali off our back let him make his own comment then we'll come back on set because uh he want to contribute but you know he's driving so uh can come on yeah. right now. Well, well, I don't know. Yeah, but you know, he's one of our panelists. We always will entertain him and see. You want to take 30 seconds? I will. I will give you time. Thank you. I will give you time, but let me bring more Ali in first. As a photo one minute, I will, I will come to you. Uh, oh, welcome to the show, Mo. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you, Stanton, and good evening to the listening audience. You know, firstly, let me say thank you to Hussein for effectively taking down. As it do, and his charade is spilled on the show tonight. Um, sometimes I want to laugh as it do speak about all oh, the taking job from the people. Oh, they did not create one job. As it do, what you did over six years was not job creation. What you did was to effectively damage the country beyond what the 14 year civil war did. You had no ability, you had no clue of what you are putting the country into and when you realize it it was late and that was because we just elected the wrong people into position that is the reason why the liberian people decided to ratify their mistake of 2017. you do not go to an entity even in a private sector an entity that should have for example 20 person working and then you employ 250 person 300 persons and you think that entity is supposed to be efficient. It is never going to be efficient. Government should not be placed where you, you want to create jobs that should be created in the private sector. So what we are going to do is what you did not do. We are going to create a vibrant private sector that will absorb the people who are jobless and people who will not be able to get into formal sector. That's what we are going to do, and that's what we are setting the basis for. That's why we are going all out there looking for, for, for investment. You could not bring a single investment in the country. <coughs> that's why you created all kinds of scheme to steal in the name of, of, of employing people in government. That is not how government operates. Six years later, you still don't understand it. And you're talking about you're, you're sacking people. Nobody is sacking anybody. To sack somebody means that the person was was employed. You were so scared. You was you didn't employ the people. You created a fake scheme. Put them under the pretense that they were employed when in fact they were not employed. You took you 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 used them over the years and gave them peanuts and you. And you believe that that you create an employment? How can you employ somebody with no employment letter? Over say yeah, you, you took them out of job. They never had a job to start with. You never give them joy. You fool them. You lie to the people. And you should not be sitting on radio talking about oh they're taking the people from job. Nobody is being taken from job. What we are doing is resetting the system to what a proper properly functioning government should be. Then we begin to create employment, proper employment, where people will come and work in the private sector and work in government with dignity, and they will go back when they say, yes, I've worked. You don't just take people, you or ministries and agencies with no TOR, nothing to do at the end of the day, you give them fifty dollars, you steal hundred dollars, then you say you created employment. No, we are not going to do that. We'll reset the clock, we'll run an efficient government. We run the country based on transparency and based on a, a, a system that is responsible to the people. Thank you, Stanton. Thank you, Moadi. Thank you very much. I'd uh, like to respond, please. 
No, no, no. We're bringing acid dough back, and but let's do this, guys. We'll be very patient, and we have to distribute this accordingly. I'm going to go to acid dough because both Mo Ali and Fatika reference acid dough. Then we'll start over from Dr. Richardson, Mr. Duaru, you, Uncle Sam, and myself. Acid dough. We'll give you two minutes. You better hit from both Thank sides. You. Yeah, thank you, brother. No, I have not been hit from, from, from both sides. I have shown exactly what I've said. You listen to a rescue excuse or complaining, two of them. Let me tell you what they said. And let me tell you what they did not say. Like I've said, what Liberia do we want? Do we want a Liberia of complaints, of excuses, or a Liberia of action. My brother Fatika said, we brought poverty because we reduce the people's salary. How confused can a person be? Fatika's rescue is not bringing poverty after dismissing people. But those who reduce salary are those who brought poverty. At least we brought harmonization for pay equity in governance. That they are doing today, they are taking people off salary zero dollars. He's talking about we brought poverty. The ND from Water and Sewer came in the show, he backed the brothers up. He spoke of everything wrong that George Weah did not do. He did not speak of one single thing that they are doing today. What Liberia do we want? George, we are dead now win an election because the people felt okay. You did not bring Corey for a whole day. Rescue will bring Corey. Instead of the brother telling us today how he's bringing Corey, he is telling us how George we are did not bring Corey. He come when you ask rescue, what you will do? George, we are damaged the country. Oh, my man, when you will do it? They are not damaged George, we are cause that's the only thing you hear from them. What does it tell you? Think about a student going to class and coming home to tell you that the teacher, the teacher can't get her lesson. What does it tell you? What we want? It's not what George we have did wrong. He is no more president. That's why he did not win. We want you, you to tell us what correction you are making for the wrong that George we have did. Not the wrong judge we are there to tell us. And guess what? This government continues to implement all policies from judge we are. The first grant and loan that was signed by this government was of $40 million. That was a money approved by judge we are before that was signed. So now coming just now. The first average youth grant. Let me spend the time now. Let me respect the yeah. time, please. So I'll give you yeah, another 10 seconds. 10 seconds, but let's respect the time. Right. right. The first address youth graduation government had where the folks who the weird government got ready for graduation. The roles that this government is continuing to build are roles George Weir started building. The companies that George Weir used are the companies this government is using. Why is the change? Why if I have counted all of the wrong that this government, the incompetence of this government, why can't you count on me with the thing this government is doing instead of thinking about what job we have done wrong? And that should be, and that should be, and that should be a closing. And that should be a closing. And of course, I confused, but you I said, we appreciate you. And listen, guys, let's just respect the time. We are not many, but we'll give you two minutes, please. Keep the rest of them when we come back to you. Dr. Richardson, your two minutes. So, you know, I'm so sick and tired of hearing, oh, we employed this person. Oh, you guys have not employed this person. It's, 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 it's a broken record, okay? We need to reset the government. Your government, I said to her, I'm sorry, George, we are government, not, not your government, has to take responsibility. All right? And 
perhaps the reason why the likes of Farika and Mo Ali are speaking because they are in a state of shock. How damaged, how damaged did your government uh, leave government? Government offices were broken. I got to hear that when I, in our country, people uh, were put on salary uh, to, 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 to balloon the, 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 the payroll. So there were certain things that people expected that your government to do for six years that didn't happen, that put us back 200 years, perhaps, or 20 years, maybe. But on the other hand, I'm also very surprised by some of the amateur mistakes, as I say it every time, that Fadiga and the rest of your government is making. For somebody who are uh, a part, for persons who are a part of a government, you should not be making these mistakes with appointments. You should not be making mistakes, you know, uh, when it comes to asset recovery with courthouse issues. Your 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 T's should be crossed and your I's should be dyed. So, but I'm sick and tired. Every time I come on the show, oh, uh, you know, let's hold your government responsible. Oh, no, tell me what your government's going to do. We need to reset. We need to start now. What are we going to do? That's what we need to be talking about. But yes, I agree. We cannot talk about what we're going to do without going to the past. So we'll continue to hear how broken our system is and who recently broke our system. I'm not putting all the blame on we are government. The system perhaps was broken since 1847. But most recently, we are government broke the system. When you see we are government building apartments, in the eyes of poverty, the system of, was broken. When you see uh, mediocre roles in, the, in, in Liberia, the system was broken. When we see that the only thing that happened to LEC was when Ellen government came in and put in uh, 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 the, 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 the system that is in White Plains. Uh, well, how do you guys call that system, uh, Sam Jackson? You always speak about that. The system my, that- My coffee. Yes, my coffee. When Ellen came in and dumped money into my coffee. What happened? What did George Ria do with LEC? Besides uh going to 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 to, to well, I don't even think he was the one who went to Aracos to make the arrangement. So, yes, we'll only talk about George Ria because of where we are. Let's move forward, let's rebuild our country and talk about how we all can contribute to our country. And that's what I wanted to add. I said to Dr. Richardson, thank you. I like how you take from both sides to, to, to balance this thing up. Thank you very much. Uh, Brother Duado. Yeah, for me, <clears throat> I'm not going to take from both sides. I'm going to say this. For my brother, I say the shameless they come on the show. Look, Mo Ali, everything Mo Ali says is 100% right. And we are not naive to what was left behind. And they have to fix it to get moving. I, for one, just wish they would create some jobs in the private sector. I don't want the private sector to be an after talk. I want to be part of the grand strategy of the Barker administration's team so jobs can be created in the private sector. The issue of job creation can be about putting people in government. It must be an extension. And I will continue to say this. Look, for the private sector, for the public sector to work, it must be heavily supported by the private sector. Let me repeat that. For the public sector to work, to provide services to the population, fire departments, police departments, government organizations to have the proper foreign ministries and these agencies of government to work, there must be a substantial private sector infusion of resources. And the only way we can do that is to grow the private sector. I want the president to focus in this area. I want the president to find the experts to come in and actually tackle this area. Let's create jobs in the private sector. Let's focus here so we can shift some of this burden away from who hire home and who wasn't hired and who over part of the payroll. We know President We already did that. With President We are had no business near the presidency. Let me repeat. President We are had no business. This was a main child. The most awesome responsibility in our country, we take it and we give it to a main child to run. He destroyed everything. It would take Honorable Buaka a lot of work to do, but I do agree with Dr. Francine. A lot of mistakes are being made in the beginning. We cannot have these mistakes because we don't have the kind of time. Look at the decision, weigh the decision, process the decision, understand the implementation of that decision, and make sure you follow through on that decision so it can work for the people. We cannot be making decisions. We come and say, oh, oops, you're normal. You're not good there. Let's stop that. 
The people must go to work. It's my case, and I will continue to make this case, Stanton. Thank you so much. You're muted, sir. You're muted. I think Jason, go ahead. I mean, same as Jason, go ahead. Okay, Ten so I just want to ask Mo Ali, Dualu, and Asun, and we say, George, we are destroy the country. George, we have put the country back. What is your reliance? Let's look at the economy. There are four sectors in the economy. The real sector, where businesses do things. The fiscal sector, where the government expenditure goes. The monetary sector, where the, the central bank intervenes to create stability, macroeconomic stability. And the external sector in terms of trade. Are those four sectors of the economy broken? Are they broken? Give me an evidence that those, those sectors of the economy are broken. There's no evidence. And I can show you that you have macroeconomic stability under the Georgia administration. You have improved circular flow of payments and income where you have $2 billion worth of electronic payments, mobile money, Visa, MasterCard, where banking assets increased up to $1.5 billion. There was under a billion dollars under the UP government. Exactly. And then you come to lie here every day and say, no investments came to Liberia. There, were, there was only one cement factory under the UP government. There are four cement factories today in Liberia. Nimba Rubber Incorporated, a $9.8 million was ratified in 2019. SIFCA, Palm Oil, Hummingbird Resources, Bao Chico, a $500 million investment, iron ore mining, okay? Jetty Rubber, eh? Then you come to, 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 to a, a SETI steel plant, eh? So where do you come from with this thing about there was no investment during the George Weir time, eh? Then you have the Liberian American poultry, Eh? How can you say, I mean, just tell me in the four sectors, if you want, you understand economics, prove to me, give me the figures of macroeconomic instability. Show me the depths of the brokenness of the Liberian economy. Show me. Don't be saying, oh, the Tobia left the country bad. Tobia did this. Tobia. You don't have no empirical evidence. You just come out here, the same propaganda you spew to an unsuspecting public, okay, to make you win by a narrow margin. You can't use that propaganda to govern. In all of the things they've been saying, Mubar Ali said, oh, we will do this. We will do this. We will do this. But tell me, Dwalo, you, uh, you are a supporter of the government. Tell me one fundamental reordering of the Liberian society in terms of health, education, social welfare, and Liberian economic empowerment, and things that you are doing to drive investments into the economy. Tell me one thing that you're doing. Electricity. Electricity access was significantly improved under the job we administration. Over 144,000 customers, LEC, electricity access was improved to over 25% of the population. So how can you say, Joe, we have did nothing? Okay, I'm not saying there were no transgressions. I'm not saying people didn't steal. I'm not saying people they were not put on sanctions, okay? But had the Global Magnitsky Act existed, okay, in 2016, okay, but before 2016, Many of your people would have been put on Big Ball 1, Big Ball 2, 66 out of 68 concession agreements that were deemed fraudulent. That were deemed fraudulent. El Anito, where you gave a scrap company a $2.5 billion IO asset. Okay? And you started the, the process to start trucking iron ore by road from bombing through Douala. Do something different. Give us the, where is the beef? Like we say in America, where is the beef? Give me something to say, Joe, we had destroyed this area, and this is the this is the empirical evidence that the real sector was destroyed. But in your own preface of the budget, you said the economy improved and grew by 2%, I mean, or 2.2 or 3.2 or 3% in 2022 and 2023, and you were building on that. 
You're building on that growth in the economy. That's what you said in your, in your own budget, budget preface. So what part of the economy or the society that don't yet destroy? Tell us. Give us some evidence. I beg you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Sam. Let me ask you a question before uh, I have brilliant acid. Uncle Sam, mm. you name all the stuff that George Manawia, the former president, did for six years. You expect the Unity Party folks to give you everything that you just listed, to bring in five companies in no. less than three months running. No, no. To bring you, but let me finish now. I'm going to start begging you. Let me finish. You need everything for six years. Five cement factory, pottery factory, palm oil factory, seti, jetty, and everything plus more. Let's just agree. At some point, this government started on the bar 14 with the appointments. But you expect this government to give you five cement factory in three months. You expect this government to give you poultry factory, 10 of them in three months. You expect this government to bring in steel factory in three months. Do you expect this government, Uncle Sam, be real, be sincere. Do you expect this government okay. to tell you, say, we have now opened one of the billion dollars concession agreement with a new company in three months can i can i respond to you sir oh yes yeah, sure please Great. do please do i am not that insane okay or unreconciled in my own brain to think these things will happen in three months but what has been happening in three months are the litany of excuses or the inertia created by the inaction and the lies that have been perpetrated, okay, to sort of validate their ineptitude. So that is the reason why I'm angry. I'm, but I expect for you to start laying the foundation for macroeconomic stability. I expect you to start laying the foundation for attraction of foreign direct investments. I expect you to start laying the foundation for external support. So that I was the same I was you. No, 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 I was the same. I was the same in my time. No, I'm but you asked me a question. You asked me a question. Uncle Sam, that's my turn. Uncle Sam, that's my turn. Oh, Don't give my turn. I was just asking, I'm using my turn to no, ask no, you a question. No, no, but you ask me a question, no, I no, have to I'm give a comprehensive answer I'm to, to the, you. I'm to the point that you have answered. So I don't want you to take away my turn. I mean, I okay, do you I'm accept talking. what I'm saying? Do you accept no. what I'm saying? No. But, okay, I that's then I you. I disagree with you. But that's fine, but then come to ask me. Come to ask me. Listen, man. Yeah, yeah, let me do this. Contract. Your expectation mm -hmm. that they should lay the groundwork. Mm -hmm. I'm number one to beat on this government. But how many folks you see in Washington, D.C. right now attending the spring meeting? Too many. Too many. I'm not, I'm, I'm not asking you too many. Why I'm are they here? I'm just, how many people? I'm telling okay, you too then, many. Then, then, let me, please let me finish, Uncle Sam. I'm begging you back. you my uncle. You're my son. We never argue. I will give it to you and say you're right. You are talking about this government should be laying the groundwork. That's what I'm going, Uncle Sam. Okay. You are saying the government should lay the groundwork. You want to see that. You will not blame the government that they have not brought in the country anything. But at least, you said it, yeah. at least lay the groundwork. Lay the groundwork. But then coming to America for the spring meeting, isn't that a groundwork? Oh, it's not yeah, a groundwork. It's an annual meeting. Oh, 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 oh. Meeting. oh, hold on, no, 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 it's not. It's not. It's not. Oh, I, I, I will say my own. Yeah, you. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's you. Come on, no, okay, you know what? You know you what? Let me say my own. To eat caviar oh, and, drink oh, and drink and drink champagne that laying groundwork. Huh? Okay, so Uncle oh, Sam, I need to buy my car. No, 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 Oh, yeah, strategy. Strategy, okay. huh? so thank you. Thank you, Uncle Sam. Let me thank you. 
This is what? Tell, tell you, let me go. I beg you, Dr. Richardson. Let me, let me take my time. I beg you, Dr. Richardson, please. And we said sorry, and I will just use my last 30 seconds. No problem. And we move on. I will not, I will not even ask you a question again. Folks, let me address it like this, because I try to have some information sharing with Uncle Sam. I think Uncle Sam is wrong. When this government made a mistake, we'll beat them. We'll beat them publicly. But for my Uncle Sam Jackson, Samuel P. Jackson, to say his expectation is for the Unity Party folks under the leadership of Jose Yimabwaka to lay the groundwork. And when I pointed out to him, Washington, D.C., three hours away from me, and say, and say, Uncle Sam, hey, man, do I have to talk to your uncle? Man? Why are you you me no, but Uncle Sam, let's so get in the loop. Let's Coming keep it in the loop. Not, it, it, yeah, well, let's keep it in the loop. You said something I don't agree with. I didn't interrupt you. Let's keep it in the loop. Washington is not an achievement. Yeah, Coming but keep it in the loop. When they get back to you, say it, Uncle Sam. No, but let's I'm asking you to tell me what are they doing in Washington? Yeah, but when they get back to you. What are they doing in Washington? Washington is not an achievement. I'm not for that. Uncle Sam, I got my own time. I got my own time. Please, let me keep my time and talk. Yeah, thank you. Let me keep my time. Uncle Sam, the people want to enjoy the show. Let me keep my time. I can hold this government responsible. But for me to sit here and listen to you, as you call for those expectations, that they should lay the groundwork. My ears is in Washington, D.C. I know what Roland Gillings went through these three days, and he's leaving the mall. Not because I beat you on Amin Moda. I know who all Amin Moda met and it's negotiation. You ask him for what they're taking back? Allow them to complete the mission and ask them the question they when they get back home. Hey, 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 you had your three minutes, I didn't interrupt you, man. I will say this, Dwadu, and allow them to complete the mission. Bring them on the show and ask them for the deliverables. They are setting a fundamental agenda and they will go back with a reward. Domestically, indeed, we started on the bad fourth. Indeed. We said this over and over, but the mission is in gear. We have unleashed ministers and directors. Go and find them and bring them back. That we can report to the Liberian people. You're talking about expectation. You are right. But now, oh, oh, they came. There were too many. Oh, oh, I don't want to go there, Uncle Sam. I don't want to go there. Joe is the only person in Liberia history that traveled with the most, most, most government official in the history of Liberia. So I rest my case. But I beg you, we shouldn't interrupt each other. Because when you speak, somebody will check you when it is the time. So your expectation, they are on your expectation, Uncle Sam. You will hear from them. You will see them. You can, I can I respond? No, you are not. We're going to ask him. Okay, no. Yeah, no. You want to interrupt her, Uncle Sam? We're going to ask it though. Ask it though, please. And let's bring in Fadika again. I see Azib yeah, by in the back. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Dr. Richardson, my own, my own dad, my own dad. And Dwado, I want all of us to share my time equally. Let's share my time. But yeah. I beg you, let yeah, understand that we are talking for two minutes. Two minutes. It is the old, I will claim my time. So I want us to share my time. George, we have damaged the country. I will bring up each sector of the economy and tell you what George we have did. I want you to also tell me what damage he did in that sector. Let me, start with, let me start with poverty. In 2017, the World Food Program, I will send you the report, says the poverty rate in Liberia was 64%. Take the average of 5,300,000 population, it will be 3.3 million World Food Program. In 2024, 
the World Bank said about 2.5 million people live in poverty. That is about 47%, very less than 64%. I want to break. Tell me the damage he did in this one. Let's go back time by time. Okay, so you just used 60 seconds of your time, just to tell you. No problem. So now okay. I'm late, late listening. Tell yeah, me the damage that we did on World Food Program. program. World Food Program, World Food Program, 2017, between 2013 and 2018, they said the poverty rate was 64%. I will send you the report. I will pull in the chat room. In 2024, the World Bank said 2.5 million people, which should be about 47%. You and I will agree that 60, 64 is greater than 47. That's what George Weah did. I'm listening for you to tell me how he damaged that part. Okay, so we supposed to be going to our house for Fadika. Okay, so, so let me is... continue. I will keep waiting. Let me go to education. George, we have brought three. No, 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 no. We were giving the benefit of the doubt, but can you let Fadika answer you? Okay, well, so let him answer you because you know, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Jeff, Finney, Jeff Finney. Yeah. Well, I should finish the whole time, right? I will yeah. keep reminding yeah. this. They damage George, we are damaged. I want us to really go real on the facts, not political campaign. Let me go to education. George, we are employed free tuition at the university level that increase enrollment. George, we are paying YX fees that increase the success rate. So you are is a you you don't go, you don't stay online. Go on the internet on your phone, you can register and you go on a George We are. More than 85 schools were being upgraded on a George Weir. More than 2,000 supplementary teachers were added on the payroll. Every educational district today is mobile. Now, I won't go play this one. I will wait for the damage in cost in the education part. Let me go to infrastructure. Let's start with market buildings. Omega market, Duporo market, or let's go to the road. Douala market, no, you know, a plenty. Maryland County, everywhere. Let's go to the roads. More than 400 kilometers of roads built. Let's go to offices, corporate offices, buildings. LPRC, NPA, NAFA, Maritime. You name the rest. Let's go to proper housing being con con constructed. Let's go to hospital, Bapolu, 100 bedroom hospital and many other hospitals you know about, the expansion of JFK. Let's go to the parks, recreational parks. You have them. Let's go to the youth development. About 15 million infused in the economy through youth programs. That's the YOP supported by the World Bank and the YEEP and the LEEP and the Adrex Youth. $15 million in there. Let's go to the SKD. It was banned. It is the weird government that made the SKD today to be the home toy for free time. Let's also go, also go, go to FLA, the Federation of Liberian Youth. The first female president on a George Weir. FLA used to be everyday protest. Today, FLA is having a farm land in each of the county on a, on a George Weir. Let's also go to GDP per, per capita. There where I was going to bring the stuff. From 2005, so 2017, the, the average GDP per capita in Liberia was 590. From 2018 to 2024, the average GDP per capita is 735. Do I want to stop here? I want you to list each of the places where job we are damaged. So Thank, you Thank you. Thank you. That will be going to that Richard said not to Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. I said, I said, I said, we get one moderator that you not tell your own people took notes. Okay. It's uh -huh. not that Richard said, I'm sorry, Dr. Richard said that will be that will can be uh, I, can I answer him? No, that will be Fatika, Dr. Richard said. Then we'll come to you after Fatika, please. Dr. Uh, Richard, okay. Dr. Richard, please start to answer. Answer, answer. No, I'm gonna begin. I can't discuss. No, me, I, the oh, reason oh, why oh, I said, do you mean no, no, ahead, you waste ahead. your time to answer? As a, not even answering. Those, I'm just they, gonna tell him that he's making these complex issues like poverty. You know, no. 
it, no, that's what I say. The, the it, solution, it the librarian people found a solution to the lies and deception and they kicked them out of power. We chased them out of town. That is the reason George Ria is not president today. Go <laughs> all the garbage and these guys. This guy. <laughs> That's the oh, reason. <laughs> George Ria is not in power today. <laughs> oh, who said that, 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 that? That's exactly the reason. They sit down and 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 and, and Samuel Twain just put that, this this bunch of garbage in in the spirit all day. That's the reason why is 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 unprecedented. Look, most incumbent president win election this guy was booted out of office with disgrace on top of everything he named he one of the few presidents that were flying private jets and building mansions and exploiting and, and going to see jackie apia and 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 and, 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 and having, the country <laughs> yeah and, and having ogs in, around the city and 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 and, 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 and this is how they, they, they choose to use public funds and that is why they were put out of office. I wouldn't even give credence. I wouldn't even indulge you in Harry composition because the last time I checked, we won, you lost. And if you did all these good things and numbers, yeah, the library poor would have. They did not even something they went after your lawmaker. And you lost. We're not going to spend my time talking about spill milk. The mistake that the librarian people made in 2017, we, they, look, some working on the ground to make sure that Liberia make that kind of mistake. This that mistake have cost us almost a century uh, a, a, a war for damage. It will take a lifetime for us to undo. We don't even know yet. We are still learning. We do not even know the magnitude of the damage that you guys done. We are still learning, and I pray that this legacy president that we elected will put his foot down and make sure that. All of you evil individual pay for the damage that you did. The evil killing innocent people for greed, looting this country. What government in the history of Liberia have almost half of the officials were put on sanction, United States sanction? Yeah. That how bad and irresponsible this that government was. And then I will consider and respond to as I say, I say your response is you lost, we won. That is all the answer you will get from me. Stanton, I wish we could talk something else. Thank you. Talk about. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, so thank you. We are we are we are moving. Let me let me say this before we go to that. Over. We won. Let us talk about more pertinent uh, that, Yeah, but I disagree with you, Fatika. We won is not a solution. Can we over now? No, I said, please don't interrupt. I beg you. Uh, we should discuss the issue instead of saying we won't. Uh, Dr. Richard said, just, I know you're coming in, but just to just slide this in, the COVID-19 2020 Food Relief Program on a World Food Program, WFP, that up to today, CDC government only told us, say, because it is WFP, we cannot give you any report because you cannot audit WFP. The reason why I'm saying this is because as a do brought about WFP. They stole the money, they ate the money, and they lie on WFP. And as of today, nobody knows the outcome of the distribution during the heat of COVID when people were dying, what happened to that money and that food distribution? That's all I try to slide. Now, Dr. Richardson, you're two minutes. Uh, Brother Duarte, these two minutes, and we'll go to Sam Jackson, as if I took her at Fort Kennedy. So my brother, I say, it's so easy to come on this platform and just throw out ideas like, oh, George, we are reduced poverty. I'm reading a UNICEF report right here that's about how in 2018, when you guys took power, 2017, 2018, 71% of the Liberian people, okay, were on the poverty level. All right. So at that time, what strategy, what plan did your government have to reduce poverty in the country? You don't say it. You just said, oh, uh, poverty was reduced. 
Because it's a multi-level, multi-dimensional problem. You can't just come on this show and just say, oh, you're you move on. And, and, and so we need to, to, to definitely go into the, the study of that. Then you move on. You talk about education. Wyatt, every time you guys talk about improving education, you mention YFP. Is that yeah, it? Is that it? No, I mean, I mentioned it because you mentioned it. What? You yes, use the people PTA money to pay YFP. Yes, okay. Yes, so it's not yes, it. it. Look, yes, you go to the University of Liberia right now, it's a damn shame. I am so oh, no. ashamed to go to the University yes, of Liberia. Look at, look at what you guys did. You turned college students into uh, people who were, 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 were saying we are, we are every day. We are, we are every day. All right? YFE is not a, what was your education plan? Speak about what George, your education plan was when you talk about these things. Then you talk about market building. Market building, and people are still standing in the road. They're not even using the market building you built. So how is that an accomplishment? I was just there. One of the market building I asked about, the one in Dwight, they say, oh, the man, that building empty. When I went to the one in Red they say, oh, man, that building empty. So that, I, then when the children go to take drugs, uh, I okay. can see your video. Then okay. when they go to take drugs. All right. When you talk about hospitals, we still have hospitals that don't even have drugs in the country. Just putting BNA on this issue by building a new hospital in Bobolu doesn't equate to how is it impacting the lives of the people, the well-being. You started talking, I believe that Samuel Jackson started talking about well-being of the people. That's what we need to be studying. How did your government improve the well-being of Liberian people? We know how people personally improve their well-being. We know how much money, how they how their their, their lives will increase. We know how much how many apartments and how many houses and how many trips that they took. Whatever the Liberian people, and when you speak, that's what I want us to be talking about today. All right. Now, uh, uh, Buckeye's government, I can't assess it because they're in the early stages. I'm still waiting for their policies and plans. So let me just address that to you. Thank you, Dan, and I and I appreciate this. There is a there is a word out there called cognitive dissonance. Right. And I'm just gonna throw that out there and come back and, and, and just go a little bit. I, I want to say this. First of all, I want to say this. This is the question's rhetorical. I don't want anybody to answer. Where are the factories you're talking about? The full cement factories in this country that was brought by President Weir. Now, my brother Do said we should look at the indicators. Let, let go step by step. I'll just give you five of the indicators and I will tell you where President Weir failed. Okay. You spoke about in this show that we talk about the gross domestic product of the country. On President Weir, what direction was it going? If it increased slightly, what was the government strategy that made it increased? There's nothing you can say to that. President, we have absolutely no strategy towards that, okay? Let's talk about the consumption in the country. Did we produce anything locally? In fact, our balance of trade increased in this country massively by north of $1.3 billion in the span of six years. Only Ellie Johnson Salif for 12 years, it was around $900 million. President, we are in the span of six years, increased our balance almost $2 billion he added to the budget. What did he have to show for it? Samuel Twell went around talking about it. You guys built over 800. You paid over 800 roads across the country. You stayed a year was around 400. Where are the 800 roads across this country? There are thousands of reports. You can Google them yourself. The road connection in this society, in Liberia, that connects this country that are paved is no more than 1,000 miles. President, we are not just feeling that. Let's look about the stability of the prices in this country. The infusion of money into this country. Was there consumer confidence in this society under any circumstance? Were prices stable under President Weah? Or were they fluctuating? All the food prices in this country. President Weah dumped so much money in the country. You guys have $500 Liberian bank note. Everybody kept them to themselves. They brought them to the country. We put a lot of burden on the everyday people. In fact, let me say this to you. Remittances to this country. If it wasn't for remittances from abroad to hold up the president we are administration, I don't know what would have happened. There was absolutely no strategy on price stability in this country. There was no full factories being built, as proclaimed by my brother, Mr. Jackson, full cement factories that are brought into the country. That is not true. You talk I about three. I said three. No, no, no. Three, four. It makes I no difference. No, not three, four. I said three. Okay, three. There was no three factory built oh, in this country. Were, there there three, yes. no, no, let me finish my own. Let me finish my own. Okay? We talk about the money supply to the country. 
How about the money brought in? I'm not going to go back to the map map exercise that we're done with, 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 with Simon Twitter. What the president we are do? If we, when you're talking, answer this question. What the president we are do on his administration that improve the livelihood, the standard of living for the people in this country? You're calling market building that you tell about $6 million when we know the market building was not even worth $500,000. I mean $500, you call that massive infrastructure? Let me list some decent infrastructure for you. A sanitation infrastructure, an electrical infrastructure, a telecommunications infrastructure, rural infrastructure. These are crucial infrastructure which we focus focusing on. But you're talking about he paid market building. We need to stop playing with the librarian people business. Not only the president, we have failed. He was a dangerous person for the livelihood of every single Liberian citizen of this country. This man had no business near the presidency. Senator, I'm going to let you guys go, man. No, but it's it's my turn. It's Thank, my you. Turn. Thank you. Uncle Sam, go ahead. Look, Aldo, you speak with such emotion and you're trying to evoke believability to what you're saying. In fact, yes, there are three similar factors that were built on the administration. That's clear. Let's look at Empirical evidence, that's all I want to show you. The Human Development Report of 2023, you can go read it, okay? Because of COVID, you saw a global decline in livelihood, the Human Development Index. But Liberia was only one of 10% of countries on the planet that saw an improvement in human development. They left expectancy- well, in the numbers? Let me talk, please. Please. No, 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 no. Let me talk. Let me talk. I said human development report. Let me talk. I said human development report. You don't even know how the thing is organized, French. Do you know? Do you know? Let me talk. So what? Let me speak. This is not psychology, but this is an economist who makes up numbers. Let me tell you. Let me tell you now. You are making up numbers. But Dr. Richardson, you interrupting his time. Dr. Richardson, should you come and tell me that this is Dr. Richardson. Dr. Richardson. Dr. Richardson. Dr. Richardson. Dr. Richardson, you interrupted no, Mr. Jackson. As long as Mr. Jackson does but you cannot not ask him questions when you speak. Now, now, guys, no, we're not doing this. Dr. Richardson, I beg you, that's okay. Dr. Dr. Richardson, I beg you, that's okay. Dr. Richardson, I beg you, that's okay. I beg you, that's okay. We have to speak with other interrupters. You don't tell me that this is not psychology. But, you but, but, but Dr. Richardson, he had the flow. Dr. Richardson, he had the flow. You cannot interrupt him. As long as he gets personal up. with me, I will interrupt him. The only reason why he answered you because you interrupted him. Yeah, because he keeps on asking simple to but tell me what the number is. Okay, when your time comes, you can ask him the question, please. Sam, okay. Uncle Sam, please. Okay, are you are you done, um, Dr. Richardson? You finished? Go no, ahead, I'm Uncle Sam. No, Uncle Sam, just Uncle Sam, just leave her. Please I go ahead. Because that, that my girl, uh, that, that that's my friend. I mean, she's intellectual. I like her. But yeah. I want her to give us the opportunity. Okay. Yeah, just go ahead, Uncle Sam. In twenty twenty three, in twenty twenty three, the Liberian Human Development Index rose. 2.487 in the Human Development Report of 2023. In 2023, has the highest death expectancy in the Manor River Union at age 64, higher than La Cote d'Ivoire, higher than Sierra Leone, and higher than Guinea. The age expectancy in Liberia is 64. You see, when you talk about the standard of it, I'm actually talking, man. Well, that's our interesting. You're not being fair on the show. Wait, man, that's not allowed in all of the But that's interesting. You will know, but let him lie, and you can come back and correct him. Let me fair on the show now. If he lie, let he lie. And then you can correct him later, but we shouldn't interrupt him, please. Uncle Sam, can you finish, please? No, no, it's, it's okay. It, it, let me take my time. Let you still got 10 seconds. Finish, Uncle no, no, Sam. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. No, go ahead. All right. We're going to bring in Asifai. Welcome to the show, Ava. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hello to all the good people. Can I out take Uncle Sam's time? His balance time? That's no, my no, camera. I'm not no, interrupting while no, I'm talking. No, please, please, guys. Respect let them yourself. Guys, Respect guys, you. guys, no, no. Ask if I don't go there, please. He's asking me a question. I will answer him. We will be given our two minutes and we will speak. If you want to ask questions, just take note, please. 
The but show I recognize his interruption. The show is very important tonight. We we'll beg everyone, please. Let's just listen to one moderator without interruption. Please. As if I can, you go ahead, please. Yeah, when the people interrupt, then you got to tell them they're interrupting too. Not answering the response. As if I, please go ahead, please. Yeah. So, you know, it's disappointing when people who say they're talking about quantum and they want to deal in quantitative issues. Our government has not even spent three months. What kind of analysis can you do of that government performance that you want to compare them with six years of information? Right now, I believe these folks just trying to campaign. It's useless. You got one of your dirty, useless, reckless, wasteful, and any other adjective anybody can find information over the last six years, where you basically deteriorated our country. If you read one comparison, let's take our time, dedicated time, and say we're doing an economic analysis of where the country was in 2018, on um, January 21st, to where it was on January 1st, 2024. If you guys are serious, then we can do that analysis and go across all indicators, all socioeconomic indicators, you can even tell me one report that this government did over the last six years. Any socioeconomic report that Liz just was supposed to do, that the EPA was supposed to do for the best interest of the Liberian people. You can show me. So it's just disappointing for you to come here and be talking something like echo chamber and be talking funny, funny thing. I mean, it's disappointing, very disappointing. The only thing that anybody can hold this government to right now is that 100 day deliverable. But what's the realism of a 100 day deliverable in any real scheme of things? How much does it move the development needle? Even if you achieve your 100 day deliverable, which are just unrealistic. Anybody who believed that all the politicians of the including Mr. Cummings, whatever they said for 100 days were actually going to be achieved at 100%, <laughs> I can say the Brooklyn Bridge for real. The point is you start on those processes. Where I'm disappointed with this government is that the promise updates. They have not provided those consistent updates over the over these uh, 100 days. So we don't clear where they are. So it's even difficult to debate anything about the 100-day plan or what kind of advancement they have made. But in the development process, three months, what well, the average of three months to 72 months, three other 72 that were for us to make any comparison. That percentage is poor. So let, let's focus on how we can push this government to be clear on what their policies are. What is the youth employment policy? What is the job creation policy? What is the real economic policy? Can it tell us, oh, you know, we just understanding and in the next six months, we'll create an economic development plan. Fine, then we got expectation. But right now, as far as I'm concerned, this government does not have an economic plan. And that's something they need to come to the table and say, you have suggested that, which is, you know, I welcome. Invite other stakeholders the private sector people, you know, and get the input. Go into these um, different communities like River says, what is the business activity in River says that can elevate that? Is it the law? Is it the money? So we got to look at these things holistically and really care about moving our country forward before we just argue for nothing. Thank you, Isaac. Let me bring in Paul Kennedy. Paul, well, welcome to the Spoon Talk. It's good to have you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. <clears throat> Good evening to everyone. <laughs> I come and ask my question and Glenda will get back. Can you hear me? <laughs> well, I'm glad to be on this show. Uh, look, Ava and the rest of the team, I, I think we, we are not doing well for Liberia. And what I mean is this. The Liberian people decided that the CDC government had not lived up to the expectation they raised. And because of that, 
they were going to kick them out and that exactly what the librarian people did so tonight i will not sit down here to retrospect on the force of the cdc government the government has fallen it's out of place our country is in dying need for progress uh, we have people in liberia currently tonight some of them were not able to make ends meet they they, they did not have the fine meal dinner uh and the new government took upon these challenges you know when the government comes to power that government has the moral and and the fiduciary commitments to improve the lives and well-being of the people and if i were leading any decisions in this government i will not be looking at the we as government performance to castigate them or to use it as a blame game I'll be looking at the weird failure to correct things, to move forward so that the librarian people can benefit. There are several challenges posing out, but there are also several opportunities Liberia has, uh, you know, to, to spring forward. I'm sitting in Ethiopia. I just come from paying five uh, United States dollars to go to a museum, to go to see, you know, the ancient uh, money and some of the things. Liberia has an opportunity to grow up its economy, to expand to new horizon, to bring uh, possibilities, to open uh, opportunities for Liberians to work, to be able to feed themselves. And that's a great tax. And we will not be able to solve do those uh, issues by pointing fingers, casting blame. I think the complaining time is gone. And the, um, His Excellency President Baka government now has a tax, like you rightly said, Ava, they should be sitting in a room to come out with a governing plan to say, listen, in the next six months to a year, these are the things that we are willing or we are looking at. It's challenging, it's difficult, but we're going to prioritize agriculture, making sure we are taking a tour of all 15 counties to see what agriculture implements those counties need to subsidize or complement what we are doing as a national government. We should be looking to see water and sanitation to say, listen, water and sanitation. Let's start with Monterado. What are some of the challenges we got in Monterado? Let's go out to the Leeward counties. How can government provide structure? And I'm talking about an organized structure that can help to put things in place for improvement of the livelihood of our people. When you look at the data, Ava, librarians are not doing very well. You got over 50% of the 5 million people living below two dollars a day two dollars a day when you calculate the librarian dollars that less than 300 librarian dollars that is not good and you know for us to to move forward we need to sit down as a country to have a country strategic plan on some of the priority items that we can attack or we can challenge to foster to go forward because liberia has a very minimum a small resource revenue i mean revenue base most of the things that are coming out and the money we are getting may not be able to solve them in this first year. So for anybody to be saying that to evaluate or to measure uh, uh, the unity party government performance in less than three months, I think you are not doing justice to the unity party. What I would do is I will be looking forward to seeing what plans unity party has that they can actually triple on to strengthen our country's economy to increase the livelihood of our people. So I want to thank you all you know, for sharing this platform with me. I'm here and I'll be listening to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank God you're back home safe. It's good to, it's good to see you. Thank you. Oh, you, you have not left? Okay. All right. Uh, we saw the, we saw the latest sleeper in the corner. We thought it was something. Glenny, welcome to the show. Glenny, how are you doing today? I am doing wonderful. It is good to be here. <laughs> On my way from, you want me to speak now? <laughs> yeah, Glennie, talk to us. Very interesting. Um, this when I was on my way coming, listening to the show, uh, I laughed my heart out. I seriously laughed at um what Uncle Sam was saying, what Isaido was saying. Um, intriguingly, to hear um Isaido mention some of the one of the accomplishments of we are as been in saying that every elect every district every education district is mobile 
I want to ask, they're mobile with what? No blackboard, no pencil, no paper, no copy book, no teachers, teachers not getting paid. When we're talking about mobile, can I be able to access another school from another district? So what is mobile? Is it the, the pimping that they're able to get on the payment from one district to the next? I want to understand what mobile is when we're making all this noise that we now have an education minister who the first thing she wants to do because she does not have the, the an accurate data on the number of schools we have in Liberia, that her first thing was to go and do tours to count the number of, of centers we have for education. And we're here making noise that we have did so well with education. I'm from the University of Liberia. And we're saying, oh, early students can go and register online. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That early students, that we are did so well with education, that the building is leaking. No cheers. And we're sitting here as alarm. And we're, you know, sometimes it depends on, no matter how we yell or what we say, does it make the story true? We're not, we will not dress up the lying devil. We won't. It is so simple. It is so easy to see facts. I am from the University of Liberia. I am a part of the University of Liberia Association. We've seen students sit in classroom on a weird era where it was raining on them. But we're sitting here and say every, every educational district is mobile. It's laughable. I laughed to hear that. And then another thing, we talk about market houses. When it when get money to buy the food to sell it, what a building will do for them. You beg far, far building and then get a market to go inside to sell the food. What it will do? Oh, we're looking for structural beauty. Oh, you build farm building so the area looking nice. The other, let's stop kidding ourselves. And I like what Paul said. This is not, we're not in election and I campaign. We're not counting what we are did. We're not counting that. To say, oh, we are did this. Oh, yes, he did this. Yes, he did great. No. The country needs to move on. We're not here to be looking at what, if George, we are, this is simple rhetoric. It's so, it's simple logic. If George, we are did well for Liberia, he will still be president today. The fact that George, we are, is not president. It means he didn't do carefully. Whatever, whatever he did was not recognizable enough for people to vote for him. Then I want to end on my uncle Sam. You know, all of us here, uh, we have a certain degree of education. Everyone have the era of expertise. No one is stopping the next person for continuously pronouncing what they are, what they've done, the level of education they have. It's okay. When you have your opportunity to speak about what you know and what you've done, do it. What I think is not right. Is to come and castigate other people's education that they have and make it seem like you are the only one, you are the law and gospel, you know everything. That's not right. I'm not an economist. If I was a sweeper, I am a sweeper. That is what I am. That's my area of expertise. Don't tell me how to be a sweeper because you are not a sweeper. If Dr. Francis is a psychologist, you're not a psychologist. Let her be able to expand on the fact that she's a psychologist, not you. I think we need to be Lenny, Lenny. I'm not done. I think we Your need to, to up, respect Lenny. one another and respect whatever we know in our expertise. And then I was also laughing. Your two minutes is up, Glenny. No, no, I want to Glenny, give me, Glenny, please give me 10 seconds. Please okay. give me 10 seconds. Now you ask, I will give you 10 right. seconds. Yes, please give me 10 seconds. I know you missed me yesterday, but I'm here today. Not at all. And I couldn't wait to get home. I heard all the things that you were talking about me. The people that were telling me, I said that you missed it. That's also fly. You talk, I don't even care. Go ahead, we well, got to move forward. You, Go ahead. When you hear Uncle Sam saying, expecting this government in three months to operate at the United States of America, that fly. He just <laughs> let the country and just yell. Come and alarm things. No matter how you alarm it or how you say it, won't make it true. What we expect for you from you as a veteran economist is to be balanced in your approach. Not to come and say, oh, it's three months of the government should lay our plan to be perfect. No, we're not stupid people here. We get sense. That's why we're here. And we expect you to know better and to say better. Thank you. Thank you. Now, so let's do this. Dr. Richardson, we are coming to you. Uh, now, is the video ready? Because, Uncle Sam, did you make a mistake when you said that 
the bill five or four cement factory? I said three. Three. You said no. No, you didn't I said say three. That. I said three. I said three. And no, I, corrected, sure? I corrected him. I said three. No, you didn't say three. I said you three. Know, even if I said five. No, I said no. I said no. I said no. I didn't say no five. I said three. I was saying, now he's saying, move on. No, I just I want you to. I'm not going to go down that slippery slope, that rabbit hole. If, if I said 10, I said 10, let them move forward. Let okay, so, 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 no, 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 no. I'm not going to be the, 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 the uh, I'm not going to be the butt of the show tonight. We're going to be there with empirical <laughs> evidence and facts. Okay, I said three. <laughs> Guys, listen. First of all, I want to say, Uncle Sam, on the clip, we'll be playing the clip. I put it in the chat room. You said, Joe, we have. Brought in four cement factories. I never said that. I said three. Okay. I, I didn't. I said there that. were one cement factory well, before. Now there are four. Now there are four. Let's the tip. Let's the tip. Okay. One cement factory. Right. Now there are four. Okay. There are four Uncle cement Sam. factories in Liberia. That Uncle is the record, established record. Okay. Uncle there Sam. were one before. Now there are four. So Joya brought in three. Okay. So okay. three came on Joya. That's what I said. So thank you for correcting that. You said that we have no, I didn't one. Say anything like that, but let's just well, go hold on now. No, hold on, Uncle Sam. Yes, Uncle Sam, hold on. on. Uh, Uncle Sam, we'll move forward, but hold on now. You said we have one central in town, and now you are saying Joe, we are brought in three, so we got four, correct? Four, yes. Okay. Because on the clip I about to play, you said Joe, we are brought in four cement factory. Well, I said three. Go in the chat room and listen to it. If, if it was a lapsus lingua, if it's still a little bit wrong, I'm to this corner. Okay. You don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to correct myself. Well, you, yeah, well, you said 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 you he made a mistake. We just gotta correct him because if we say we correct, four, yeah. we correct. Yeah, there one before. So that, right. so, so, right, so let's move on. That's the that's the so, fact. So that's fine, Uncle Sam. Let's move on. I just had to go back well, and, 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 and and and. Can I speak no, now? No, no, it's my turn. No. No, it's not your turn. It's Dr. Richardson. No, no, you were speaking when Dr. Richardson was interrupting you. So you're done. It's Dr. Richardson, Isidu, and Sam Jackson. Dr. Richardson, please. So for the record, you know, I can come here and analyze our group into an action almost on a nightly, nightly basis, but I don't do that. I know where to demonstrate my, my psychology degree. Okay? It is fruitless for me to come here and sit down and say, oh, for someone who brags about the degree, what does that say about them to go into your mind? But I don't do that. I don't care to do that. Okay, that's not going to be helpful to the Liberian people. But when you come here and tell lies about the Liberian people, about Liberia, I will correct you. All right. When you say that that Liberia had a growth in the human index rate, that's not true. Human development index, yes, that's true. So, Uncle Sam, please don't interrupt her now. We you. Interrupt no, no, no. So, we will not do it for ten. Uncle Sam, please. We pass. So, she going to speak. The United Nations, uh, they said, I do a rate of the low in the human development category. Okay? We ranked 178 out of 191 countries. Low in the human development category. I can read. When it came to education, the way that people measure education, the average years of school in Liberia is 5.1 year. This is what we need to be focusing on. Not all of these statistics that you bring to us. All right? And we need to also be questioning who are giving these people these numbers, especially when we have someone like Uncle Shem, who was, Uncle Shem who was consulting for $25,000. How are these numbers going into the World Bank and the UNDP? They said many, the, many virtual numbers. the average years of school in Liberia is 10 years. So those are the numbers. How did George Weir government or how is Waka government addressing these numbers that I'm telling you? As a matter of fact, life de expectancy declined, Uncle Sam, declined from 64 to 60 years old in 2020. This came from UNDP. You talk about the three companies, yes, it is a fact, right? But you fail to 
information how many uh, uh, fellows were exchanged for those three companies to be developed. And there's a newspaper article about that. Those three companies, Star Cement, Toronto Cement Corporation, and Capital Link. How many librarians class share in those companies? Those are the things that we want to talk about tonight. The librarianization of Liberia. When you start talking about them, then I will, I will actually pay attention to what you have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Richardson. So now, again, we'll maintain some order. Uh, we'll come to Uncle Sam. We'll go to Acido. Uh, Uncle Sam, I want to ask you this. Please incorporate it with your two minutes when you are speaking, please. Let me flag this. That will be our conversation coming up. You wrote this today, Uncle Sam. Removing motorcyclists from street. Brilliant idea. But what? the process that ensure minimum hardship to the herd of unemployment. Unemployable young men and a few women, that's where good judgment comes into play. I will put up your next, this is not from you, but this is somebody else, and I want you to respond, Lovette Sanduro. Removing the mo motorcyclists from the main street might be good, but what are the available options? Government is providing for them to feed themselves. Uncle Sam, please incorporate because so, I want us to now move okay, so, to the project so I was talking about. question later, but let me just debunk. Let me just debunk some, I don't know why I call it self. You, you, you go into data, data time series, you go into 20, I talk about 2023. You went to 2020, oh, that way you went to, you went to 2020, I said 2023, 0.487. Let me just, just be hush up and I beg you, I'm going to my mama, I take all the beg you. Oh, don't even come to tell me hush up. No, because but baby, my dear, my mama, baby, I am not your daughter, I am not your little wife that you sleep with, but you tell me hush up. Okay, no problem. Okay, but then, okay, just please, sure please I listen to me. I hold your phone, mama. Yourself professionally. Okay, if please, please listen hush to up, me, then. I beg you. No, I am not going to listen to what you say if you use hush up on me. He yeah, says sorry. sorry. No, sorry. 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 He says sorry. That was slip of tongue. He says sorry. sorry. That, that the rich is saying he says sorry. Don't mind those things together that can push up fire. Sorry. That the rich is saying he says he says sorry. We apologize. Listen to me. We apologize. Let me just give you the knowledge. That I want you to you have. Give me no knowledge. Come and lie to the library people because I am. Let me finish. Your 2023 document. You went to 2020. About. You went to 2020. Okay, when you were here, did you did you caveat? Did you caveat? Did you? Did I it said, it you did, because you're not listening. You're not. You're so not. Please allow him to move on. Listen to what I said. All right. All right. I said. So that the richest said. I'm just saying. 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 I'm just Dr. Richardson, no, Dr. No, Richardson. No, 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 no but Dr. Richardson, wait now. Wait, wait, I'm asking you. Uncle Sam, can I come and use these words on us, such as calling, telling me to hush up, or telling me that I have a closed mind? I don't ever speak to him like that. And I deserve the respect that I give him. You don't come on this show to tell anybody that they have their closed mind. Is your mind open, by the way? All right, Dr. Richardson, we hear you. Hello, Uncle Sam. Please speak. Do not address any one of us on set. Just speak, please. Oh, okay. Thank you. I didn't, like, you won't change the rule. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. very clear. I was very clear. I wasn't speaking French. I wasn't speaking Basa. I was speaking English. I said in 2023. Liberia's Human Development Index went to 0.487. Data time series, 20 years, I mean, in 2020, that was four years ago. I'm talking about 2023, the last year of the WE administration. That's what I said. Let's just be very clear on the narrative that's been created by our colleagues in the Unity Party. They said, we are destroying the country. They said, we are destroying the country. So as an economist now, I said, let's look at the four sectors. The four economic sectors of the economy, the real sector, GDP growth was up 2022, 2023. Let's look at fiscal. That was fiscal balance, okay? Let's look at monetary in terms of the value of the dollar. It was- Why like you call fiscal, fiscal balance? Why you call fiscal balance? 
Okay, great. You want to be a three? Not you mean Philip or yeah? The last thing is you're doing. Let's stop. Everybody stop. I don't want to just move people. No, y'all don't do this. No, 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 no. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put everybody in the bag, let Uncle Sam speak. Then we'll bring you guys on. You cannot interrupt him. It's not right. I beg everybody, please. Uncle Sam need to have his time to speak. The human development report of 2023 was on data from 2022. Okay, I'm an economist. I know the difference. And I said to you, you can go check it out. The I'm human out. development okay. index is at 0.487. I stand by that. I also said, and I ask you all, let's look at a critical analysis. It was 0.48. And 23, now you ready yet. Yeah. Uncle Sam, go ahead. Uncle Sam, go ahead. You have to flow. Go ahead. Talk to us. No, but it's okay. I mean, I mean, listen, I said to you, let's look at the four economic sectors. You look at you, you look at the four economic sectors, the real you said, George, we are destroyed the economy, destroy the country. And then you had GDP growth of at least two percent in 2022 and 2023. Look at fiscal balance in terms of the relationship between expenditure and, 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 and revenue. Okay, that's the fiscal balance. Then if you look at the monetary sector, the value of the Liberian dollar held steady, okay, with single digit inflation. Then if you go to the external sector, okay, the trade deficit moderated, okay? So those are the four sectors, if those are the four things you look in in economics to determine whether the economy is destroyed. And I told you that if you look at electronic payments in terms of the circular flow, two over $2 billion of electronic payments, mobile money, Visa, MasterCard, okay? And if you look at banking assets, banking assets have gone over $1 billion on a George VR. And if you look at liquidity within the banking system, that is more than adequate liquidity within the banking system. Those are the points I was making, okay? I said the Human Development Report, and I will close on that, of 2023, Liberia's Human Development uh, Index rose to 0.487. That's what I said. That's what I said. Thank you, Sam. So thank you very much. We heard you. Uh, we're going to ask it to. Ask it to, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, quickly, someone said the education minister traveled across the country. She did because she left Liberia 30 years ago. She just returned. Plenty, say, I'm not someone. Plenty, I'm not someone. I but don't. Plenty, Plenty you will not respond. You will have your time to I respond to someone? him. Plenty, you will have your time to respond to him. Don't talk about the show. Plenty, you will have your time to respond to him, please. As I proceed. So, oh, I will the come out with the the education minister left the country some 30 years ago and she just returned, so she had to go around to understand how Liberia looks like. That's the reason why she went around. And you know, it was very troubling to me. Very troubling. I listed everything George Weah did. George Weah damaged the country, he damaged the country. Nobody can come and tell me the exact things he did. I always like us to talk about Liberia today. But people on here think the best thing we can have for Liberia is to always talk about Liberia yesterday. George Weatherton. So let's talk about it. You know, you cannot damage a house that is not built. You cannot damage a car that is not bought. You cannot damage a fool that is not there to eat. I expected people to have said, listen, this road was built from here, here. George Weatherton came. He, 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 just, he, just, he just took the road from there. He damaged it. I expect you to tell me, you know what? This this market bidding was around GSA Road. John Weakim, he tried to pin the market bidding. He just put funny pin there, the whole market bidding spot. I would expect someone to say, you know what? Here you have, have, have all the good things there. John Weakim and John took all the good things from there. But you can't hear nothing. No, no, man. You know what? They damage your cost to the country. It will take up 500 years to complete the damage. But you can't tell what, what the damage is. But I want to specifically respond to my junior brother, Albert Tobak. You asked the question, how can we compare this government in three months? And you surely like you folks from the rest who claim to know all of the books, you ask what com comparison can we do? How can we analyze it? I can tell you, we can employ a comparative analysis on time consumed as per government. When George Rack came in power, he had 100 days too. 
So we can take George Weah 100 days and compare it with Joseph Baga 100 days. Don't compare 101 days. 100 days to 100 days. Let's compare it. In George Weah's first 100 days, he started a building on the 14 military hospital. You can come and tell me what Joseph Baga is doing in 100 days. In George Weah's 100 days, he started the construction of the door community roads. You can come and tell me what George, what Joseph Baga is doing in 100 days. In George Weah's 100 days, he started the WAS fee payment. You can come and tell me what Joseph Baga is doing in 100 days. In George Weah's 100 days, he reduced salaries of government employees from fat salary to small salary. You can come and tell me what President, President Baga is doing in 100 days. In George Weah's 100 days, he reduced his salary by 25%. You can come and tell me what President Baga is doing in 100 days. In George Weah's 100 days, he went to the CLSG people and started a conversation that brought CLSG to make it a reality today. Don't tell me they think George Weah did. He, he says yes. Just tell me what Joseph Baca did in 100 days compared to what President Weah did in 100 days. Yes, I know you people know all of the book, but this is something you can compare. Because we have 100 days too. You have 100 days. Let's compare the 100 days. So you see, like I always said, unless we have people who are ready to discuss issue on the basis of merit, we will just be here. People can't carry their job. We have damaged the country. They are not damaged. It will cost 200 years to pay. They can't even list what exact damage it is. Was there a certain road that was somewhere John we are kind of tow from there and he faced? Was there a certain park that was there and kind of break down? Was there a certain money somewhere that he tow from there and there? So you can only see how these people came with big muffs, propagandas, and lies. And you know the unfortunate thing? Lies, propaganda, and big muff cannot lead a country. This is why today you are getting that even seven servants get paid up to the 19th of the month after all of the big muff people said. And you know what? It's only a matter of time for the citizens of the country to rise up. Very few days ago, they were buying $1 scratch card for $180, $190. Today, they are buying it $220. The only thing you want to talk about is what George Weah didn't do. He damaged the country. He damaged the country. George Weah damaged it. It will take 200 years to face. You can't even tell us what damage exactly did he. You can't damage what is not there. You damage something that is there. You, I can tell you, I obey my house two years. Then you say, hey, you damage. So we have to be, and let's bring people who are ready to discuss yeah. with us basis of the merits not pro uh, that, 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 yeah go ahead that yeah, what I, I, I want, I, I want she finish i have i have a meeting to attend to i'm actually presenting at a conference on like uh you know some people on the show yeah, uh, so i have to go and meet with my my presenters and prepare but i wanted Thank to you. say something you know the hallmark of an educated person not somebody who just sit home or later on get a degree in life is to consider things contextually and 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 factor out all the extra renewable and all the extra renewable variables, all the other variables. Okay, when Mr. When when someone come on the show and just say, "Oh, Liberia had a slight improvement in human development index," the Liberia 2021 human development index was zero zero point four eight one compared to zero four eight zero in 2020. They forget to tell us that when you factor in other variables like education, inequality, Liberia Human Development Index dropped and it says right here in the statistics. They don't tell us all of that. They only want to pick numbers, okay? The hallmark, again, of an educated person is to look at things contextually and to look at things in, in consideration of all of the variables. So on that note, guys, I'm sorry that I have to go. Thank you so much for a beautiful show. Thank you, Dr. Richardson. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Dr. Richardson. Thank you. I need 10 seconds. We'll get to you, sis Glenn. Well, don't tell me we will get to you. I will tell you that we'll get to you, please. Just I need my 10 seconds. Let me go ahead. Come here, Aguila. You won't be eating. Sis Glenn, I beg you. 10 seconds. Sis Glenn, you like control the show. Let me say this before you come in for Dika. And after you, Glenn, will come in. It is important for us to note that everything, everyone will say, I like how Paul Kennedy just put it. We move, we agree, we pass it now. Let's talk about now. 
Let's talk about now. I think as a do, and Uncle Sam, their argument is talk about now, but the comparison, like I said, do just listed. Joe Manor, we are 100 days. I expect the asset do to also include in that 100 days. Joe Manor, we have started building is for the eight condominiums. Praise the Lord. I expect the asset do in that 100 day to also name and tell the library people that in that 100 day, Joe Manor, we are breaking his non street resident down to transform it. I expect the asset do, my dear friend and brother. That in that hundred days, George Manor, we were negotiating to have a private jet, and he lied to the Labyrinth people that he was from his friend from Africa's or Burkina, wheresoever he got it from. I, I, I expected, amen, seriously speaking, in that hundred days, for Isidro to be so unique and tell the mm -hmm. Labyrinth people about the true George Manor we are. So let's go to you President Barker. No, 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 no. Don't you interrupt me. me. No, 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 the 60 missing billion dollars. And what was left in the account that ye summoned twelve, then you. Those were some of the Amen. 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 That, that, and let's talk about why the thank comparison. You, thank you. Thank you. The comparison of Joseph Human Buaka, though it's not 100 days yet, to Josh Manor, we are 100 days. I mean, just a few. When they came into power, the Labyrinth people money that they took to enrich themselves. Amen. We stupid you. Oh, about it, stupid you. We will check, make you guys. Even if this government made a mistake, we will correct them, like we are doing. But don't name all the other stuff in the hundred days and forget. But let's talk about the fourteen military hospital. On whose administration the fourteen military hospital was designed. John, we just woke up one morning and said, I'm going to build 14 military hospital. No, he didn't. It was a blueprint, I said, though. You know that. You know the hell yeah. The renegotiation of East International, should we talk about it? Saying we include 100 days? But I will rest for now. Yeah, but start out here. Yeah, I'll pass for you. I will rest for now because I expect. <laughs> <laughs> you laughing again? I brought the man to interrupt me. Hey, Manny, all the UP people, they did not want us to You didn't want us to talk. us to talk. You didn't want 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 us to talk. The people that don't want me to talk. These guys that will talk all the time about GDP, about global health, about UN. Let me say something to you. I want to go back to the war full program. Something like Paul K. Kennedy, the man that was beaten by Amarcone, mercifully, that he had to run away from Buffalo. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say something on this issue, Paul. World food program. Senator said they would distribute the rest. They would distribute the rest. Call me time. But when they report, hey amen, may they so rest in peace. When they were about to bring the report of the distribution and the COVID money, where is Bati Yenswa today? When those guys and the auditor came together to give the actual report, where is Abu Peter and Gifty Lama? You want us to talk? We can talk. Because at the end of the day, 
you murder them to close their mouth. Report of the airport money that was generated. Where are those auditors today? I mean, let's have our good show, man. If you take us back, we'll go back. Right now, I said, wait, I said, wait, show. Yeah, that Fadiga, Fadiga, go ahead. I said, Fatuba, Fork, wait, 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 Fadiga, Glendy, Aze, and Paul Kennedy. Go ahead, Fadiga. Tell us the 100 days of President President Baka. 100 days for President Baka. behaving like so loser. Yeah, that's true. Tell us about President Baka. 100 days. The 100 days. We will tell you what we're doing in 100 days and beyond 100 days. Uh, we're not promising to build Liberia and turn it into Miami. We're not spraying fallacies. We're not delving in rumors and fake news. Uh, that is the reason you guys are not in power. Stanton, I'm not going to waste my time endorsing uh, acid dope. He can talk all he wants. That will happen when you are. Every day you will your time. I don't expect you to be interrupting everybody, though. No, like, I gave you my two minutes. No, I no, 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 but no, that's okay now. That's okay. Let Fadiga talk. I wanted to say, uh, uh, the president has delivered a couple of his uh, uh, campaign promise in less than 100 days. He he did one of, he, uh, uh, he's about to sign one of our, our landmark uh, uh, resolution, uh, something that was kicked down by several presidents, even the, the men that champion peace, that claimed to be peace ambassador. He couldn't do it. He played politics with the Liberian people, in, uh, President Boyka, in less than uh, 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 100 days. Uh, we are about to see, for the first time, uh, people being held accountable for crimes uh, committed during our civil war. That is, if, if he doesn't do anything except for the rest of, of, of the six years, Liberian people can rest assured that justice will be served. No other president, even Shalif, when we had United Nations and all the guys in the country when we could do that, they didn't do it. You kick your cane down to George Weah, who promised to do it, he didn't do it. He played politics. President Weka came, and in less than uh, 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 90 days, he was able to deliver on that promise. Uh, so many good things happening in this government. He went to Aracos. He made a couple of trips. He's not using our money lavishly. Flying private jet to go see Jackie Apia and something. So I won't. So that was, it's not even healthy for us to be going back uh, uh, and discussing spilled milk. Stand up. Thank you. Thank you. If if no, no let me let me finish my two minutes. I told you done. I told you done. Go ahead and finish up. Why you won't call me all quick? quick. You won't call me up with me. Fadiga, go ahead. So, Stanton, uh, 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 I don't know what's the next topic, but if we don't have anything... We are moving to the next topic, which will be the uh, uh, protest today. We are not in the same league. Uh, uh, you cannot put uh, President Weah and, 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 and President Boyka in the same league. I agree, um, 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's we true. have returned. We have returned the country to responsible government. You have said today. No, 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 guys, 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 guys. I said, Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam. We can't uh, do this, please. We have we have reintroduced responsible governance. If you look at the caliber of people in in government, that why it's longer time. Because when you want a dream team, you take time to build a dream team. You do not just rush and go and find all the Chicago Moans and and and, and Moyan chatting people. And give them power, and then and then bloat our payroll with with partisans and, and travel laws and regional laws the country. That is not what we are doing. If you look at this government, it's a rainbow government, a reflection of the entire Liberian population. And I think the president do a good job at that. So I look forward for us to discuss the next thing, and not uh, uh, so losers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Glendy. So I wrote some stuff down when I want to talk about, um, Stanton already mentioned some of the things I wanted to talk about in We Us 100 Days. Uh, we can talk about the stimulus package. We can talk about the money for COVID. We can also talk about the the the, the Samia tour and what they did with the 16 billion. We can talk about all those. Those are accomplishments in 100 days. 
those are things we want to talk about. But I want to also mention here, um, I, I don't know the education minister personally, but to say here that she hasn't been to the country for 30 days, 30 years, and so she's becoming familiar, that's not true because she was in Liberia a couple of times doing We Are Administration. So that is not true. And we were informed by Miguel on here as the, educa the chair of education in the Senate that the, the reason why she's doing a country tour was to know what we have and the different needs for the educational system in Liberia. So that's not true. She's not going around a tour because she wants to become familiar with Liberia. With Liberia. That's not true. Now, my, the other thing is, we see that Josh, we all took over from Ellen Johnson's leave and he gave her 80%. He graded her, meaning that she did a great job. She left money. The money that she left, instead of he using it, to better Liberia, he took that money for himself and better himself and promoted himself. That's what he did. What he was not able to do was to even leave at least 10% of what, of what Ellen left for Boyka to take over. So when we want to come and do check and balances, yeah, we will check everybody, we'll balance everybody. But when you want to come and make a list, include all the pieces, the private jet, they work on a car, they work on a shoe, all the things they put it inside a the different buildings. Don't just come and name some. Because the money you we are used was not his own money, it was the government of Liberia's money that he used. So let's be fair and balanced and talk about everything. We either going to compare and contrast or we're going to move forward. But just as people can compare and contrast, we also we are a part of the Liberian history. We will talk the same story that they will talk. You bring it, we'll talk it. Doesn't have to be a UP person. It just has to be a librarian who knows the issues of a librarian to talk about it. That's what I wanted to say. And the you, last of the 14 million hours, the groundbreaking ceremony was done by Ellen Johnson Salif with President Weah's attendance. It was not President Weah who did the brand groundbreaking ceremony for the 14 military hospital. He subsequently named that, but it was not a Weah project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Paul Kennedy. So you don't join as if I not to unmute. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I, I was trying to, it's cold here. So I'm trying to, uh, you know, bother with the cold at the same time, contribute uh, positively to the show. Is so, it your voice sound a truck dollar voice? Yeah. I'm glad that at least it's not dead. I can talk for people to hear. Uh, countries are measured, the progress of government are measured across several spans of different sectors. The economic growth and development, the health and well being, education, social welfare and equity, environmental sustainability, governance and institutions infrastructure and urban development, innovation and technology. I mean, I'm naming a whole span of where government can be evaluated. You need the data from all of these sectors. I just name eight. There could be maybe 10. The economists on here can tell me what the actual numbers are or the, 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 the values are. Gross domestic products is the wholesome of all of the productions that are made by Liberians, whether in Liberia or whether outside of Liberia, gross national uh, products are the ones that are made in country that are so out to bring, bring income into the country. Then we're looking at, you know, health and well-being, life expectancy, infant mortality rate, maternal mortality rate. Why am I calling these things? These are indicators that multinational organizations around the world including the Millennium Challenge, the US government, uh, UNICEF, all of the institutions that are, uh, you know, integrated institutions, they use the data from these various sector areas to be able to know whether a country is doing well or country is not doing well. Over the year, Liberia has not been doing well in most of these things. We are up and down. We can go up, we can come down. But the poor man sitting now in Sapema will not even know much of what I've just read. This poor man is willing to see how he can get money to go to the market to buy a fish. It is government's responsibility now to make sure that the persons in areas 
that are inaccessible to wealth or they are they are not really wealthy, they can be able to at least make their ends meet to, to live. This government, as I said previously, has a challenge to meet some of these indicators. They should be sitting down and looking to see how can we increase increase our gross domestic products so that we can extend the in, employment or unemployment, uh, you know, reduce the unemployment rate. Because if you subsidize government, I mean, uh, 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 companies or businesses, Liberian-owned businesses in Liberia, most of those businesses will employ Liberians, and some of the the wage burden on government will be shifted to these individual companies that are established and coming to provide jobs for our people. That should be government priority. Government should look at the school system to see what quality of education we are producing. Because I can you know, guarantee you, most of the countries that are doing very well are doing well because they have improved human resource capacity. Taiwan, for instance, our interpay the other day, Taiwan has 27.1 million people. Taiwan is less than the size of Liberia. I think it's like Bon and Lofa County put together. Taiwan has no natural resource besides their human resources that they have developed. The watch on your hand, the cell phone in your hand, everything has made in Taiwan on it. These people are doing very well because they put a lot of money into education. Their literacy rate, literacy rate is over 98%. So they are using their human capital to be able to work, to bring resources from out of the country so that their people can benefit and do well. Librarians, we need to focus. We need to be able to work together as a team. I think the team here, instead of us fighting, we should be sitting down to understand what are some of those things we could do to help this government progress. As, as you know, as CEO knows that. I'm currently working on a concept that will help government. Once that concept is mature, I'll be looking for champions in government to make sure it's rolled out. It's not my government or not my government. Liberia is for everyone. The most any librarians can do is to make sure that the country is doing well so that all of us can reap the benefit of the well-being of the country. Because the country is not doing well, all of us suffer. You know, so these are the kind of things that we on this, uh, uh, that some of us on this platform should be trying to channel to push well to do so that our brothers who don't have the opportunity, brothers and sisters who don't have the opportunity to be, you know, where we are, so we can help to lift them. These are the kind of things that we should be doing. Not sitting and looking at retro, you know, retrogress or retro past or whatever the, the English is, if I can correct me, of previous governments. You know, if I'm reading Liberian government from the best government I will be talking about will be uh, uh, Torba. Because during Torba time, our GDP was to that of Japan from 1974 all the way to 1978. But we can't continue to dive in the past. We only look at the past for our historicity to inform our presence. We can do those things Torba did to put us on the power of the eco international economic span like our you know, neighboring country or international countries. So let's look, let's draw a new law. Let's sit down and look at new trend. How can we create jobs in Liberia? What are some of those things we can do to help government succeed? I'm working on the water and sanitation and, 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 and city management plan. I'll make the proposal, I'll su submit that to the city mayor. City management is not only about taking broom to go sweep. The city mayor should be looking at how is he creating jobs for people who are residing in a city? What investment opportunity is he attracting there? What are some of those people, the multinational companies that he's talking to? What are the health sector? All of the uh, ambulances, the, the fire stations we're talking about in Monrovia, the city mayor is supposed to be going out of the country to go to advocate for some of those things to come. We know that Liberia don't have money much. We can do those things. Gentlemen, let's start reducing our country to nothing. Let's make sure we can work to support where our country goes. And I think everybody on this platform can do that because the Liberian people are listening to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul Kennedy. Uh, and I hope Asa can come back. Because in Tabata, he have opened about 100 days. Or oh, we really got to help Asa do tonight because I think he's off. But let me bring in Asifa. Asifa, I will welcome Colonel E. Remy Gray to the show. You have your two minutes, Isaac. Wow. Yeah, when um when Sam talking about GDP increasing, 
Yes, GDP yeah. increasing, but why? Why is GDP increasing? I said it increase. Why is but it Uncle Sam? Uncle Sam. He was, he may, Uncle Sam. He may call yeah, your name, speak. but let him speak. Yeah, let him speak. Go ahead. I agree I with you. Your... GDP increase, but why did GDP increase? Because mining increase. What is the impact of mining on our people? All these people extracting our gold and our iron ore, yeah, and the communities they're in. I went to Bee Mountain in Cape Town. It's like the people might as well be living in, in Sodom way in the mud. That's how it is. So when we talk about GDP expanding, let's talk about how it impacts the people. When we talk about, you know, fiscal balance, because government say, oh, revenue equals uh, uh, um, expenditure. What is government expenditure on? A few people, they're benefiting. How does that impact the life of the people? So you can't say Liberia is any better because GDP increases. You know better about development without growth for the people. Yeah, you can have um, uh, um, you can have some economic growth, internal GDP, but you don't have economic development. That's what we're struggling for. You're talking about like um, what they call the hospital need a 14 military. 14 military even got electricity today. They stay operating on fuel. Thirty six thousand dollars a month. For 14 military for a few, thirty-six thousand dollars a month. And we're talking about hospitals. Hospitals then got no drugs, even when they designated drugs for them, like the American ambassador Makate said. When they designated drugs for the hospital, they don't get to them. They eat the money, they designate in the budget. I did a whole report. They designated put the money 100,000, 60,000, 75,000. Look at the actual money they actually gave to those hospitals. Close to nothing. You talk about infrastructure, rather few role. What was the original estimate? 95 million. When they took it to 116, and then they front loaded the payments, giving it to, to people. What is the Labrin benefit from the RIA road? How many of those Labrin companies are involved with that uh, 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 road construction? What is the benefit? So when we talk about the economy, the GDP growing, no, it's not directly affecting our people. It's simply because Every output in the economy is counted. And those outputs that are leaving, that fly on a year, they don't affect our people. So there are just so many different factors that are working. But we look at our own institutions that have been destroyed. Look at LISGIS that's supposed to control all the nation's data, that was supposed to do the census. You, Sam, tell me one socioeconomic report that has come out of LISGIS in the last um, several years that you can say is credible. Um, it can be peer reviewed by international uh, uh, um, people. Household and income come and expenditure survey. Labrador demographic and health survey. <laughs> Still, <laughs> I enjoy you. You will get me crying on that thing. I can go for I, I, I need you to right. say right. you. Right. Right. I, I, I said, right. 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 let's move ahead. Let me, thank you, Abba. Uh, Abba, you let me no, no, I'm, I'm not talking about the West Coast, the fact that they, they triumphing on one subject now instead of all the subjects. When the power what is only that is five percent past the one subject, they seem same man when he said every child was educated when he was shilling for the Ellen Selif government, and we blasted him on coalition concern appearance. So, Sam, you cannot be too look, this, this, this we are coming is past. Let's leave them. They failed. They've absolutely failed. Desperately failed. Let's find out how we can encourage this government to be successful. Or in the next year, year and a half, we start to criticize them for the things they're not doing. But the thing you're doing right now to try to create chaos in this country or honor my people or get people to demonstrate in three months, what can happen? Look, you got to be serious, man. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, your last line, let's be serious, is important. As we go back, to Isaac Doe, Sever Jackson, we're gonna bring in Connor Gray thereafter. But let me make this point. Let me make this point, please. Let's just agree. When Joe came into power, it wasn't all bread and butter. When Joe came into power, we understand that it was rough, it was tough. Okay? Did he make it better? That's the question we are asking. The only reason why some of us stay being so quiet, the best we can, is because we are not at 100 days yet. But we should check sedition. 
When they come on the show like Spoon to talk, we should remind them. George Manner, we have said the economy at the time when he took over was broken. Sam Jackson said it was true. George Manner, we have said the government at the time was broke. Sam Jackson said it was true. The currency was a free fall. Sam Jackson said it was true. Inflation was rising. Sam Jackson said it was true. Unemployment was at an unprecedented high. We can go through it. Sam Jackson said it was true. Foreign reserve at the time was an all time low. Sam Jackson said it was true. Did he leave them better? Yes, he did. Did he leave that? No, no, I tried. I don't yeah, but it's a rhetorical question. I'm asking you. Yeah, but he's not asking you. He's not asking you. He he asking you. Name. No, he's not asking you. You, there is you, woman. I beg you, man. You let me, let me feel you. Let me on track. Don't take me on track. You know, you you know, say, I think, I think they do it intentionally. They do. Yeah. And everything they say is true. John Mayer, where are you right? John Mayer, where I say I'm going to go and take 25 percent of my salary and give it back to the people. They were clapping. Like Uncle Sam stood behind Sam and were clapping because. He was about to execute 13 innocent Liberians. Right. Okay. Okay. Some guys who said we're celebrating. I don't want to get in the gun. Hey, man. Hey, bye. Well, I, I, I get in the gun. Can hear you. I get in the gun. So, John, we have said, listen, 34,000 secondary school students will waive the YFE. They were clapping. Don't you know today the Liberian government is in debt? They are debted to the wire. Don't you know we owe them? Don't you know it was a scam and blah? It was promising made to those groups and said, let the student take the fee, just write it out. But who's going to pay for it today? President Joe said, you must work at government. He must pay. All the things George Manner we have said, what is the inflation rate? What is the unemployment rate in the country? How did he leave it? We can ask an open question. Our foreign policy, what happened? He said it was on an all time low, but guess what? All of our passports, they sold them. That's, that's right. All of our foreign relations, his foreign minister, Kamaya Pune, came to the United States. Everything that ever happened, our buildings and the embassy, they kick, out, they kick the Liberian people out. Go in Belgium. They kick them out because of non-payment. Our only land, the land we had in Brussels, Joe, we had to the poor to sell the land. And 728 the money. Look at the embassy in Washington, D.C. How did you leave it, Mr. President? How did your government leave it? You want us to go back and open Pandora bags? Guys, let's talk about the way forward for a better Liberia. We know you mess it up. You know you support it. Help us to fix it. Help us to fix it. And the best help you can give us is to just be quiet. That's the best thing you can do. The best thing you can do as a do is to come on the spoon talk and just be quiet and let's be speaking on a positive level. That given the chance, President Baca will do better. But you got no more right to take us in the past. The past is a bad testimony for you. The past is the worst you can ever talk about in the six years of President George Manawea, of which you as a do, you are deputy minister, that what stadium was a mess. We couldn't even play on our own stadium. <laughs> That's true. That yeah. you as a do, you as a do, the great TV program that supposed to celebrate the youth, you're in the money. The waterway, the people got to protest, protest, protest because you're just playing the money. You ask the dog. This is, I do not want to come on Spoon Talk and you tell me Tabata of the past. I want to hold this government for a better tomorrow. And that's why the people elected President Joseph Yeman Bwaka, given a chance, without you engineering young men and women, to hit the street and protest and shut down the country economy, Liberia will get better. 
man, let's move on, man. I got my right. dry rest for fried fish in for me. Allow me to eat it in peace. Right. Don't come right. here and take me to the past. Whenever right. you talk about this past, no, I got to bring you more, Ali. No, That's when they uh, come here, no, 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 no. You are coming, I got to bring you more, Ali. No, no. I will bring you more, no, no. Ali, then you are coming. Go ahead. You keep yeah, speaking of song. You have to go, Ali, you will yeah, come. Yeah, Ali, you will come. Yeah, I promise you, you will come. Go, oh, Ali, go yeah, ahead. Ali, wait. No, Ali can't be coming here. Oh, there ain't nobody. What else? There ain't nobody. No, Ali, I know you can't be drinking. There's no rep on the show. You keep bringing more, Ali. The first thing is they were asking disturbing. More talk, yeah, more talk. We're listening to you. We're listening to you. More talk. Are you be sure now because we yeah. need to be on the show. You can't be on the show that you call him Mo Ali. You are a government official now. You should be. Oh, yeah. Back up. They need back up. You are a government official. You are here. 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 You are a Let's start off with the CLSG. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 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 You know what I'm it was the early Johnson Salif government that brought it in and almost completed it. What President Weir did with the CLSG, he left out in a debt of 13 million. Joe Baca had to go to Ivory Coast recently and renegotiate with the Ivorians to clear all the 13 million that are there and also negotiate with them to increase the, 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 the current output to Liberia by 25 megawatts. That is in the first 100 days. This guy talked about the military hospital, the fourth military hospital was done within 100 days. Even the child born today will never believe that. The first the 100 day, I mean the hospital, the military hospital was commissioned right around the time they had the, the, the COVID-19 outbreak. Right. And that's where in 20 years, January 2020, when they started carrying people there. So that is another blatant lie. He talked about people paying two hundred dollars for for minutes when you keep people were paying one dollar for unlimited calls. Three days, what three days. You, you call it off. Yeah, the three days unlimited call. You call it off. You give people forty five minutes. Today we have carried it by in less than hundred days. 78 minutes. You talked about rules, President Walker. That cars will not get stuck in the first 100 days. We can say whatever we want to about the contracts. We are happy that the Senate is investigating it, but now you have equipment all over on those bar rules. They are working and they will ensure that before the 100 day ends, you will not have car being stuck anywhere. So when you talking about 100 days, you say, oh, the dual community rule was done in the first 100 days. That is not true again. It took more than a year. As if we are in Liberia, we never went anywhere. You talk about some of the things that President we are. You say we are not showing sure anything that President we are has destroyed. There are so many things. And I will start with one. The very you, uh, no, no, you talk about. Let me get two minutes. After two minutes, I'm going to get two, two minutes. After two minutes, I'm going to get two minutes. Let me get two minutes. Let me get two minutes. Let me get two minutes. There's a lot of layers. But you let me know. 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 Let as a way, I beg you guys, Mo Ali will not call again today. But every show, when you're live, we bring Mo Ali to Korea. Go ahead, I say, oh, <laughs> look, look at the person you are talking about correctly. Mo Ali now becomes the keeper of truth in Liberia. The first thing the brother is speaking, 
He is only showing the very incompetence we are seeing around the place. I'm sure we're speaking English, not Basso. He doesn't yet French. I wasn't speaking French. We said, President, we have started this. I'm sure a person from the rescue camp who isn't there who know that the world staff does not make completed. Maybe the only person who don't have anything to show for 100 days are President Barker. And they better come here seeking all out of song. Let me tell you, I've even in my city government, there was one thing I've always told the people, you cannot play politics with the economy. I've always told Minister Twa this. Ask you, I tell you. Every time I want to Minister Twa, I'll tell you. We have to do the things that we show. If Emma Twa come and say they reduce the gas price from 790 to 845, you cannot play part of the economy. If I mean Moda comes and say they reduce rest press, it goes up from $60 to $7.50, you cannot bring your last here. Moadi now becomes the holder of truth. Now, when Moadi can say, oh, a LEC year, the LEC year for Moadi of all people. Let's be serious here. Stand up. You know when someone spoon talk in the market? Spoon talk, can spoon, can go in the market and talk to the people. Those are the people that matter. You want to talk about death? Let me just go to my own institution where I'm from, which even school. Somebody was talking about, oh, I hear you say your sport the offices. When I went as minister of the employment, when I was minister head of my office, Robert Chair was not there. Robert Chair. Robert, he was not there. The curtain that was there, all too not matching in my own office. I left as one of the best offices among deputy ministers. When we took over minister of even school, you talk about the stadium, I clap for you. Good. That's what you write. If I clean a post up or play any cover on it, anything on the stadium, you know who make it today, today that you can go and be there by Josh Weir. He didn't complain all day to crap, baby, that everything he didn't fix it. He got to work and fix it. When we go to Minnesota, even sport, they, they bring you what I'm talking about. We made one million dollar debt. On the box, that's why we pay in it for the first one that we started. Don't hear that. Calm down. Don't hear. Yeah. Right, I won't even hear it. <laughs> we met, we met one million when we went to even schools. One million debt that you met with me. That's why we met the day we went there. When we left, we left 400, a, a little over 400,000 there. Up to today, it cannot be paid. And then more, I didn't want to come here to think so. Listen, you ask my president, we are. When President Weah took a decision to issue an executive order reducing the price of rice, it came from $16, it came down to $13. You could feel real part of the impact. President Boykai reduced the price of rice from $16 to $17. President Boykai reduced the price of fuel from $490 LD to $845 LD. You cannot play part of the economy. Came from America, leave the snow, come in like we let's walk on the street. You and I, all of your captain, leave America and come. Let's walk on the street. We come on the show and tell President we are the outside that is not open. You can come here, more. I didn't come with a campaign lies 16 billion go, 30 billion car. President, we are EJ, we come there. That's your business. Go on the street, go and talk to the people. They are disappointed. No policies, no direction, no anything. The only thing you keep doing is dismissing people every day and saying they are incompetent, they shall be on the payroll, the payroll is good there, you creating no job. Moadi went today, he said he was 85,000 US dollars. I saw him, he asked for declaration. In addition to that, he posted people that do business on Facebook. What kind of a thing you got? You all know you see other assistant minister. Thing, ambassador for other countries say they have a meeting. What about government looking like a joke here? As this is a minister, they also the whole thing, ambassador, they have a meeting, have a bilateral. Let people understand what they're doing. Let kids stop us around the place drinking milk. We need to be serious. Like I've always said, I will no, always no, want to carry acid bone, man. The whole show, you know, now, uh, 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 it's my turn. Let me go. No, no, no. I said, no, it's not done yet. I said, it's yeah, not I, done I, yet. I, 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 I don't really respond to it because I feel sorry for you that you don't, you know, you're not bending before, so I don't really respond to you. 
Yeah. So that's okay. Are you sorry for me? Oh, 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 sorry for me. Are you sorry? Yes. Why? <laughs> I need the a sorry to live. Thank thing you. Is, the thing you is, you want to feel sorry for me. The thing is, the reality yeah, is, you to live. talking about you feel you feel sorry for me. Blame no, I said I'm sorry. I said, don't be distracted. Go ahead. No, you will be distracted. Who are you? I don't need a sorry. Glenn will come to you, please. You come to me, so I can tell you. Yeah, but you interrupted our show. Wait now, don't do this. This is your habit, lady. No, but you shouldn't tell me that. No, it's okay. We'll come to you. We'll come to you. We'll come to you, Glenny. Don't get into your feelings. Wait for you to come to me, so I can I'm next. Wait, I'm next. Yeah, yeah, you'll come on. Go ahead, I said, do. Today, Prostar had a protest. I do on this screen, Glenny. Protest had a, or Prostar had a protest. My river too still. You can't even try to take my baby. Very few days ago, they were having protests at the executive mansion. Not too long ago, Fadiga here was attending official government meetings. What kind of a joke of a government is this? Why is Fadiga doing in government meetings? Oh, because your brother that government man, so you go there too, you go take notes to talk to the ambassador as well. People joking around here, the our government are play toy thing. What the thing is that? And then you want to come on the show and be talking like you know something where you know nothing? Go on the street, come from America. Thank you. Thank you. What do you hear the people say? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, we said go ahead, then we'll go to Glenny. Okay. So let me just be very Glenny, as I say, we'll go to Liberia and talk politics. Go okay. ahead. Okay. No, you don't want to be in Liberia. Anyway, in America, why are you working? Go there. Go there. Okay, so so let the record show that we've demolished the falsehood, the disinformation, the misinformation. That the that the Liberia was destroyed by George Weir. Okay, it is a political falsehood built upon, I mean, a faulty foundation of lies, innuendos, and all kind of nonsense. The four sectors of the economy were not destroyed. The real sector, economic growth, 2%, 2022, 2023. Like I said again, fiscal balance, okay. The relationship between expenditure and and revenues instead, we have stability within the monetary sector with uh, holding the value of the Liberian dollar and exports. Okay, exports increase. You saw a decrease in 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 in, in the current account deficit and also in the trade deficit. So you cannot say so we are destroyed. So let's we're talking about. A bunch of people going to the IMF, the Bretton Woods institutions. Let me be very clear. What did the government of Liberia tell us they were going to achieve by going to this World Bank meeting? What did they take as a strategic objective? And I understand that they're going to do something again called the Extended Credit Facility. They seem to sign up to a date. You're going back to Bretton Woods institutions to get on your knees. You are not developing a policy to improve the economic architecture of the country, to give Liberia a sovereign credit rating, to improve credits, okay, so we can do something like our credit development bank, long-term mortgages. You say you want change? You have to change the fundamentals of the economy. And I'm not going to be pedagogic here and pedantic and talk about my training in economics. When I mention my training in economics, because I went to school for that. So when I'm speaking, Okay, you should give me an opportunity and you ask me for a reference. I gave you the reference. When I give you the reference, then you want to argue the reference. I'm not a Google scholar. I'm not a Google scholar. I don't go to Google to go look what the human development index is. I already know that because it, the reports come in my box. Okay, you need to do something called the labor force survey. You haven't done that since 2010. Joe, I didn't even do that. How do you know the state of unemployment and the architecture? of the labor market. You know zero. You don't even know where poverty is because you haven't done something called the Sustainable Development Goals Report since 2010. You haven't done that. 
You haven't done gender parity in the CEDAW report. You haven't done that. The last report that was done by the Georgia administration, the Labrador Demographic Health Survey, saw maternal mortality drop by almost 300 points. It was at 1,023 per 100,000. And now it's just about, I think, 800 or 700, something like that. Eh? So, so Sam. Let me finish. No, 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 let me finish. Let me finish. You, you, can't start, tell me, you can't tell me you want to change and you don't know the baseline. You have to, first of all, analyze the baseline. Where are you in terms of social economic development? Where are you in terms of the labor force, in terms of unemployment? Where are you in terms of maternal mortality? Where are you in terms of the financial architecture? What are the resource constraints? And how are you going to develop a plan, a strategic plan that you haven't done? And apparently, you don't have the capacity to do that. So you're running around on social media. You're running around on social media talking about how bad things were in the George Weir years to cover your ineptitude. That's all you're doing. You're trying to cover your ineptitude. The four steps, the missteps, steps, the bad personnel choices that you're making. You're using George Weir's record to cover up. That's not how you run a government. Thank you, you understand. A government, you institute you. strategies and an implementation plan with a project thank you. Thank you. you benchmark, you target, and you go after it. But you don't come on Spawn TV and kind of run your government on Spawn TV. Thank you. I don't think they are. Yes, they are. More Ali uh, coming here every day. Uh, understand. The more, understand. more Ali coming here every day understand. instead of doing water and sanitation. I, I, I and understand. You should be, be telling us about Let me what ask you a question. water and sanitation. Uh, that come here and be a spokesperson for the government. The government has a spokesperson. That spokesperson is your name, Pia. And the other girl, what her name? Uh, 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 that, uh, uh, Fofana. That's not his job to come and Obusha. be a government spokesperson. He's Obusha. Mr. Face. Obusha. He's Obusha. Mr. Obusha. I will say, let me finish. You are 70 years old. By God's grace, with the mercy and grace, you will be 71. You are on spoon. I said, do appear on spoon as a regular panelist while he was serving as deputy that minister. That was wrong. That was wrong. Okay, hold on. Hey, Uncle Sam. You yell and say that was wrong. It yeah. was wrong. But you couldn't say it was wrong then. Because I was not on you school got, at that time. Yes, you yeah, were. You yes, you were. Yes, yes, you. You yes, were many times. You came on school, Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam, let me fair. Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam, as a panelist. You were there many times. Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam. 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 Uncle Sam, and every time somebody says something, he's talking about the hospital. Let me say something. I'm going to say you're finished. I'm going to say you're finished. I beg you. I said, do you finish? I beg you. Let me say something. 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 May the good Lord have mercy upon you and give you oh, a minutes. Are you going to come right. to me? So, uh, Benny, you're going to speak. Then we're going to go to Al Hussein and Conor Gray because we're closing now. It's 742. You know, we need our time. I, I on spoon. Know, we need our time on spoon so we cannot, we cannot make a mistake to run into Madame Titi on a program. Please, guys. Benny, talk to us now. So, you know, it's a privilege for me to be on Spoon TV. And I say it's a privilege because there are some people here who would have never known me. They would have never gotten the opportunity to ever sit where I sit or to speak where I speak. Never. The person who know me here the most is Paul Kennedy. He knows me. He knows of me. I'm not Samuel Jackson knows my background. Isaac Topa is my cousin. Some people that here they would never know me. And it's not you don't you don't just see somebody talk about you start and do I look like I need I said go I said go to be sorry for me do I look like I need that do I look like I need his 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 sorry do I look like I need anything for I said go really do I look like I need it does I have to go even know who I am do I even care who he is before we you beg get for him. We beg for him. 
You should never. As it don't, as it don't say he's very last time. As it don't say you go like time. that. You doing all the year you are I'm in just the telling you. Yes, as a good family. The family will heal like the rock. The family will heal like the rock. Go like the rock. The family there. Glenny, go like the rock. No, I can't go with our one to go. You cannot. Whatever I say, you can't go with our one to go. You cannot. Whatever I say, 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 you cannot. I can't go to Nigeria whenever I want to go. I say you whenever cannot. Whenever I want to go, let I say do wife move Liberia with him. Before you be concerned about another female, take your wife and your children to Nigeria. You should Shall never. You should make it his last time. I barely even call his name on this platform. I don't call his name. I will not say. He should not. He should not call my name. We got to move on. You see, there's no need for us all to be so hot. No, start on that. I'm not going to show you. Wait, let me put two away in the bag. I can solve your problem. Let's have our show. Okay? They think that somebody can even. We are all adult here. If somebody says, I feel sorry for you, can't do that, bro. What's wrong with that? Come on, man. Now, Colonel Gray, come in. Let's talk. Colonel Gray, please let me go, man. I got to go sleep. No, man, every day you pull out, you pull out, you pull out, out this game. Every day you pull out Paul. That's Colonel Gray talk. No, 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 that's Colonel Gray. Colonel, I'd wait for, I'd wait for, leave Taipei and go to the Kaohsiung <laughs> region. You see, I think we're there in Taiwan in terms of uh, agriculture <laughs> and also uh, Real natural resource uh, mining. Come on, okay. talk to us, man. The guys are taking us back, and the and, and the bag wasn't good for them. I don't know why they're taking us. Yeah, back. you know, uh, to us, on, on that 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 should not only go to uh, Isaac and probably uh, Madam Glenn. Uh, it should also go go also to uh, to to Mr. Uh, Jackson. You know, we can still make our point without being so feisty and. Or looking angry. I mean, I mean, I just imagine when other nationals are watching us, they wonder whether we're fighting. And we're making some some brilliant point, you know. Serious point, yeah. To go in the head and ears of, of people, man. You know, I don't thrive well when when the the, the, the corridor is this noisy. I, I don't know, it's it's an anomaly for me who being a military person. I, I when when it's so noisy, noisy and and you know, hot headed, I wonder. Where they're making progress, and where the adults that that kids are watching, you know. So I think we have to we have to come down a little bit, hold up our temperament, especially if we have a little bit of emotional intelligence. Let's push it in. I mean, just relax and make your point. So what's your point? What's your point, Colonel Gray? So my, well, I mean, you are my, enough my, today. My, my point is, for the first time in 100 days, we didn't have somebody called George Weir leading our country. And uh, uh, and now we're beginning to see the sanity of our country coming back gradually. You know, look, after chaos, the storm will calm down. You understand? And all the statistics uh, 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 Mr. Jackson is giving us, he's talking about since 2010. And between 2010, it's like there was a vacuum to fast forward to 2024. The high sign. Like nothing really um, obtained um, within 20, 2010 to, uh, to 2024, because he's saying that you have not done this index, this human uh, um, you know, indicator survey, this infant mortality since 2010. So that tells me that from 20, um, between, between the time Mr. Weir took power to the time he ended power over to, Mr., uh, to Ambassador Bwakai, nothing happened. And, you know, in other words, listen, the, the devil is in the detail. But what I want to say is I think uh, 
I think uh, 100 days is not to judge the performance of a, of an economy or government, but rather it's just to tell you that the ship has been stabilized gradually. Look, there was chaos. It was like the storm that blew out um, um, the ship on the um, Jesus Christ and his uh, and his disciple on sea. Uh, look, all that storm is gone. Now everything is calm now. You can see the sun it is returning to our country, and 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 people are coming back gradually into our country. Our, our airport was soon, you know, the, uh, uh, the the president was there today, and he said the our 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 airport is one of the shabbiest, and and I agree with him. In other words, he's thinking about our airport, you know, because the 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 kind of folks that will be coming into Liberia, unseen, you understand, for the last. Um, Six years, we didn't see those kinds of, uh, you know, a flow of um, of traffic through our airport. So there has to be some some under undercurrent uh, imagination for for the president. That's why he's talking about our airport is not in, in good standing; it's leaking and all these kinds of stuff. So we'll you want to count, on a great, we'll get the airport. You you want you want to count some of the the accomplishments somebody made. And 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 we barely can see everything somebody touched ruined for the last six years. Everything ruined. Take it or not. Um, Central, I'll give it back to you, my brother. So uh, guys, even Madam T you just sent me the text. Maybe she put it in the text room. I think we we have to meet this weekend and really discuss some structure. I love every one of you and I appreciate your presence here every day. But for the sake of our audience, yeah. we will have to stop the constant interruption, screaming, for the people to enjoy the show. It was a beautiful show. It has always been a beautiful show. But what's the takeaway? So let's do our closing as we ask for the takeaway. The way in which we address issues, just come down. You will speak, I will speak. We love to come and just attack Paul Kennedy. Paul Kennedy attacked me. It's okay. But let's do it with some discipline because the audience want the best out of our show. Paul Kennedy, I know you have to go. You speak. Then our brother asked if I would come on to speak with his closing because we'll be closing. So you go ahead, Paul. Thank you, Theo. And for the record, I don't attack anybody on the platform. <laughs> so you know, I think we're making progress. The priority of every new government CEO should reflect the needs and aspiration of the, and this, this can be a list from addressing the immediate concerns, promoting long-term development, and it's a list of things that every new government could do. Uh, you know, when you sign, when you get elected, you have signed a social contract to move the citizens from where you met them into a better state. No government should come to power and leave and leave their people in the same state or worse, they met them. That government you know, will be judged by the performance. And I appreciate what some of my colleagues in this government are doing because their number one priority should be assessing the current situation of the country. So if you are a minister or if you are a agency head, you should currently be assessing the the situation of that agency you are leading i saw my brother mo ali he's conducting a you know detailed assessment of the water structure the water and sewer facility uh my sister uh sarah beslo nyati did a lot of review of the foreign you know foreign service you know that will help you to set the policy direction once you set the policy direction after the assessment you'll be able to understand where next the country can go then before you start addressing some of the immediate concerns look ceo there are people currently in liberia who are living on begging they have to call their relatives and go to their friends to see how they can be able to make their ends meet on a daily basis it should be government priority to see how they can be addressing some of the employment needs for these people to get jobs we shouldn't be here fighting amongst ourselves oh the last government did this this government is going to do that i am not going to be a judge of inner government at the moment. What I'm going to do is to provide advice and support so that this government and any other government 
that I live with in that purview can survive and I mean succeed. Because building a strong institution among the country, I mean, among all the sector, the government should be looking to see how can they improve the hospital. Let's agree. John, we have built a hospital in Bapolu and he left. The question should be how is the new government trying to support that hospital to serve the Bapolu people? I don't think it should be a bad thing. We we'll go, oh, he built an empty hospital, he left with that. The hospital is there. At least it's a one step forward. Government is continuity. Government now should be thinking, oh, since the previous president built a hospital in Bapolu, how can we improve that hospital so that the people of Bapolu can benefit? Because the people of Bapolu are also people living in the Republic of Liberia. Government should be putting a plan together to see how they can improve the economic recovery and growth of this country. I mean, I was listening to the economist Samuel Jackson. The, current, the economy is not doing too well. We are not producing much in Liberia. Our pe the population is increasing. We need to do well so that we can invest in stuff that can bring return for our people to benefit. And last, the CEO, government has to invest into the social welfare of our people. We have to prioritize their people. I see three, four, five year old children when I drive around Monrovia, I feel bad. I see them in the in the street selling candy, cool air, so, I mean, uh, uh, cold water. Those things need to be improved. We need to invest into our uh, 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 social welfare scheme so that everyone, you know, will not be rich in the country, but at least they'll be able to meet their daily bread to eat. Education is a priority item because through education, you are able to develop skills. We should be looking at technical uh, 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 universities in Liberia to see how they can produce people who can have skill set to bring back the kind of development within the country. Everybody going to do business manager, business administration where you don't even have a job is, is a challenge in our country. So our civil servant agency needs to draw a human resource strategic plan that can direct which, which uh, uh, professions the people go to various universities to do. That will help us to foster a social cohesion. And lastly, I think government should begin to engage into the various sector and meeting with people in the community. The country is divided to a certain extent. Government need to engage people to bring back peace. Right on the this, on this spoon, you see how people go against each other, they are split. So first of all, we need to come together to be able to look at the direction, the strategic direction of the country. Because we are fighting among ourselves, we will not be able to develop as a country. Thank you very much, CEO, for giving me the opportunity to share this platform with all of my colleagues. Yeah, Mr. Jackson, so let me ask you a question, Paul. You... The degree right now is not creating any impact for our people. I don't, I don't, I don't I talk about no degree. No. I, I think why you had it. Why you have it? Hold on, Mr. Hold on. How we can improve the life of you have your time. Hold on. I work. You and I can Paul. work together on doing some things in the country. I'll Thank just you, try to throw that little caveat yeah. there. Thank you, Paul. Let me ask you a question, Paul. You, 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 you are where you are. You were sent there by who? I mean, you represent the Liberia Enfield. Yes. So I, I came to. How you? You guys were how many? I, I came alone. I came to like to uh, Ethiopia to help to develop a framework for strengthening public health institutions around Africa. So we developed. You were the, you, you the only. You were the only representative from Liberia. That is correct. I am the health system strengthening and policy advisor at the National Public Health Institute. So this job is in my alley. So you met you met you met the lady over there or you traveled together? Who lady? Have Don't a that nonsense yet. That no <laughs> the slipper, the slipper lady, the lady with the, the slipper, slipper, the one out of pocket is that I said don't close that. <laughs> yeah, it's always good. it's always good to be on the show, actually. We will always be here. Uh, one of the things we're going to push for is to bring certain folks back. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that happens. The likes of Ben Sambi, Tommy, and George, they're going to come back on the show. I'm going to make sure it's happening. Uh, but then the thing you can see the. Uh... I don't know, you okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm I'm sorry to you, but... <laughs> I, I, they will come. I, they will come. I mean, we need a balanced platform. But again, you can see the tolerance level of people from the CDC side and from the rescue side. Um, everybody here can bear one witness. The only person who get all the names on the show that me, the only person who can say all kind of things to that me, I will laugh, I don't even get best with nobody. I only came out to joke with my own sister, say, I'm sorry for you because you didn't work in the government. She talking about, if I know her, the car she get, the horse she get, the food she eat, what am I gonna do with me? Me who here, I get car. I who here, I can eat, I can eat Gary. Uh, uh, 
and in the net, I can pull Jacko Lantern on. Why am I asking someone where they get? Why I got to do that other one? Like, where that one? That even uh, Fadiga gave me small thing yeah, yeah, yesterday before we cook to eat. So, why can't somebody say, where you get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Mama, I want to say I'm sorry for you because you didn't work in government. I want to say I, get, I was there. And then you take a whole lot, you start talking about my family. Why would you go that wrong? I didn't expect that from you. I think we should be a little take of skin. You will agree that me, I take all of the things from people. Like they say all kinds of things to me. I don't, I don't take care of anything. Because when we come here, it is my expectation that we disagree. By the end of this, we, we, we are family. I don't think we should get that much angry and all that kind of thing. But again, let me quickly close my issue. Um, the government has dismissed more people than they've ever created a job. I'm sure they will not even create one single job equal to the amount of person dismissed. That is not a good governance practice. If you if you see if you see uh, uh, an arm former or I, I don't or, do your closing ask you though, but I gotta ask you a question. Uh, please, how do you expect us to know the government of George Banawea? Tell us how many jobs you guys created. We use the same measurement as to, you know, we tell the liberal people how many jobs Joseph Barker created. When you give us the same, you know, measurement, how many jobs did he created? All right, let, let's get it straight. You will tell the people how many jobs Mr. Barker will create or created. Just correct the English first before I can tell you. How many jobs Mr. Barker will create? But how many jobs did he created? I want to use years. the same. I want to use the same uh, measurement. How many jobs? Uh, you know, you for six years, for six years. Right, right. Again, there are tasks who can look at. I would not have the exact figure, but I can tell you for instance, Uncle Center, about three factories that are in Liberia. People are working there. I know of Echo Bank expansion in other counties. They hire people. I know of a lot of things. Even uh, I know Orange Money, uh, Lone Star expanded. They hire people. They get a mining factory that were created. They hire people. And a lot of other things. So you can, you know, look at those things. They are concession. So we can put our finger on it, right? I so still have not Right. You can go to the labor ministry and get a, a clear, good understanding. But we know jobs were created. But what I'm saying, the government has so far dismissed as many persons as they will never create that amount of job. And I will always say to them, if Mr. Biker really wants to succeed, that we want him to succeed, he will not listen to the folks who come and tell you, say, yeah, clap for you. You will listen to people who tell you you are creating a monster. That sometimes when it comes against you, you will not be able to control. Whenever you dismiss one family, not just that person, one person, there are many other persons behind them. You say the motorbike people should move from the street. That could be maybe a good idea. I don't know. But the way you're doing it, even in Rwanda, one of the cleanest cities in, in uh, or, or Kigali in Africa, they pick the children, they are on the street. What they do, make sure they get helmet, they got shoes on them, they got training, they got identity. I think you can do something like that. But when you want to take bread out of people's mouth totally, you are creating things. EPS officer was just being, you know, embarrassed, almost being dragged on the ground with arm. The other friends that are dismissed are looking at it. And you think you are doing good for yourself? You are doing harm to your country. You are doing harm to yourself. We expect this government to help the people and not hurt the people. You came to rescue, you did not come to give excuses. George Weah is no more president, focus on your achievement. George Weah, okay, all the horses George Weah broke it down, so he damaged it. Focus on the horses you are building. You are there today now. The people will judge you on what you're doing. That's why the entire country is in a mess. No hair, no tail. Nobody knows where we're going now. But it's always good to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. As uh, about Tuba, your closing. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, it's just sad that we can't really get to solutions, right? The country has so many different challenges. Just bloviating about some things that may not even be relevant or can't apply to the people's lives. You know, sometimes it's a waste of time. Yeah, maybe. The panel discussion can enjoy maybe some of the audience can enjoy it but we should really be delving into issues that can make a difference i mean one issue i'm trying to attack is the whole lane issue 
Lynn is probably the next major trouble spot in the country if we're not careful. Um, the war happened. The coup happened. People left. The war years, people left. Nothing in the outlying, um, you know, remote areas. People had to come to the city. People come to the city, people got to find somewhere to live. There's a lot of squatting. There's a lot of encroachment, a lot of trespassing. A lot of people can't find their deeds. A lot of people have a problem with the land, the legal system around the land. So there's a lot of issues there. That's a that's a that's something our Pepper Bird is trying to really bring to the forefront, to the attention of the librarian people, that there are solutions to these things. We can work together. Just what well, yesterday or today in the paper, um, people in Johnsonville for property business, two different families fighting, arguing. So if we can try to find solutions to some of these common things that affect our people. The value of land is significant, very significant. Unfortunately for our people, most of us cannot develop our land because no access to capital. So with this economy growing, what is the plan of this government to provide access to capital that people can invest in the land? And even guidance. Some people lease their beautiful property for 100 years. We say Lebanese may not be citizen yet, but if you get somebody a hundred year lease, fifty year lease, without any consideration for escalation in um, you know, the economy, in prices, in the value of real estate, because how people don't understand some of those things, and they're desperate for capital, they're desperate for cash. Same, you were the one complaining so many times about the fact that the whole boulevard that would you have some multi-story structures, ten stories, fifteen stories, what we got. We got um, one store at the bottom, so now two stores on two levels, and then the third level, probably residential for the people who there. That limits our vertical growth. So until we can start look, looking at how we resolve the land issues, how we resolve the, um, the planning, the urban planning, I'm happy Paul talking about doing some stuff for the city. There's a lot of need for that. So services around land, and how we unlock the value in land, you know, how we do identification of individuals and assets and land, clear ownership, where the land code is very effective in resolving these things, building our cadastro, which is a map that demonstrates ownership of all the land all around the country, then we'll be making a difference. People own land, you can invest in the land, you can show proof of ownership, and the value of land can increase. That means you can get loan from the bank, so you don't have a real collateral. So these are some of the things, folks, that we should be trying to find solutions for. And we can identify those problems sometimes on the platform, focus on it, bring in some experts who are more knowledgeable about those things, and then try to find, build consensus around how we move forward. I mean, thank I know you're scratching your ear, but thank you. No, thank you for setting your land issue. Be that dwell. I'll come keep telling you. Come tell me this. I can't come tell the minutes earlier and talk about your land issue. I'm going to talk about what's on I'll your do mind. That, you I'll know? do that tomorrow. Get one, get one no, in no, one, two I'll minutes. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. I'm home all day tomorrow. I'll be here five minutes to four. I'll be on the show. Tomorrow, the last poll that, uh, that God can help you all, that Monday you're talking about. 70 years. God can help librarians. You see what happened? 70 years. <laughs> tomorrow, that's, that's Sunday. That's Sunday can happen. <laughs> Now, come into yet we found way for God to help people. And look, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uncle Sam. Tomorrow is not Sunday. Tomorrow is not Sunday, Uncle Sam. Tomorrow is Saturday. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Seventy years. I missed the time. I missed the time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> this, well, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like, I mean, I like, I'm not. I like how it. I like how it. Nigerian again call it seventy year old man. <laughs> Uncle Sam, look, tomorrow look, is. Look, seriously. Yeah. Want to say? We want to say, this is we want to say, GPS. yeah, we want to say, uh, uh, thank you, as if I, uh, uh, welcome back. That's what Rich is saying. Okay. For Diga, you want to do your closing? Uh, yeah, can you share my picture? Before I close, I want to send a happy birthday to a special person, my uh, in law. You know, when I was sick in Minnesota, uh, Natalie prepared my first. 
yeah. up in the soup when I just got her husband. I needed up in the soup so much. Today it's her birthday and it means so much to her. I just wanted to wish her a happy birthday. And she an avid listener of the show. She loves so who is she to you? Who is she to you? I will tell you that my in law. You and I know we saw she wrote. That's my yeah, sister. Just, you you gave me an announcement. I'm just saying. But you got that though. Who that? Who that? Brown hole and I catch you. Yeah, my begin. That though. No, no problem. Uh, happy birthday, Natalie. But uh, Santa, I want to close today. Uh, today I got she got my wife Nemo. Happy birthday, Nali. Happy birthday. Uh, she I, should, loved, I should take it out now. Take it out now. Let me tell our politics. Natalie, uh, I will call you later. Uh, Stanton, uh, I read in, in, I spent too much time talking about spilled milk. Uh, Georgia is history. We are moving forward, but so many things happen in the country. Uh, Stanton, I'm worried about the security in this country. I'm worried about the, 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 uh, the grooming of homegrown terrorists by folks like Asido and other people that are that are instigating instability in this. You said we should move on, and you no, 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 no. We, we are move on, but I'm talking about current event now. Uh, uh, home, uh, uh, these guys are are, 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 are brewing this uh, sentiment of uh, and sowing chaos in this country. Stanton, uh, today we saw motorcyclists uh, on the street, uh, and I, my my view on this is this. Stanton, uh, the motorcyclists have left an impressive mark on our economy when it comes to transportation. They help people to navigate. The, 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 the ability to help us navigate uh, the city is unparalleled to any, any other uh, transportation service. But the motorcyclists have also become a curse in this country. Curse to themselves and curse to the nation. In a, I drove around this city and I see more than five, six fatality or serious uh, accident. Uh, I don't know whether the city was built for this. We always like to, to, to tie doing the right thing with economic. Look, we understand. I don't think the police mean to take food and bread from people's mouth for anything. That will be a curse and a blessing. I think we want to get rid of the curse. The accident too much. People are dying. Are there a lot of addiction among motorcyclists? The crime. Two weeks ago, a friend of mine called me and said, Who simply come here with a kidding me off uh, uh, because they couldn't get the police? Right in front of Charles City Horse, these guys took the machete for his, 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 his pins, slashed that girl on her back, and she's almost malad. Uh, it very light skin, slice her on her back, cut her bag, and took me away with five dollars and something. And it came from behind her on another motorbike. It's easy to get away. Uh, uh, something needs to be done. The politicization of all these things needs to stop. I think the, the, the police IG need to put their foot down on this. These guys need to get on the freedom rules. They are indigenous to themselves and to the public. Riding a motorcycle is not a right. It is a privilege. Driving is a privilege in any civilized nation. In as much as you are at liberty to, to move around freely, anything that has to do with public safety that government has to regulate is, is not your right. It becomes a privilege. And that is a privilege that we need to use wisely and responsibly. I know people quit to say, oh, why you would do, why you would get them, people have to eat. Yeah, people have to eat, but that doesn't mean people have to die. That doesn't mean people have to make acid go to hospital and have a big cripple because we did not uh, or something or uh, 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 manage our public safety wisely. That doesn't mean people have to take drugs and go harm other people. It has nothing to do with that. Yes, people have to eat. Yes, the economy is bad, but at the same time, a uh, 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 law enforcement and the rule of law is also important. These guys are harm to themselves. So when I see the, when I saw uh, people arguing and politicizing the thing, I'm like, no, you have to be on the ground to understand what is going on. These guys are not only harming the society, they are harming themselves. They hit you, it becomes a problem. You hit them, it's a problem. That is lawlessness. 
the idea of defying authority is lawlessness. This doesn't happen in America. When American police uh, 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 um, make some declaration, nobody, nobody question it. Nobody can actually have a rule of law because they know that it is in the best interest of the public. We cannot, our streets were not made to, to accommodate. In Thank America, you. they have, they have Thank you, so, so, no, I know you, you, you support it. Let me close on it. Uh, uh, yeah, they have no, bicycle no, no. lanes, they have and they have something. Many days, a standard will tell you this. I was dri I'm driving in the night. I'm driving around 19 o'clock in the night, and you see motorcycling, no, no light on. You, you almost say that you have to be very, very careful driving because people will jump in front of you. People will come from nowhere, no light, no safety equipment. We need to enforce that also. Staff having more than 24 people helmet and all those things, the problem that also will naturally reduce it. But this has to be imposed, and I think this government should not give in on this. The lawlessness Thank in this country is getting too much. Thank you, Fadiga. We have to go. by our folks on the other side. Thank you. Fadiga, can you tell Liberia whether we have any one good motorcyclist in the country? Center. This is what I told the motorcycle. Do we have any one, two, three of them that that good that law abiding? It's difficult to know because so all of them that... the bad one have overshadowed the good one. Okay, thank you. And I, oh, I you know, you know what I told them. The time? I told them they have to police themselves because thank the Fadiga. bad apple among them have overshadowed the, the, the whole group. Thank, 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 thank you, Fadiga. Uh, for, I disagree with you on so many points you make. But Glenny, please do your closing. So I just like to say in every conversation, there are two people. There is the, the one who's conversating and the one who's receiving the conversation. And it's subjective based on your interpretation. We are all adults here. No one is a child. We may respect one another. We may not respond to some things. We may ignore things. But we have to be extremely cautious of what we say to people here because we have people watching. To say to a grown woman, I feel sorry for you, I can interpret it as being insulting, whether he was joking or not. That's unacceptable. We all have to go put ourselves in a way that we respect one another. No one has to be here, but we're here because of Liberia. We've been afforded the opportunity by Stanton with us to sit here on this platform to speak. So when we're here, we demand respect for one another. I, I respect you. You respect me. Don't, don't, I'm not your friend. You're not my friend. Don't joke with me like that. I'm not your child to say to a woman, uh, uh, um, I feel sorry for you. Please, it shouldn't happen again. It should not. Thank you. Thank you, Glendy. Colonel Gray, did you close? Yes, it's, it's my turn. I uh, didn't close that. No, I won't call on Gray to yes, close that. You, you, you close no, no. I didn't close that. No, Colonel no. Gray has spoken. Uncle Sam, since Colonel Gray came, he spoke only one time. Let let allow him to close, please. Okay. Conor you know, Gray, uh, um, Center, I'd like to take it from where Fadiga left off uh, in terms of the security of the state. There are so many um, youthful, um, you know, citizens in our country. I think if you go back and check, they outnumber the rest of uh, the other demographics. Um, um, I'm saying this because uh, there are so many ways you can utilize that, that youthfulness. Um, EPS is not the only corridor. Riding bikes, providing for their family, is not the only uh, source or means. Um, back in the back then, I disagree with um, the actual of the of the AFL when they set the benchmark to be high school. I say, well, it's good, but remember, kids that should have graduated from high school were the disadvantaged ones that were caught up in that war. And by the time the guy was five and the war was over, 14 years later, he's 19. That person will not go sit down in a functional school uh, in ABC. So what do you do? You elevate the, uh, the recruitment process in the AFL by instituting something called GED. You teach the person to read and write, 
when they can read and write, you institute some tests, up to two tests, to test their own ability. Then you can bring them into the AFL. And this issue about the AFL playing around 1,500, 2,000, all that will go away. And that same, those same individuals, you can transpose them into agriculture while they're serving the AFL. I mean, use some, some clever way to be able to put that, that group into, into work. Now, they don't necessarily have to ride bike. It has become a nuisance. It, it has become like the only means through which young people are providing for their family. I don't falter them. But when you put those kinds of, when, when that becomes the only means through which sus, uh, they can sustain their family, then, then it's bad. I, you know, I came here when I returned from Liberia. I said um, it was, the lawlessness was, was at the height and it was dangerous to even drive. Because look, you have to be extremely attentive. Even if you have hand-free uh, cell phone, something will carry your attention away, you know, before you look, because these people are wiggling their way through traffic in the dark, people coming in uh, you know, the opposite lane against you, bike is, is meandering between. And I mean, you can put this, uh, this youthful um, population to work. We can recruit them, even those that drop in from the EPS, I uh, teach now to read and write, give them the test. If they pass, they, you will put them to kind to the armed forces, let them serve their country. You know, they don't have to be uh, um, riding bike to provide for their family at their own endangerment and at the peril of society. I think uh, we, have to, we have to think for them. Uh, definitely that's why we are the leaders and they are the followers or they are the beneficiary or the end users. So what I would say, um, uh, Stanton, we have a country to develop, but let's um, let's let's uh, those who have um, who found themselves in leadership must be able to use their their, their, their their status to think for society. And today, I've I've not heard any um, appointment at the Ministry of Defense. I've seen an acting person. This society is becoming more and more, you know, um, sort of a shaky, if I may say that. You need a Minister of Defense. You need all the security gamut to be in place to be able to, to, to govern society in a lawful manner. So I will end there, my brother. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uncle Sam? Okay, so I'm gonna be very personal tonight and I just want us to just end the personality conflicts that we have, okay? The reason why I always talk about my credentials and talk about where I work is because anytime I make a point, somebody will call me a lot, yeah, somebody will call me a liar. I don't go and misquote statistics because I want to promote a particular government, right? A lot of these things because of what I've done in my life. I get in like human development report comes in my inbox. Sustainable development goals report, all this in kind of my inbox, right? And the issue that we have, there are various sources of guest estimates, and we don't have the national authority that legis like some countries have a national statistical office that put out quarterly, biannual, and annual reports. Like the, the only difference is that the a central bank does a monthly report and then they do a an annual report, right? So when I shot a, shot a statistic, somebody them say, "Oh, you lying! You lying! You lying! Stop lying!" I mean, how can you just talk to me like that? You know? And when I'm talking about being economic, where have you worked as an economist? You know, I come from Wall Street. I was a kid on Wall Street. Credit Suisse, Drexel Brennan Lambert, Chase, JP Morgan Chase. And anybody who lives in New York know that I work on Wall Street as a kid. Okay? Okay? So I'm not from the street. Okay? And also, I have to have a good, good, good situation in America. My last marriage, I was married for 25 years and lived in one house for 25 years. 75, three line in court. Go Google that, okay? And we have properties. When we split up, we split a significant amount of money to put me on my feet for the rest of my life. Everywhere I go, okay, I live, I stay in my own bed. South Africa, Liberia, and, 
and, and, and the United States. I'm not a loafer. I'm not talking about Labrador politics because I've got somebody to call me to give me a consultancy. Okay? Many people my age will not even want to be in this kind of interaction because they think it's beneath them. But I come to be a part of the dialogue because I'm passionate about things. I've been passionate about these things for most of my life. I don't come here to talk on spoon because Joseph Baga will call me. If I want Joseph Baga to call me, I will just shut up. I will go to Liberia. Cartoon on myself on the school together. I will get on my hands and my knees and I will go beggar. And they will get me, they will throw me something kind of blue. But I'm not that kind of person. I didn't even go to, to beg Charles Taylor for a job. I didn't go beg we are for a job. I never go beg Ellie for a job. I resigned from the board of LPRC. I resigned. Free gasoline in my 1,500 every quarter. I resigned. Post war. I brought a half a million to Liberia. I had an ice factory. I had a bakery. I had a dollar store. Me, Samuel Jackson, go to Pinsville, Joe Bar. Pinsville, Joe Bar. I ran my ice factory for like 11, 12 years. When I got cancer, I sold it to Sandra Johnson, the senator, the former senator. Okay? So I'm not looking at slouch for somebody to think like I'm here because I want some kind of pecuniary benefits or something like that. I'm on Spoon because Spoon is the preeminent platform to discuss things that are Liberian. And most of the places I go around the world, my presence on Spoon gives me this visibility to reach out to other Liberians. I'm not here because I want to benefit. I'm sitting now in my own living room, in my own dining room right now in America. Okay? Okay. And then when somebody talk, you said when you when you when you misspeak and somebody say, take it that you're that you're a young woman you married to, you can't you can't you can't talk to somebody's wife like that. You can't talk to somebody's wife like that. I misspoke. I'm sorry for saying hush. And I didn't mean to say what well, I meant to say I big but let me talk. But then you start going on. The last time the same person said, you got a 10-year-old son. It was making like a, something nasty, you know. You can't be doing that to people. This is not a platform for personal, you know, to 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 come people you know, character to expose it to stuff. I have a, my son will be eleven years old next month. Okay, he's not living on the street. I built a house for him and his mother in Liberia. Okay, I'm not a slouch. So, but people know every time I say something, you disagree with me, argue with me on the merits of what I say. Not about my personality. I'm not a nice guy. My, this is my third marriage. You know, I mean, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a nice person. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a Christian cool. I do a lot of bad things. But to say that I lie because I give you a statistic that you disagree with, or I misspeak and I say something that maybe may sounds disrespectful, you go into my family. That's not right, my people. I beg you. I want us to all be together and discuss Liberia's problem. Take me out of the equation. Deal with what I say. Don't talk about me, what I want a job. And so oh, you were there with Samuel Doe, and Samuel Doe killed Titan people. I was a little boy. A little boy was in jail. And Doe, I was not involved in the, what about it, in the, the tribunal, that was a tribunal. Those people were tried by the military tribunal. And Colonel Reverend Gray, you know that. They were tried by the military tribunal. And it was a kangaroo one. I disagree with that. Many of the people who were killed were friends of mine. They did good things for me, like John Shermer and Clarence Parker. They did good, good things for me. I would not be part of a conversation to put and strap taking people on a pole and kill them. Eh? I did not jump. Let me finish. I didn't, I didn't jump Charles Taylor. Yes, give me 30 seconds. I didn't jump. I didn't go to the Charles Taylor government in 2002. 2002. From 1989. Okay. I went back to, to America in 1981. From 1981 to 2002, between America and South Africa working. Only 2002, I went to work with Charles Taylor. And one year later, the government was re removed. And since that time, 21 years. I've been on my own, carrying myself on my own bootstrap, not begging, you know, or groveling for somebody to give me 
cross. I've never done that in my life. Thank you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, but if I offended anybody, I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize to Dr. Francine for telling her to hush up, okay? And by the same virtue, I don't think the conversation should have gone on to my wife. God bless you, God bless Liberia, and God save the nation. Thank you, Mr. It's good to have you. Dr. Richardson, you want to close? Yes, uh, quite an interesting show. I would like to just remind our audience and my fellow panelists that the way how you see some of the men interact with us on this show, it is a manifestation of how they behave in their real life. So there are days when we give them unconditional positive regards, which is a, a psychology term, okay? We listen to them and we let it come through our ears and pass out. But there are days when we just can't take it no more. We'll speak our mind and speak to them exactly and tell them that we are not their child. We are, not, we are full grown women. We have families and how they need to respect and react when they are, they are around women. After all, many of you know that women are the bare rock for most societies, including ours. If you don't respect us on this show, how do you expect our country to get better? That's the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make is you cannot come around here and just throw numbers to us. Someone said we are all educated in our own rights. Even if you didn't have a degree or if you had a degree, the fact that you had the courage to come on this show to speak is quite admirable. It's commendable that you would do that. I don't come to tell you the amount of degrees. In fact, <laughs> I know Stanton knows it, you know. I, I, I My degrees, I, I don't even come to measure them here. I don't talk about them because the hallmark of a truly educated person is know how to compartmentalize your degree, know when and how to talk about your degree, know how to use your degree. But if we're just throwing degrees around, we can do that. What does it mean? How does it help the, the regular Liberian in Liberia? When we just come in and throw numbers around and don't contextualize numbers, when we just come with human development index and we don't talk about the factors that contribute to human development index, we don't explain that to the Liberian people who are listening, we are not educated, okay? We are just recessed, like we are regurgitating. We are reciting things that we learn, okay? We are memorizing and displaying and vomiting words that we learned. That's not being educated. I don't do that. You integrate facts. You speak to the people that you are talking to and you give them facts and you tell them how they are impacted. My third point is that if we come here every day and talk about how bad this government is, this government is bad. This government should do better than that government. How is that? Helping the Liberian people. How is it helping the Liberian people? If you're doing that because you are mad, because you lost, then that's a personal issue that you have. It is not a public issue. It does not impact the Liberian people. So let's learn how to separate our personal feelings and views about development in our country and our public views about wanting development in our country. Some of us, we are here because we want a better Liberia. We know that we trust and we know that Liberians can be better. And we know that Liberians can do better. I was just in Liberia. When somebody would come and tell me about the Human Development in Index is increasing Liberia, when I saw a pile of dirt, you know, that can cause hygiene and health problems to Liberians. Is that how we're gonna improve our Human Development Index? I was in Liberia, somebody mentioned there's no rule or regulation in terms of driving. You're lucky if you survive driving from point A to point B because you could, you could have a car wrecked. Somebody can just come and run straight into your car because you are driving in, in, in a lane that you belong to be, you belong in. 
I saw children who were selling the streets. Not long ago, we had a newspaper out there that spoke about there's more children selling in the streets of Liberia than ever before. And I won't even go to the mental health of Liberians, how traumatized they are from this war. If anybody wants to talk about the development of our country, let's put policy. Don't kind of tell me, oh, you build markets. Don't kind of tell me, oh, you build a, 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 a Samuel Dole sports stadium. Don't kind of tell me, oh, uh, you have a TVET program. Don't tell me that. Let me see your policy and how did the money that you spend commensurate to the development of Liberia? How can we measure that? Building parks in Liberia, we know they didn't help the Liberian children. We know that. Who, who are the parks for? Go there now. Go now and visit the parks. I'm sorry, I have videotapes of those parks. Did the parks help the children out in Bonk County that I spent a lot of time in? Did they help the children out in Wiala that I spent a lot of time in? Did they have the children in Nima when I go and spend a lot of time in Nima? So let us not just come and throw numbers because we went to uh, some kind of school of psychology or school of whatever, whatever you know, we went to. I can do that. But I know when I do research, there's extra renal factors that go into my numbers. There's that why is the infectious smile. Put that smile on the face. There's, 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 there's the variables that goes into my numbers. I don't just throw numbers out like that because only an uneducated person would do that. So on that note, I want to tell you thank you. And the more that you guys ask sexist to to women on this show, that is the more that will prove that Liberia has to include women in all decision-making processes. One last thing, Jessica, we stand with you. We hope that you come on spoon. You and your family come and tell your story. And I apologize to you and your family for whatever the system did to you in Liberia. Thank you. All right, we want to say thank you. And I think uh, today, well, I disagree. Well. Today, today I disagree with our sisters, our female friends on the show. I totally disagree with you, Dr. Richardson. I disagree with you, Glendy. You guys were very unfair on the show today to we the men. We laugh, but whenever we're speaking and you interrupt us, Sexism is not a one-way street. Sexism is not going to... No, let me finish. Hey, man. There you go again. Just what I just said. I'm still, I'm still with me. I'm still with me. I just said it. I just but I said it. But I would interrupt I said, though, before he told me, sir, he's sorry no, for no, me. No, no, no. But I, you're interrupting I'm me. Still, let me see. I see you guys, man. Later. Later. Yeah, thank, thank you. But let me... Let me you got to do me... At least give me a little respect. Let me speak before interrupting me. That's what I just said. You're going into the sexism. You're going into the female thing. You're going into the thing that said, oh, he disrespected us. But you guys initiated this fight today. There was no reason why for you to even interrupt any one of us. We are married. We have sisters. We have daughters. We have mothers. But it will be a two-way street. I disagree with y'all. When we're speaking, we beg you guys to give us the chance. Even when we say something that is off, when it is your time to speak, you can address it. But there will be no way. You, you know, it's like my little sister to call my wedding. It means that we can call old lady. When she do something to you, she run first to lay complain. No matter what you do, you the bad person because she's the little sister. We are on this show. We respect your married children. You'll get your children out of the home. They're living by themselves. You'll get your husband. You're enjoying. Same thing with us. But I disagree with you today. If you can only stop interrupting us, we may not say something that, that's so wrong. I do not agree with someone telling you to say harsh. I do not agree with somebody saying things that is off. But don't push us. Please. We are humans. Don't push us. Sometimes we are on point. You will interrupt. And you guys get a sharp voice. A very sweet and nice one. But sometimes it's irritating though. I know they will go on Facebook and say, stand on wrong. But let's say, man, 
if we can control the show, it should start with you guys. Whatever Asido would say, we can check him. Whatever Uncle Sam would say, we would check him. But just give us the time to finish, and then you can address us. And when we go in the back, we check ourselves. And so that to Richard saying, Uncle Sam say hush, sorry, he apologized. Granny didn't like the fact that Asido say, come to America. And, you know, in other words, sorry, we apologize, but please, please, for the sake of our audience and a beautiful program, allow us to speak freely before you inject, you inject the sexism car, you inject the big words that I can't even remember. What did she say? But you know why? It makes the show interesting. Now, let me say something about the show. I'm not listening to Al Hussein. I agree with the women. You must agree with the women, Allison, because she listened to you right in the room. She told you to agree. You must agree. So make no mistake. We can listen. We are here. Let God bless us. Is, 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 is the event well, you now? You talking sexist here? You talking? You you making a scene that I only need to interrupt you? Me, you are interrupting me again, Benny. Benny, 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 you are interrupting me. Go in the man's bedroom. This is as per evidence, right? And you know this, Benny, because we went there. We were trained to that. I'm on the phone. I'm sorry. I'm not speaking. I'm not speaking. I'm speaking, but you want to leave that somebody is sexist, same attitude right there. Now you don't want to bring in sexist, and you're acting like you're the one that women here can interrupt you. You spoke. You spoke. When we didn't interrupt you, you spoke. We sat down. We listened. But I'm speaking. You saying good enough to go, as evidence by our attitude on the show. May God bless us. We'll have a wonderful show again tomorrow. I hope that Richardson can bring Jessica and her mom, Cynthia. Let's hear the whole story. Let's hear their story. I want to say thanks to all of our friends, all of our followers. Take it or leave it. We love you. And we love our sisters and our female friends on this show. We will forever be together to talk the issue of Bolivia. I disagree with my brother, Alpha Dika. I think the solution to take those guys from the street, the motorcyclists, is to create more jobs, help them, redirect them, reorientate them to the job, the labor department, create more jobs for them. The, the guys that don't want to ramble the back. I'm not talking about the, the political protests, no. I'm talking about the actual people that, that are trying to hustle to make a daily living. That's what I'm talking about, create more jobs. They will stop riding motorbike. They got some bad apples among them, we understand. Apply the rule of law, apply it. It will work. Let's try to be innovative. Let's try to create new ideas. I don't think the government you know, is stopping that's the best I'm thing. So again, again, another, another, another male child interrupted me. But that's OK. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> we say we love you, Dr. Richardson. Love you, Granny. And, and love you. And love you, Fat Fatima. Y'all have a good night. I think these are our candid conversations. I don't think that the show should just end yeah. with what you just said. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we were doing that all in the back. We're feeling no, we're not doing it in the back. back. If you can't that's all do it, we're not doing it in the that's back. Come on. That's it, come on. That's it, come on. That's a richest thing. That's a richest thing Titi is saying that we got to go. So we're doing the no, back. Titi is saying that you got to no. go because uh, since I think you sometimes you All right. Okay. You want us to have it? You want us to have it? Yes. yes. All, right, cool. yeah. All right. Good. So we're not. Wait. No interruption, right? Let's give ourselves one minute each. I beg you, Dr. Richardson. I will not interrupt you. It's good for us to have this one minute each. You go first. Stanton, first of all, you don't realize the impact of what you just said. All right. Of all the men on this show, you know how your words carry weight in Liberia. For you to come on the show and say that you don't think that we are we, we that men behave sexist towards us is 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 just unbelievable it's unbelievable all right how many times have i been on the show from the it's almost it's inception of me being on the show i've been abused i've been talked to i've been tossed around 
in many of the times I give you guys what I call unconditional positive regard. Sometimes I let it come in one ear and go out in one ear. But then sometimes it gets too much. I can't sit around and let somebody because the thing that the educator tells I run some kind of wrong facts and I'm supposed to say it's okay. How many times I sit here and don't even interrupt any people, anybody. I just sit here and listen to you guys and quietly, I, I quietly do my own thing. I'm working, in fact, when you guys are talking. You know, so I think we really need to be careful how we use the words, how you use your words on this show. If anything, I think to promote uh, women, you need to promote us on this show because you know we take the brunt of abuse of, of you men on the show. Nowhere in the world would I ever go and tell any man, hush, nowhere in the world that any man, Glenn will go anywhere and tell any man, I feel sorry for you. We don't do that. We, we, we don't speak like that. Except maybe you don't come from a home or you weren't raised correctly. And that is okay. an assault. That is an assault on us. And I think you need to speak about that. Okay. So to address you, Dr. Richardson, I will send apologize. I said, do apologize. And we added our own apologies. But the origin, it was from you and Glenn Lee. So does that deserve well, for I just, let me, yeah, hey, uh, there you go again. From which Glenn Lee? So you're you feeling that, uh, you're feeling that, uh, then let me know. We have a dialogue, we have a dialogue. No, but we have a dialogue, but you, you ask a question and your sister asking questions. So that two on one. Yeah, that's what you say. That's what you say. You, you bet, you bet. You have taken the bullet here on spoon. We know you have gone above and beyond. We appreciate that. We're talking about today. I'm not talking about yesterday. I'm talking about today. I try my best to protect every one of you. Do you guys can get under my skin? To me, I really don't care. I would not insult you guys. I would never do so. I wasn't brought up like that. Why, why, why did you tell it? Well, the me. issue is that they apologize and you interrupt. We are on a show. When somebody said the wrong thing about you, wait. Address it when it is your turn to speak. When the moderator said, please hold your peace. No, I cannot. I must answer and I must answer now. Stand I don't up. think, no, let me finish now. Let me end. Okay. I don't think, I don't think it's right. A lot of you guys will not like what I said today, but I believe within my inner mind, what I said was true. Do not interrupt. We will checkmate all the men, including myself. We don't interrupt. And for them to tell you, say, harsh, I totally agree and disagree with him. He that's apologized. When I, that's when I interrupted. That's no, no, I, no, no, no. That's, that's not, no. Exactly that's not when you interrupted. That's no. That's, that's, no, that is no, no, no. You, inter, you interrupted. When I get interrupted on this show, that. That is when I, that's when I respond. Yeah, but I, anyway, I, let, I, let, I, listen I, your, I, let listen to your sister, Granny JJ, okay? And let's listen to what she about to say. Sister so Gandhi. I, so I, I think maybe you need to go back and listen to your show tonight, Stanton. I want to encourage you to go back. I would definitely go back to YouTube and do the clips because Dr. Richardson is exactly right. On when, which one? When, 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 when Uncle Sin told her to hush was when she came in. When we, everybody here were talking, when I said they were speaking, everybody interrupted. The meaning I say, he said, I saw, in fact, I wasn't even speaking when he said to me, as a sister, because I responded to him on the, on the, the accomplishments of we are. I responded to him when he was giving his response. That was when he said to, he said that as a sister, I don't even pay attention to her because I feel sorry for her. I wasn't talking to him when he said that. I was not. So when you come and say, oh, women are interrupting, I have to say the men who on this they don't interrupt. I don't think that's balance. And I don't do think that's that. fair. Most time people say stuff that we look at them. Yes, sometimes we interrupt. But well, everybody do. It's not, just, it's not just us that interrupt. So for you to say that, that's not fair and it's not balanced. Uh -uh. And you can say whatever you mean. And then another thing, we're not going to be on women on this show to be quiet. We're not going to be silent. We will speak up when there's a need to. So for you to say, oh, listen, oh, you're saying, oh, the women should be quiet. So the men should do a talk. If you want to be balanced, you have to be balanced across the board. So go and listen. We'll listen to the show. And people should not just be saying things and think that we're going to accept it. 
I will not like I, there's no way I can come to you and see you and for you stand there, nothing moves you. So you'll probably accept it. I can't go look at somebody else and say, Oh, I feel it. Look at you, I feel it. I won't talk to you because I'm feeling sorry for you. Who feeling sorry for me for what you can't do that. We all want to be on the show, we all want to discuss Liberian issues, but we have to be balanced in our approach to each other. You can say whatever you want to say, you can see how you want how you interpret it. But I don't think your interpretation is correct tonight. I don't think it's right. But I'll leave it with okay. you. Okay, so Glendy, I just went back. That Rich is saying issue, and I'm cutting it right now. She interrupted Mr. Jackson prior to him telling her say hush. He told her hush was wrong. I beg you that Rich is let me finish. He told her to hush, it was wrong. I'm not asking you not to speak. I'm not asking anyone to be silent on Spoon Talk. That's why we are all here on Spoon Talk. But we should speak one at a time without interruption for us to understand ourselves well. When someone is speaking and you have to interrupt them just to make a point, it is not fair. You may not agree with me, but it will be the best thing to do on the show. When someone is speaking and you must interrupt them, to check them, that we will not accept. You will take your pen and paper and you'll write your, 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 your concern. And when we get to you, you can address it. So for us to sit down here and say, oh yeah, it's okay, let me just, no, I'm not silencing you. If I want to silence you, you kind of stay in the back so many times like I can do some other people. They will say in the back, I don't see them. I'm not silencing you. I love for you guys to come on the show. But we must speak one at a time. And we, we the men, we say, we use words that is inappropriate, you know. When they, they were talking to you, I was, I was texting Uncle Sam. I said, you're wrong. And Uncle Sam apologized. I mean, it's the best thing we can do, folks. The folks love us, can agree. They really want to see us every day. But we should try to do that which is right, that they can understand and enjoy the show better. So yeah. on behalf of the network, before Colonel Gray speak, mm -hmm. to Dr. Francine Chinewe, Special Richardson, sorry again, to Glendy, sorry again, but I will strongly disagree with you guys. You must please allow the men to speak without interruption. That I can agree on that it was bad that they say harsh, but I disagree with your interruption, and I hope we all can do that which is best for our show. Do not interrupt them when they're speaking. Stanton, yes, yes ma'am. It is good policy when people are having discussion for you know us not to have the level of interruption that occurred today. However, I was asking for information. I believe I was asking where did you get your statistics from? Okay, that's one. Number two, uh I don't hide behind sexism like many people might want to think, okay? I, it is what it is. When you tell a grown woman like myself, a grandmother, that I should hush, who do you, where do you get that from? You didn't get that from being a modern man who work and appreciate the value of a woman. You didn't get that from them. It came from something greater and inner of you. Some inner side of you came out today, and it usually comes out, all right? Just like you said, Satan, you don't interrupt women. You will never do that because you know how you are raised. And some men don't do that on the show. But there are some men who are, do they do this regularly? All right? This is, this is the MO. That's the profile. So what I'm trying to say, yes, it was sexist. It's, it's, it's because that's how they treat other women around them. And that's how we determine that it is sexist. What groom person, what person you have high intelligence or who is accustomed to being around women will come tell somebody, hush or I feel sorry for you? Is the person your child or a baby for you to tell me hush or, or, or you feel sorry for the person? Maybe you, you do that in your home. Maybe because you are the king of your jungle. So you feel sorry for other women when you are around. Okay? Okay. Our own bills. We come on this show because we love Liberia. So let's come with information and facts and not to be disruptive of each other. I wasn't this, I wasn't trying to be just disruptive because I wanted to be disruptive because I wanted to be rude. 
to Uncle Sam. I was asking for information. I don't think it's fair. This is a reputable show, Stanton. You know that. For us to come here and then have people just throw information to us and honor the bracket of how educated they are, they are. We yeah. all what are you a bad or you are super then you made an excellent point. You you good at what you do. You here because you want commonality, we all love Liberia. Yeah. So I, sure. I don't think it, just because he says sorry, it doesn't mean that I should feel remarkably okay. Okay, it doesn't mean that everything is okay. Just because you said sorry doesn't mean that it's okay. I I said the apology, but that doesn't mean that it's I'm um, okay. That doesn't mean that I should move forward. Yeah, but well, I agree. I agree. I agree. I'm not asking you to let it go, but then you know when he says sorry, I think he meant it. But my issue is that even so, and I will say say this, and Granny on the show, she's the number one that can interrupt from the female side. She's the number one individual female on the show that can interrupt. Okay. But I appreciate you guys. Thank God that Fatima is not here. Thank God Fatima is not here to give me a headache. Uh, we wish her well. pushing the fire more. I, I think, know because, I think, we, because we're closing now. So let me yeah, do it. You know, I, I think since since we had this wave of uh, of panelists, we have not had a, a general meeting behind there where we can solve most of our problems. Uh, you know, you know, back then when politics was politics, of course, you know how uh, uh, tension and all this place used to be very acrimonious, True. uh, allegation flinging. Yeah, some of us have, have become, um, you know, warlord are going to church and massacre people, you know, those kinds of stuff, all of those kinds of uh, allegation flying here and there. But we went in the grid behind and, and fixed stuff. And uh, if you are left with me, this looked like we're washing our dirty laundry outside. I would have gone in the back. That's all I wanted to say. Whatever we have to, we have to to express ourselves. Let's let's not do it in the face of the the show. No, I think I think it was it was it was fair, you know, for us to just come down and embrace each other. But you're right. Then some go back there. Like there, there will still will be some. I mean, but you want us to go back there, but you would never go there with us. You will call for a meeting, and when we call the meeting, you no, no, you there. never call me to a meeting. I don't show up. <laughs> <laughs> you never call me that many I mean, Betty, thank you very much. That the since Glenny and others came, we have not had meeting. You know, you know I'm, I, I, Remy, you know I'm 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 the champion for wanting to always oh, yeah. listen it back. You know, oh, that's that's probably how I operate. But oh. in this case, I think it's fair for Liberians and people who are watching to understand, you know, the treatment of women in our society. Okay. That is it's one thing. That is one thing you want to about understand treatment. Don't do your. Don't do your you know, money. So yeah, yeah, man. That's one thing with the one school tour. That why you want to go in government? You want to start telling women to run for representative? Women. It starts. It starts from here. It starts from here. From women. To Gambo, women, yeah. yeah. women in the election lecture. You're going to roll. Let's see you. If we we'll vote for you. Really? I see what you see what you say. You see what I can be telling you. I want to push more fire, man. Man, you see what I can tell you about your words. No, man. I want to tell you seriously. We want Glenn, Glenn, Glenn. Well, in the show, well, in the show with the men. No, no, Glenn. That's your girl. You will leave. You will leave. That originally when I leave, we bring more to the show. Thank you. I will leave. I will leave. Oh, I will leave. 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 I to go to Grand Bass on the road. She will get with a one percent. Doctor Richard, say good night, yah. Good night, Jen. Nobody will vote for you. Oh, yeah, let, me go, yeah, let me go to my grandson. Happy. No problem. <laughs> nobody, nobody will vote for them. Yeah, Don't man, be talking about me. I'm not back either. No, we're not talking about you. You're going peace. <laughs> Look at Asset do coming by. <laughs> oh, well, you said you're going. What you came back for? <laughs> now you're adding that. You're adding that. Add your mama. When she see Asset do, she come back. <laughs> Where is Aunt your mama? 
We miss Auntie Mama. Y'all drove the yeah. one, man. Yeah, Auntie Mama who was it? Jetty, Jetty, <laughs> Jetty for the Nata. Jetty, Jetty. <laughs> Tell her we should see you mute it. I said, though, no. what brought you back? You came out of town that you get LEC? Why? Is that my is that, is that show? Where LEC? I get LEC, oh. That Jacko Lantern I put on. But you get the best ja ja Jacko Lantern in town, oh. A flash liar, you say. Oh, you get the best. I yeah, I I was just listening to the whole day. Uh, the message, the other person say this. Who say what now? What? Well, man, I say I leave you. <laughs> you can see that face up there. That face ready to respond. So let go in peace. <laughs> 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 let go in peace. Man, I see you guys, man. Then go call great. Go in peace, yeah. But actually, I pull back meaning for one thing. I wish I wish this Glendy was here. I, I, we can do all of the joke, but I will really expect that the last time she will ever go to some of this family that is now on the show will be today because I would definitely disrespect her to the last one she ever trust that. Really what are you talking about? Oh, what are you saying? Oh, but I said, I said, on that note, let's go. We're trying to make peace here, I said. Yeah. I said yeah. on, on, on that note, I said, we're going. Yeah. We're not take that. We're feeling right. harmonizing this thing. We will leave yeah. Dr. Richardson. Yeah. Dr. Richardson, we're discussing the battle. We can talk to you every night. Dr. Yeah. Richardson. Yeah. I was having a conversation. You were telling him that yeah. what he did there was just absolutely... That we, we will go ahead, we will go ahead and have this meeting that uh Connor Gray is talking about. Yeah, yeah. folks, you are oh, Nelson, come on the show. Good night. That was that. What you say, Yaka Kodo Badu? You call his name? I don't hear you, Dada Richardson. You meet yourself. I said, I tired of having a meeting. Let, let me start great call the meeting. Great, we'll call the meeting. Thank you, Dada Richardson. It's good to see you again. My regard to your family. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. Good night. The, yeah. Nelson, you been in the back and you left me with all the plenty of trouble, Nelson. Why you did that to me? I can't. I can't. I can't handle your trouble. It'd be on your pay grade, right? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. You know what? People want to watch some time the leader just drink, drink, Hennessy S O and just drink with too much of stress. Mm -hmm. You pull this one, you pull it one. So when a little go, man, you say, you know what, forget this. <laughs> and I want Joe used to do Joe. I say, you know what, I ain't going to work again. I would just drink all my head and say, yes, oh, and play basketball in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And what Joe used to do, because it was just too much from all angles, you know, it was just too much. But I want to say thank you, folks. It will get better. It's all about Liberia. All right. You have a wonderful evening. You have a good night. And again, we we'll see you tomorrow by God's grace. All right. So, what, what's up? Who are your guests tonight? Um, no, tonight we don't we don't have a guest. So we will discuss some national issues. So you want me to join? Oh well, yeah, we we'll appreciate. Who who I mean I mean who all coming on the show? The only way I can when I show if I get what's his name? George Weeder. Oh <laughs> yeah, Josh. Josh Weeder, you know, the man, the man is now he's now on the show recently. Uh, yeah, I know. I mean, I've been watching. Yeah. yeah, I've been watching. I know that he's not. But uh we gotta bring him. Yeah. <laughs> look at this. Uh, look at bring bring honorable honorable Mormon Bridge Mensa. Ah, oh. bring her on. Let me ask her if she won't come on. Okay. I think she's scared of your group, though. The the the, the, the representative the, from Bon County. Yeah, and uh, honorable yeah. Mormon Bridge Mensa. I call for a different thing, you see? You see? I call for a different thing, you see? I call for a different thing. 
I call you for different thing. Hey, girl. Can I come on a late night show? You must say. You say you get something to say. Oh, okay, which one? The one that Nelson can be having, or you say you get internet. I will represent this session get internet. Yeah, but someone has a problem. It's not connecting your link. Yeah. Every time I do it, I do it on my laptop. On my laptop. Yeah, but you gotta do it on your laptop. Laptop, laptop. Yeah, but I was saying that you know that you live, right? I live. Yes, you are. Everybody, everybody hear you, you say your phone got problems. Dr. Francis said you are one of the most critical birds in Liberia. And females would not be talked to anyhow, and so the females that have maintained the show over the years, then you come and pass judgment. How did I how did I pass judgment? You're finishing everything we're coming down the two females, okay? They up no no i said i said how did i pass judgment so so you so representative when mom you serious you don't know that you don't know that they can enter you don't know that they can interrupt Everybody interrupt one another, even you attempt to interrupt other people too. Listen, I say my own, you say your own. My issue here is that there should be no interruption. There should be no interruption. But you can run the show tonight. If you can, then I will come. If you're not coming, I won't come though. No, kick off. You don't tell me soon I'm going to get my laptop out of the car there. I'm tired. I'm inside already. Your laptop in the car, you can send your security. You can send security people to your house. You can send one of them for it. <laughs> yeah. What do you want us to discuss? Come, let's discuss uh, what you were pushing for. <laughs> Yesterday, he called me. I was waiting for you. You got it. You want to go back? Uh, you been walking back. Yeah, I was hungry yesterday. I was cooking. Yeah. Oh. Hey, they're working my waiting for you. I fried a big, big cassava fish and I sliced the onions. You know the big purple onions? <laughs> I sliced and I sliced yeah. green pepper. The pepper come green, uh -huh. red, and yellow. I sliced uh -huh. them and I steam it. When I finish frying the fish, I put it there and I just steam it with some seasoned black pepper, you know, a, a magic Cuban thing. I give, give it all the flavor. And they just have a little uh -huh. bit of sauce on it. So when you put the butter on the rice and you put the sauce, oh my God, I was done. Oh, you I mean, don't get nobody. Yeah, the fish, the big, big cassava fish, I have four pieces. Yeah. And hey, what you do, you season it before? And oh, yeah, you yeah, fry, yeah, right? you got to season the fish. They kept it for some time. So you know what I used to do? I used to season the fish and just go fry it. So my wife they said, no, my wife said, you must season it and let it sit down. Yeah, so I did. Then you won't fry it, eat it, eat yeah. It, then you just cover it. And let it yeah, start. I season it oh, and I let it sit down. Inside. Then all the juice went inside. It went in the miyakana. So when it went in the miyakana, so when you fry, you could taste the juice in the fish. I mean, then I got so yeah. I just ate the last piece. Yeah. Hey, what, is, what we doing right now? We doing home economics, or we doing cooking class? No, we're doing everything now that you talk about cooking. But I heard that uh, because you work too, 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 you work for a long hour, so that Mr. Mesa can be cooking. Right now. I heard that right Mr. Mesa can be cooking. <laughs> you know, I'm one person alone. No, what's your friend? What's her name? Ato? Where is Ato? Me? What about Ato where? Ato where? How's she doing? She's right. she home. I was. She's good. That's good. You know, the only budget, you know, she's the co chair on the budget. She's been very busy. Oh, uh, but why did it couldn't make you the co chair? Why? No, the work I do, I like it. I what, 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 do you, it. what do you do? What I'm doing now, the committee I'm on, I like it. Which committee? It's good. Which committee? Uh, gender. I'm the chair oh. on gender. Oh, you are? Yeah. The number nine person on the leadership. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. 
So I saw you, you were fighting so for you were fighting for Jessica and you were mad. Why? Oh, uh, the thing is, uh, I was actually no Jessica I just put a communication up that we have to look at the proceeding, we have to look at the process that led to the whole not guilty issue. It is being done by maybe manipulations or corruption everything. It may lead to punishment. That's what I said. That was my English. Oh, I want to ask you, no, our jurisdiction is not over the judge wedding. It's the same thing. If I said to my tumors, whatever I do there, nobody take me anywhere. No. But we have the right to follow the proceeding and to also know if you avoid of any deducement. So that's our own concern. Yeah, but come on the show tonight. Come on the show tonight. Let's talk about it, man. So Wednesday, Wednesday, movie. I want to finish with Wednesday first. Oh. Wednesday will be calling the county attorney, the judge, oh, okay. the okay. even the female lawyers, who FN is invited because it's going to be a public hearing. Okay, but they but but, but Lucas, Lucas left the country. You cannot bring him back. You know that, right? He's gone. We can stay, you and myself can put money together with other like people who can do and see what try oh. in America too. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. There's many ways we can catch him. Oh, yeah, you can do a civil, you can do a civil trial, yeah. We don't know what the lawyers coming to, or maybe if they say they fine for e trial or something, then we'll know they can request him to come back. Okay, all right. Yeah, but it's it's good, man. It's good. It's always good to talk to you, uh, you and uh, Otto, you guys have my own, you know, female friends in the legislature. Am I forgetting someone again? I'm talking about in the House of Representatives. That one of you. Swakoko. Swakoko, yes. Yeah. Swakoko. Yeah. <coughs> you know, she used to be there now. She's at Nokal, so she's not there no more. Is she? You think that you are not a CEO? No, I'm not. I'm CEO. I told her, uh, how you call her? I told her, uh, what's her name? I thought she was still the CEO. What's her name? Uh, Safwa, Safwa Major. You're leaving anything, anybody in power around here? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Represent the Mensa. <clears throat> yeah. But it's good, it's good to have you, man. You Say. Know, your show is widely followed by the people of Salala District. Oh, yeah? yeah. Tell them, tell us, stand up, say, at toi, hey. Too many. That's why many Jews. Say to all of them, I say too yeah, many Jews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I wish them well. So all I, the, I, I'm your guest all, all day for to talk all the policy matters on Wednesday evening. Okay. I will leave you with that Richardson, yes. Fatima, and Blendy. Okay. Okay, that will be your. I will not even. I will not. have to take time with them. I will not even be there because if you talk smutty, oh, you hurt my feelings. This is a Glen Glen show. This is not. No, I know they're gonna get fast again. This is not show that. What is it? We ask for tender equality, they want to make yellow. They want to say, yellow, you can yellow, they buy. You can see it. Yeah. I can't even waste time with it. This, no is a, this is a show, but you're like, oh, you have my feelings. Oh, I'm dead. Okay. So at what point, point we should be, you know, but anyway, people say, oh, don't you know? I'm, okay, okay. At what point, you guys need to watch your words. The way you speak to this lady, when you get angry, when I you criticize one man. another, you don't be harsh on them. I beg you, man. Nah, no, nobody pay. can try my auntie, mama. I you can't even you, try man. what you're giving to you. Auntie, friends. mama, you can see her now. We may, I will, I will make auntie, mama silent. She just used to be, jetty, 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 jetty. <laughs> 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 yeah, but uh, Adi Mama, you got something to say? Yeah, Jetty, we are for the night house in front of protest, Jetty. That only Jetty, you know? Adi Mama, man. Come on.
But what do you think about it? What do you think about the motorcyclist protects? What do you think? If they mean well, though, right? Because I see a lot of them having CDC hat. I see Sapoko there. Don't make it a CDC thing. That's my only problem. Yeah. Okay? Don't make it a CDC thing. It, 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 it's important for us to find jobs for those young men and women. They do not want to be driving motorcycle all the time. But Keke, no. Most of them are well educated. You get some bad ones among them, Representative Mama. But you get some good yeah. ones that went to school, that got degrees here and there. They want jobs. But because no job, guess what happened? They have to drive the pen pen and keke to feed the family. So my thing is that the government should create find ways of creating jobs. But the teller say, don't use your keke and pepe. They are over hundred thousand. It's not Madam Salif time that they will listen. Let me say this. Let me end on this one, Mama. Let me end on this one. Yeah, but let me end on this one. Represent it. It's not Madam Salif time that you have maybe 25,000, 35,000 of them. Today, the guys are over 100,000. Okay. It's not Madam Salif time that you have some people making. Hands meet here and there because you know male and other people in the country. Today, man, mm -hmm. it dry. It very dry. Mm -hmm. Even if you take hundred thousand of them and say fifty or you will drive only in Nukuta, it will not even solve the problem still. You will finally leave it from Nukuta to Boma Bridge. From Boma Bridge to Lokin Town. From Lokin Town to Jamaica Road. Jamaica Road, they will find a free port. Free port they will go to Vata. The solution of this thing is for the government to create jobs and reintegrate them into the workforce. Mm -hmm. If those guys don't say we are not driving our mother brand and our pimping, the gas station people will suffer because people will not buy the fuel, people will not buy the gasoline. Come on. It, it's a triangle thing, man, but I think the government working on it. My point is you can challenge the regulations. Maybe you do a communication through your leadership and also additional areas to be added. But the fact that you will challenge, if you will say you will not apply by it, then it becomes a challenging rule uh, of law. And from what you're speaking, are yeah, you telling me now that because things are in the country, the parents you always use the children to sell for them? You got this is something I'm stopping. Yeah, so, but a different thing is saying, but what you are saying with the children, Mama, so Mama, Mama, people that drive with yeah. keke and pepper, they are not children. That two different things you are saying. The children that are doing it should go home. The parents should be the one. The parents should be the one. The parents should be the one selling another children. What I'm saying to you, so enough, if you. you want to go ahead and relocate them in the neighborhood, fine. Mm -hmm. Maybe the message wasn't given to them the right mm -hmm. way. I Don't think before you do them. that, so. you should be able to gradually, gradually educate them, give them the kind of message yeah. for them to understand the importance of safety and traffic rules and laws. But to come and say, all of you go to Vata, you know, that way you will start. Let's go back to the drawing pool. I think on how you call him, how you call him, Coleman, what's his name? Connor, what's it? Okay. Uh, okay. I think Gregor Coleman means well, yeah. because we spoke to him. I think he will go back to the drawing board, talk to their leadership, and they will come up to a solution. And you know, but in the interim, I hope this government do the right thing and start creating jobs. You will always have some bad taxi drivers, some see, bad taxi drivers. I think what you're talking, you say, I hope my government, you say, I hope my government that are brought in power do the right thing. Then you sound good. Okay, I hope this government, what difference that make? You want me to sound like Kev Hassan, my president, don't, my don't, government? Don't, don't, yeah. don't, don't say you know, <laughs> no, but you know, I suppose. Okay, well, I think I just saw some, um, maybe we, Watching the process, creating jobs is one of the things, and not only within government, but within the private sectors and 
finding more concessions. Uh, Mama Bridgman, sir. Mama Bridgman, sir, representative. We are praying for that to happen. Yeah, sure. Yes. Let, let your children, your, your husband, you get one of the biggest construction company in the country. Maybe Royal Guinness have given him contract, right? But you think you got a listing from Royal Guinness? <laughs> so you miss a construction money? Where has where a husband <laughs> company name? Uh, what, what's his company name? Mesa. Mesa. Me what are you going to call Mesa? Then call construction company. Yeah, but he gets a subcontract from the other company then. Because Roland Guinness oh, said, because Roland yeah. Guinness said your husband don't have equipment, so you can't give him contract. <laughs> Only SSF got equipment. Uh, Robbie Zoda Massa, I'll talk to you, man, my dear sister. You always fun. Thank you, say hi, say hi to Madam. Say hi to Madam Auto. No, you're welcome, whatever you can. You know, my wife and myself will welcome you in the house. Say hi to Madam Auto. Yeah. yeah, once you fill it with a budget, I'm sure you can have some discussion around it. To yeah. See what happens and everything. Yeah. That will that's be a good. good conversation. Yeah, it will. And I'm wishing you got. What's the other, what the other representative that just won from district number five? Her name is Pressure or Cooper. What's her name? Priscilla. 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 Yeah. Priscilla that's another smart uh, female representative, too. Yeah. Sure, sure. All right, mama. We worked together a long time ago. Oh, yeah? Okay, take care. Take care now. Bye bye. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's one of my best sister. In, uh, in the, she's, she's one of the best. Seriously. Nelson, she's one of the best. Yeah, I, I I just pray that she be she 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 become a senator in Bond County one day. Yeah, I hope yeah. the people from Bond County can vote for her, that she can represent the entire county. She put listen, she's a straight shooter. She put everything on the line. Like her or hit her, she tell you as it is. She's not afraid. I hope I hope 2029. Now who's running 2029? I hope she can run against them. Oh, did I just say that I praise for you? <laughs> oh man, Prince Boy. But no, it's okay. Mama can run against Prince Boy. No problem. Mama, Mama can run against Prince Boy. No problem. They will make a good campaign, good election. All right, Mama, thank you, man. See you later. Yes, sir. Yeah. Send me the link. If I still get okay. it straight, if I still get it straight, I'll pop it, okay? You get it straight. Okay, let's, let's see. <laughs> All right, bye. Okay, sir. Okay. Well, uh, again, folks, we want to say thanks to all of you out there for being here with us on the show tonight. Thanks for making your input. Um, thanks to all of you who called in. Thanks to you who just sat by the radio playing the listening role. We appreciate our um, thousands of uh, viewers from across the world. Um, on YouTube, Spoon Talk Live, on Facebook, uh, Spoon TV, Fabric TV, and Super TV. We appreciate all of you for being here with us tonight. And um, this is how we like to draw down the curtains on this edition of the Spoon Talk. And, and Spoon Talk will be back on your radio uh, on tomorrow. All right, Spoon Talk will be back on on your radio tomorrow and um you can make up time to join us as it's going to be very 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 fascinating and uh, it's been a great show today and uh, we look forward to an amazing show tomorrow well uh but just before we go uh, let me do a few birthday greetings we have here and um beginning with uh this one okay so beginning with this let me do a uh, let me say happy birthday to uh Mr. Bai Baiwosile Bausile Solomon. The 18th of April yesterday was your birthday. We wish you all the best as you celebrate your birthday today. Your father, 
your mother, your little brother, Edwin Solomon of the U.S., they are wishing you happy birthday. It's now a belated birthday because uh, you celebrated your birthday on the 18th. 18th of April, happy belated birthday to you. And um, another birthday greeting. Today is the birthday of uh, Miss Carlos, uh, Carlos Scott. Uh, Colo Scott is celebrating her birthday today. Happy birthday to you, Colo, as you celebrate your natal day today. Um, we wish you all the very best as you celebrate another natal day today. That's your Colo, uh, Colo Scott. Happy birthday to you. And um, another birthday greeting to uh, Promise Robert. Uh, Promise Robert is celebrating her birthday today as well. And uh, it's a happy birthday greeting to you, Promise Robert. Well, folks, on that note, um, that's how I would like to join the curtains on this edition of the program. Many thanks to all of you out there for being here with us. Uh, and it's going to be a great show tomorrow. You can make up time to join us here on this very platform. And uh, we also want to say uh, you can join us on the late night show coming up shortly. It's going to be a great uh, show tonight. A lot to talk about. Uh, join uh, us as we get set to bring you critical analysis on some of the happenings in the country. My name is Nelson Collet. Have a good night. Bye-bye for now. Boom, boom.